stuff for a bit, you know. Average. I don't want to. While it starts, people <sighs> people like to think that we all get along, you know. Oh, we have to pretend to like each other now. We're like the yeah, seven. Gotta... It's Saturday. Time to no. put up with ten hours of this fucking charade. Yeah. Lucky I'm not live yet. <clears throat> nope. Nope. Totally not. I don't get paid enough for oh, this shit. Yeah, obviously, our production company, uh, E4. Yeah. Would be really upset if uh, I heard about this. All right. Um, hey, you get paid for all this. Right, all right. <laughs> all right. David, Steve, Nathan, um, Judith. It's time to use our fake names now. You need to get back into the habit. Which one am I? <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. should, you should remember that. That's not something you should really need to ask me. We're losing it. We're I want to be Judith. You can be Judith. Uh, isn't Judith, Judith an old lady like a name? Strong name. Strong Judith? Name? No, no way. You guys, do you guys think of old lady when you think of Judith? I don't Generally. think of a young person. Yeah. Well, it depends how young we talk in. Like late forties. Because when I think of Judith, I think of like someone in their late twenties. Short, no. short, short reddish, bra brown hair. Bra, short reddish bra, bra hair. Bra hair. Like a <laughs> short reddish bra. <laughs> Bro, she wears a, she wears sort of like a, I don't know, not a polo, but sort of a, like like a plaid shirt that's just just a little bit loose to where it looks really comfy. You know, she wears very short ankle socks and shoes that don't have laces. They're like the the slipper shoes you just slip on and go. She's she's lean, uh, modest breast size. Um, not not very voluptuous, but she's she's not skinny, but she's somewhat leanish, healthy, trim and fit, you know. Uh, he wears contacts. He doesn't wear glasses. Size. What? I reject the motion that that notion that that can be a modest breast size. Yeah. There's modest. It's a nice way of saying yourself. small. They're all no, OP. No, no, no. Because that that implies that it's like it's immodest to have. Large breasts, which isn't no, a decision that no, you no, as a no. person have made. No, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what it. Yeah, that's but that's what it implies by saying that there's a modest breast size. No, it, relatively it moderate, that limited. That an it literally, literally means relatively moderate, limited, or small. Does it, um. like, it, it can, that's an alternative definition. It's just small. What's well, gonna mean different things? Oh, it is, isn't it? I'm tired. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm yeah. I mean, all all breasts are welcome in God's kingdom, isn't that right, Rags? No, they can get too big. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How big the breasts have to get before they're rejected they can't fit by through, God? They can't fit through God's yeah. door. <laughs> God <laughs> fucked up and gave a woman boobs that were too big. I'm gonna be frank though. Yeah, boobs can get too big. I thought you were Judith. I would take. <laughs> I, I am Judith. You said I'm gonna be frank. I'm gonna. <laughs> Well, I, I've made that joke before. It's a good one, though. I approve. No, he's, oh. Judith, he, he's Judith now. He's gonna be Frank. Oh, okay. I follow. When the legal name change goes through. Anyway, I'm not you... trans or anything. I, I just want to be a woman named Frank. <laughs> Wait, a woman named Frank? Wait. I just want to be a woman named Frank. Nothing will change except I'll be Frank. Again, all is welcome in God's kingdom, except if you choose giant... Uh, boobies. That's the we draw I'd the line. I'd rather have uh, I'd rather have a flat-chested woman than a one with just huge boobs that were just too big. They call you them can't own a woman rags. You can. I believe you can. <laughs> oh, okay. You just have to try hard enough. I've got I've got receipts. I kept that shit. Well, if you have a how time machine, did, how much did how much did it cost? Well, it was I paid in installments. Like all girlfriends, you pay in installments every fucking day to keep her around. I play. I pay with loveliness and charm. That's what he's saying. Loveliness and charm come in the form of buying them things. Do you rent that? Is it outsourced? <clears throat> yeah, I outsource it uh, to 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 people who have it. Do you have it in source or anything? Inso. Instast. No in source. No. <laughs> So, oh my god! Oh my god! You know how um, you know how Minecraft is currently doing the vote on which like uh, animal to add to the game next. You might, you may or may not know no. this. Is it no. one of them? One of them is a yellow reskin of a cow, 
right? McDonald's well, that's not a new just, animal. That's just a cow that's I, yellow. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, it's, it's okay. It's actually a yellow reskin of a mushroom, but big difference. Mushroom? mushroom? Yeah. Explain. It's the, that's the cow with mushrooms growing on its back. Oh my god, Ew. that sounds like, I don't a, think... like a terrible fungal infection. Yeah, is that cordyceps? No, it's, it that, seems like a symbiotic relationship attention? in the game. Oh uh, like no. A, yeah. Um, that's but, even... um, mm -hmm. That sounds but, uh, predatory, not symbiotic. I've just, <laughs> I've just gone onto Twitter. I've just gone onto Twitter, and piss cow is trending. Oh, <laughs> why? Lovely. Because, because the, yellow, the cow. yellow cow. Yeah. Can you milk your your male cows and no. get piss? No. Well, if you if you if you milk the mushroom cow, you get mushroom stew. <laughs> no. So I assume if you milk the yellow cow, you get. Oh pissed. my god, the infection is so deep in the cow that if you milk it, you get mushroom stew. Yeah. That's actually disgusting. That's terrifying. That yeah, that's horrible. And I then can you imagine that poor animal just begs for no. death. <laughs> just you want to hang on? Look at the picture. Hang on, I'm going to show you a picture creature. of it now. Oh no, piss cow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I just googled mushroom. I'm. <laughs> wow, the, sure the infection is so bad you googled mushroom before cow. Wow. I, why would. Is it like a meme that that's getting upvoted or what? Well, it's not upvoted, it's trending on Twitter. I thought you. But I thought it was trending because it was an upvoted thing. That's. I don't think that's how that works. I think, I think stuff only trends when a lot of people are talking about it. Oh, God, no, I, no, I mean, I thought you said that they were doing a vote for what should come next for animals, and then everyone was voting for the piss cow, and then it became a trending thing on Twitter. No, no, the, the piss cow has already been knocked out of the running. Oh. Why is that? Uh, <laughs> Why is was that? it not nasty enough? Oh my God. Wait, which which one is... Oh no, I pulled that one from the Discord. Someone posted Oh, it looks like a like a flower dandelion cow, but yeah, I see why people would call that. Cow. So, yeah. we got the red. Is the red one a blood mushroom cow? <laughs> and what oh. do you get when you milk that? <laughs> Lemonade. Stop asking questions you don't want Chocolate to Chocolate milk, obviously. Oh. So, Oops. The other thing they might add is uh, is the glow squid, which I like. Um, okay. Be nice if they can make it actually. Do they have elephants? Like no. Why don't they so have elephants? Did they forget to put today. in elephants? Are we live or is this just? <laughs> We're live. We're live. This, this is this is this is gold. Yeah. They call this content. <laughs> oh no. Um, See, I, I want that to have gone out to at least a thousand people. Oh, it wouldn't well, disappoint sure me, would you, Molo? No. He spent weeks working on this segment. Do the thing no one heard? <laughs> Fuck this shit. Yeah. Listen, people want to know Fuck what our opinions are on the new animals in Minecraft. Penetrate the piss cow. Welcome Ooh. to every frame of Minecraft animal. No. E-fama. Oh, are we live now? After Drink. all of that? Drink from the teeth of the piss After cow. All that, we just had a Shakespearean discussion. Yeah, I only no just went live, so if we can it. just repeat Mola, I everything. I just spelled your name wrong. You don't even know how to spell my name. Why are you spelling my name? I don't know who I am. I was uh, getting the stream up, and I felt an easy way to do that was to search your name. Who and, am I? Uh, what do I want? Just search for the blood mushroom cow. I'm sure it'll be tagged within the stream. The blood mushroom. Um. Is yeah. there gonna be? Is there a crypt mushroom? I don't know. Am I? What am I? A scientist? I wouldn't know this stuff. I've never studied mushrooms. I want to mushrooms. see a gang war between the blood mushrooms, cows, and the crypt mushroom cows. I think it'd make a really good like gangster movie because there'd be a lot at stake. Fan artists, me oh, um, slut. So, welcome to EFAP 103, the first of the Spooktober EFAPs. Uh, <laughs> hope you guys like spooky. Spooky ghost is now animated and gets spooked by bats. I feel oh, that a lot of people will probably enjoy such you things. Win. In a fight, a bat or a ghost? Um, can, what can the can ghost they even fight? What can the ghost do? Anything or? Um, are we talking? I'm glad you didn't start off by asking what can the bat do. I know what a bat can do. <laughs> what give you coronavirus? Yeah, if it gives a coronavirus to a ghost, does the ghost die and become ghost another ghost or what? <laughs> the spectral coughing in the night. Oh my god. Um. Yeah, uh, I don't really know, right? I, I would bet the ghost just because it's already dead. And, and it can just outlast the bat, at the very can least. It, can it even touch the bat? Well, it depends on but what kind of ghost dies, rules we're dealing with. the bat become a bat ghost? 
Well, in that point, that's where the fight becomes really interesting. Yeah, I guess that's just, like, round two. That reminds me of fucking Doctor Strange. Remember when the ghosts fight each other? Yeah, yeah. I do. Astral projections. Is the Red Room involved? Possibly, but I would want to really tweak it to make sure it's not Tism me by the time we finish our <laughs> battle. Oh, I'm gonna spoil- I'm gonna spoil Hill House now. The twist is that the series was bad all along. Oh, no! I'm joking, most of it's quite good. Well, there you go, that's the first of the, the hot takes done. <laughs> that's a- that's a 0.5 hot take. If that's even a hot take, I don't even know if it is. It's a subversive twist to make the series bad. I would hope so. that'd be quite Chilled cold. Take. Yeah, it's a cold take. Um, yeah, compared to everything else, like if you've watched Hill House, you, I assume you agree that the last episode is the worst one. I think a lot of people yeah. really liked it. That I remember was... feeling like a bit of a sour post being like, "Well, I didn't think the last one was very good." A lot of people really liked Hitler more. Though. Yeah, and I had to be the sour post once again and been like, "Hitler, you know, <laughs> especially in the, the later crowd, seasons." Yeah, really. it's ambitious, and I can respect Hitler that. Was, yeah, Hitler was know, inconsistent man. with the law. Listen, the last episode of Hitler wasn't <laughs> wasn't as Listen, good. Listen, Hitler respected the German lore. True, he had a, he, he did keep it all in check. That's good. He was no, like, born okay, for so, Germany's uh, history, absolutely. Okay, so like he like like I think season one of Hitler was all right when he was going through World War One, but then I think, like hmm? it kind of went up downhill after the beer hall putsch. Dude, it was so contrived. Oh, I'm a soldier in World War One, and then I become the leader in World War Two. It's like they wanted to crank it up arbitrarily. It was like, oh, I don't know, it's not as fun yeah, if he's a soldier again. Mistakes. What are oh, the oh, planets? They're in there in there in back with yeah. Eisenhower, though. They, they've done that before. And then they then they There's crippled pressing. the other team just to try and make things interesting. Oh, the nerfing was stupid. Oh yeah, suddenly Germany has this huge military out of nowhere. It's like, oh okay. It. And and right then, as they the were wrapping things up, much. they knew they were making so much money. They had to fucking throw in Japan at the end so that they could keep it going. Yeah, I like Churchill though. He was kind of a cool character. Yeah, he's pretty nifty. Yeah, you down know, saying fuck you, Hitler. Much like, uh, much like Hitler, um, and also much like my my fourth grade report guard, uh, they went down in history. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well yeah. said. So. Um, this is the kind of Report high quality God. content oh. that people tune in for. Ooh. Yeah, like actually, I feel it is. I feel like people are. <laughs> I, I enjoy this. Well, okay, like speaking of someone who, who tunes into EFAT from time to time, I enjoy this shit way more than the actual responses. <laughs> the, the absolute <laughs> shit. That's more about the people we respond nothing. to, if anything else. Yeah, Jay. You, you want to talk about piss folks. cows and ghost fights and Hitler's narrative? Plot holes. How dare you disrespect the piss cow ghost fight in Hitler? How dare you disrespect Hitler? Who do you think would win? Hitler's ghost or the piss cow? <laughs> Wait, Probably Hitler's ghost. But the piss cow would be beaten and turned into a piss cow ghost, so then what happens? Do cows get to become ghosts? I don't know. Or is it only um, uh, what? Aaron? I just threw in the chat. Jay is wrong again. I asked a question. <laughs> Wait, did you? Who would win? Jay, Jay asked who would question. win, and they're already like, yeah, Jay's wrong. <laughs> The Let's just skip to the end. You're wrong. <laughs> I mean, they, maybe they're maybe they're talking about your preference for portions of EFAP. You have to be wrong. Like a multiple choice question on an exam, just but merely answering the question loses you marks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be that'd be such a good fun. That would be a good fun. That would be a good fun. <laughs> Analysis. I don't even that's agree with job. the spirit of that statement. <laughs> no. Um. So, oh, we should probably mention, we tested out Among Us on a Monk 13 stream, so if you want to go and find us playing it, you can actually go to his Twitch channel, check his VODs, and then maybe consider following. Who knows? It's completely up to you. But, it was a nice little experiment. We're probably going to check it out in an EFAP gaming soon enough. It will be in Spooktober, along with, potentially, the fucking, what's it called? Dark Pictures Little Hope, I believe? Which is up to five Hello. players, so Mel will probably drag rags along this year. It's gonna be great. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Wait, Metal, how long have you been here? I swear you've not done anything. <laughs> I was just just listening to the piss cows and Hitler comments, just casually. Just People are saying up. provide link. No, you have to go and find it. It's an adventure. Among thirteen <laughs> on Twitch is enough information. You can go and find. It. You can use Google. I trust you. What yeah. if they don't know how to spell it? Well, that's part of the journey. That's part of they lose. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, you can Google spelling. Spelling. <laughs> yeah, Google, just Google the word spelling. 
Like people wanted to just find. Just go to spelling.com and then write in the word you want spelled correctly, and they'll do it for you. Wait, what the fuck just happened? I actually found the best way to look up spellings like um is like a one of the is like a Siri or whatever. You can actually say the word and it'll tell you the spelling, which is like super, way way more effective than typing in a word you don't know to spell. Oh you don't wow! Spell it. I could hear a noise and it was freaking me out. It was my phone. It was googling spelling because I told it to, I guess. I really thought I really <laughs> thought that was going to be like a, one of those. Like, oh wow! I was hearing a noise. It it sounded like someone was speaking, but I, you know, you know when people do that. No, I'm not following at all. Not even a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm completely oh, lost. <laughs> you, you guys need proof this happened, so I screenshot it. There you go. See, it's, that's just that was just on my phone. It's like, okay. I, you you can't can't spell spell spell. Are, you, are you texting somebody right now? That you feature right. To? Sorry. Do you no, that's, text that's random people screen. just advice? Like, hey, you can Google spell. <laughs> no, that's... I don't know how it works exactly. I think it's supposed to enable, like, a conversation. So if I said, hey... Wait, I shouldn't say it. You know, no, we kill discussions. We don't enable them all. Hey, thingy, uh, what is blah, blah, blah? And then it might send you a question back. Like, do you mean chicken roll? And you're like, no. No, I mean something else. And it'll just oh, have that. You said thingy, so you don't say, hello, hey, Google, right? Don't... Don't say the that in front of phones. People probably have this like open on speakers. So okay, Google, big hentai titties. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like googling big hentai titties. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but that was a thing with Xbox, right? Like Xbox off, people could do that, and it would fuck up with your Xbox. Even though, I don't know if that was ever real because it never happened to me. I need confirmation from you nerds. I don't know anything about um, Xbox on and off. Um, I haven't turned an Xbox on or off in centuries. many years. Well, well, Cent centuries, yeah. Um, so that's on the way. Other things are on the way that I'll possibly remember and talk about as we as we go through this. Um, I want to show you guys wow. a clip I saw. I hope you guys haven't seen it, and I hope I don't get hit with copyright from Infowars. But this shit's Info really Wars. funny. So, load this up. I, I, I don't know how to get it on YouTube, so it's just on Twitter. Um, uh, and we'll play it from zero, and we'll just we'll just have fun. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Three, two, one, go. That we are in charge of this planet, not the globalists, and not teens. So to Jeff Bezos and all the globalist technocrats and Tim Cook and their slave camps in China and all their evil, they try to cover up with Black Lives Matter, Marxism and the cop killing. I say to you, your technocracy is dead on arrival. <laughs> you understand that? We are in charge of the planet, not Soros and not Satan. Do you understand that, Soros? You pathetic maggot. We're in charge, not you. Is that clear? Is that clear? You little maggot and your little maggot son. You understand that? You maggot son. You think you're going to have this fight and have robots win it? No. We'll defeat you and your goddamn robots. That we so I, uh, I don't know if there's any part of that I disagree with. So <laughs> Dude, I, mean, I am in favor of defeating Satan's robots. I, I want to fuck up those robot, those Satan robots. <laughs> I, I too do not want Satan robots. Hang on, in hang the on. World. Didn't he? Didn't he say that Black Lives Matter was a conspiracy to cover up the evils of so the, Marxism, the, the Chinese yeah. concentration camps run by the Marxists in? Silicon Valley. So he's got all the right ideas, but they got put into his brain blender and well, then spat <laughs> out his mouth in a really strange, weird order. I just want to know where Satan's robots are. I want to defeat I mean, them. I, Chinese concentration camps, sure. Um, techn technocrats being Marxists, um, maybe they pretend to be for for marketing clout. I don't think I don't think they really. I think are, the technocrats though. are the Marxists. Who were the Marxists? The Black Lives the Matter. Marxists. Satan's minions. So the, the so Marxists exist. I I okay. I will I will agree with that. Um, and then Black Lives Matter is a conspiracy to cover up Chinese concentration camps. They're on Exegol. <laughs> Exegol. <laughs> The I wanna... concentration to camps don't know which way is up. I just need Alex Jones with his sword leading an army against Satan's robots. So it's just... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what 
We he will needs defeat his, you. He needs his fourth Orlinga speech. Alex Jones does to really blossom into the king that Rohan needs. Yeah. I want to see what his setup was like to that speech. Like what was going on. <laughs> how he got there. Sort of, yeah, how did he get there? They, like, they bought a drone point, just for him to attack it. Like the at some point he's irrelevant. The presentation that, that 10 out of 10. He yeah. hit he he killed a drone with a sword. <laughs> What have you done with your life? <laughs> Which, I mean, ideally, though, if you are fighting an army of Satan drones, I don't know if a sword would be the best weapon for that. Well, that drone yeah. disagrees. <sighs> well, did the, dro did the drone survive, Rags? Um, it's no, now a ghost. I, I feel like this drone was obviously frozen in awe. Oh. Of being that close to Alex, James. maybe that's the one-two punch. He freezes them in awe of his presence, and then he hits them with a stun strike. It's like a that's yeah, possible. Just a double hit, it's, and they it's, can't survive. It's the combination of his AOE, yeah, and his uh, his his strike. It's not his ulti. He goes way way more than that for his ulti. That's like his Q. What's his, what's his final smash? Um, he cracks the earth in two when he knows there's no longer something to salvage. <laughs> It's over, everyone. The globalist of one. Was, that, that tweet was posted by Ash Coffin. That Joker video was really good. The only way to defeat the globalist is to destroy the globe. <laughs> we all have to go to Mars with Movie Bob. Oh no! No, Alex Jones Movie, Movie Bob, Bob would fight. Mars. That would be what it would be. Oh Alex God. Jones would attempt to take imagine, Mars from Movie Bob. Imagine an Alex Jones Movie Bob cage fight. Jones versus Movie oh, Bob. Oh, he fucked Movie Bob up. Yeah, I mean, Movie Bob's power is. Movie Bob wouldn't stand a chance. What would Sugar do against raging, sword wielding man power such as Alex Jones? Nothing. That's the answer. Um. So yeah, I thought that How was really funny. How many Movie Bobs would it take to defeat one Alex Jones? Um, I suppose maybe it's not about the know. amount of movie bobs, rather the size you would have to reach to defeat him. I think uh, the real Alex question Jones. is, would, would the different movie bobs be disgusted <clears throat> with each other? Would they not live up to their own standards? Oh, they would probably well, not get along, would. yeah. Well, maybe he's got like Apocalypse's power where he can just grow to whatever size he wants. <laughs> you His know. area of effect is just becoming larger. That's That's his power, along with the ability to control sugar. This is why he's such a difficult enemy. But then what's Alex Jones's power? Um, Sword fighting. Outside of cracking the earth in two, uh, <laughs> there's a few things. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so the other thing I was going to mention was um, EFAP 102 w uh, w took place, and um, <clears throat> it was it was a combination of a, of a discussion on The Last of Us 2, as well as uh, we checked out a video that... Um, that Jay put my sights on, called the the one word ruining superhero fights. I think it was it wasn't very good. I thought it was the N word. Uh, well, I think that's what he went with in the first draft, but then it got knocked down by YouTube. So we went with flight. And uh, see, I just think that fucked up the video because it just didn't make any sense. But hmm. um, there, there was a bit of like there was, there was a bit of a weird pushback, and uh, I wanted to talk about this f f for the sake of the of the guests we had. A bit of pushback from. Uh, Several people in the audience who are not happy with certain covers. So I'll just uh, I'm go I got three comments to just have a look see at. First here you see he got um, Evan having some fun with 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 how the the conversation went, which is for me I felt personally it didn't bother me. I thought we were past that this that at this point. If he had said that in like person, I'd be like, well, a lot of people when talking to us don't uh, even see that distinction at all because we're. Um, we're heavily focused on it, so I totally understand someone being like, "Wait, what? I can't just talk to you about how it made me feel." It's like that's not allowed. We'd be like, "Well, no, it is. Just we're looking for um, uh, counters or or uh, I don't know, even even an acceptance of just like structural issues." So like the the conversation went a little bit awkward because we were trying to talk about the the structure of the writing, but um, Internet Janitor was not only unaware that we were going for longer than like 10-ish minutes or something he said, but he was also just uh, willing to concede on those, but he wanted to talk about how much he enjoyed the game, so it's like the conversation just didn't uh, flow that well. Then you got um, a, a response, I don't know if you want to take it, Ranks. Well, yeah, um, so everybody, if everybody needs to take like a pee break or grab a drink or something while I read out his name, 
uh, <laughs> feel free to go ahead and do that. I'll give him my best chance. Um, so the highlighted reply is from uh, Altaserhist 5 h 4 r uh, is his first name. I assume it's a him. Um, it, it could be so it could be a woman. Uh, they have either way. They have Parkinson's clearly. Uh, <laughs> the last name is Astavavsurfa, and they said, I think it's Swedish. Uh, they said, I thought we were past the point of gish galloping, but apparently only Mahler and Wolf are capable of avoiding that when they're on their own. That was such a weird comment. Like, yeah, I have. I know, like I. I recognize all the individual words in that statement, but the way that they're mixed together, I don't know what the meaning of this comment is. I, I legit don't know what he's trying to say. So gish galloping was something I wanted to specifically avoid. If you listen back, I make it clear several times. I don't want to pile on about seven or eight arguments for why the cure was a no-go. Instead, I wanted to do one at a time, and I wanted to focus on them to, to get an internet channel's perspective on each one. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I don't know if that's directed at any of us individually with throwing out individual points, but we actually didn't even get that far. Over the two hours, we talked mainly about um, the nature of Joel's death, like how it took place, and uh, why Ellie speared Abby, and um, I think there was one other major topic. So to cover those, just those three in two hours, means that we were going pretty slow, and... Um, you know, we, we had plenty of opportunities for, um, we left plenty of opportunities for, for Internet Janitor to respond, so I thought it was really weird that, like, it would be considered gish galloping. Maybe they were mistaken, and what they wanted to say was, um... Excessive uh, politeness. They, they confused that with, um, gish galloping, clearly. Well, I was gonna say maybe they were using gish galloping where they meant to use something else, which was also popping up in uh, comments. you want to read this one, Ray Eggs? Yeah, say, Poor guy got dogpiled hard by Southpaw and Monroe. At least the host try to give the guests some deference and a slower approach, rather than just browbeating seemingly for an ego boost. So again, um, I would probably argue that was the most reserved performance from uh, Southpaw and Evan that, that we've had on EFAP. They're often very, um, like, like Southpaw at several points chose to uh, give the, the mic, if you will, to other people, even when prompted by me. Um, and then Evan is 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 you know in a race with Theo to be the um, the quietest <laughs> contributor, but only contributes what they have to say. I guess ER would probably beat you guys out. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was that was odd. There was definitely no dogpiling because the the meme going around about the conversation was that there was a lot of silences where um, we present a position and then we wait for Janitor to respond, which is not something that happens when people are getting dogpiled. That's actually. An impossibility. The idea with a dog pile is the you know Rags asks me something, I go to respond, then Theo throws something on as well, and I'm like, oh, okay, so I go, and then Metal throws something on. It's like, okay, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? So it's weird. Um, I don't get where this was coming from. I don't know if it's because people were looking for a better conversation and they didn't get the one they wanted. Because uh, I I can understand that, but it's just that. Uh, uh, well, let, let's look at this last one to just bring it home. Uh, disappointed again. Another EFAP where they ignore the actual point, create their own based on their interpretation, then spend the whole time shitting on their made up argument. What happened? I don't know what happened. <laughs> Should be a question mark fan, not a full stop. Comment. Yeah, I, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt and uh, used a interrogative inflection there. Uh, no, you should have said what happened. Like they're describing an event. What happened? Which, what? 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 What happened? happened? Like, what? What occurred? Yeah, it was an occurrence, and it was called yeah. what? I don't know if this was regarding the debate portion or, or the, the, the video coverage, but uh, I do know that when I covered it with Jay, uh, we had a bit of pushback as well, being like, his point isn't that flight can't have stakes. It's something completely not in the video. And you're like, oh, okay. Because yeah. uh, he's pretty explicit in that video. But if they, yeah, again, if they're talking about the debate part, I, I don't know. I don't know what to, to tell you folks. Um... If you watch EFAP 100, uh, Internet Challenge was hoping to get on at that point. We couldn't fit him in schedule-wise, and then 101 was already um, essentially taken up. So we had him on for 102, and we said, like, you want to talk about the video, the video coverage, and The Last of Us 2. And that's how the conversation went. And I just wanted to say that uh, I thought Southpaw and Evan both did uh, just fine. They're both very civil and um, made their points clear. And we did it carefully. Uh, we wanted to make sure the individual parts were, were addressed where they were, so... 
Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to make sure that, like, these strange grievances were, um, read and accepted as just, just like, oh, hello, we see you, but, like, I don't understand where this is coming from. Um. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, um, I imagine it was bumpy just because of the conversation itself rather than trouble with, with uh, how we were doing it, because I'd say it's one of the better debates we've had, right? If you can call it that. Not to, like, oh. put words one's mouths, but people have a tendency to see like any debate and call it a shit show, no matter <laughs> how it's working. Just because there's disagreement, it becomes a shit show in some people's eyes, subconsciously. Um, Everyone thought the arrival debate was good, though. I think that one gets the top rating Everyone. usually. Uh, Not a single person disliked that debate. Uh, Just putting that out there. Southpaw exposed mm. himself as a shusher. He did. He did shush uh, in his channel once, but he was being interrupted. So you know, sometimes. Oh God, he shushed someone once. Yeah, oh, really Southpaw exposed himself. I think. I think it was the way he shushed them. He was like, bup, 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 bup. and uh, that that annoyed many people. But it's it's all right. Uh, so yeah, I guess all that's left before we <laughs> consider. The coverage is uh we got three hot takes tonight. One of them is gonna be delivered right now before the other two shall uh, shall wait. I actually just can't wait for Spaceballs is boring to be a mild <laughs> wild take from the past. I'm sure it'll just be in the, the catalogue of EFAP hot takes, but um yeah, I suppose it's it's all on you, Theo. It's it's all on you. Here you uh... go, buddy. I'll try and not take too much time with this, but uh, chat, I, we ha we need to have words. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, remember way back in the day, we were talking about the prequels, and I don't like the prequels, and you told me that I should watch The Clone Wars because it makes the prequels better. And I said I would not watch The Clone Wars because I think it's probably bad, because I have it on authority of people I trust that it's pretty bad. I fucking watched it. Uh, yeah, oh God. it's really bad. It's really, really bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's hard to go... I was told it gets better later, like, after seasons one and two, and then I got to season three, and that was bad, and I was told it gets better after that. And it never actually got better, is the thing. The... The best arcs probably peak to somewhere around like a 6 out of 10, and it sits quite happily at a 4 for most of its runtime. Just about every episode is filled with just, like, so much stupidity. Everyone in the show is just, well, apart from like two characters, are just complete idiots at all times. It's insane. Uh, the logic of the world is like ridiculous, it takes everything about the PT and just makes it worse. Like. I was told Anakin gets character development. That didn't pan out to be true. It's basically Aww. just things Anakin does in prequel trilogy, but he does them a bit more, and we play the Imperial March when he does them. And it's usually probably less justifiable. Like, there's this one point very early in the show where Anakin, like, he's with Padme in her office, and he's complaining and trying to get Padme to come away with him during the war for, like, two weeks on just a holiday. Like, and he's getting really annoyed and pissy with her because she's choosing her job and her duty to the people and whatnot over just running off with him. Is this, this Anakin getting better? That does sound like something he would do. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing. <laughs> with the prequel trilogy Anakin, we know that is not a good thing. Ah, oh, jeez. I really like the scene where he um, he pissed on Padme. I don't remember that scene. I have well, to. Well, originally, to uh, when originally in the Italian version, he was ejaculating <laughs> on her, but for censorship reasons, they had to go in and post and change it to pissing. So the Is that Americans better? would buy it. Huh? Well, yeah, West, Western audiences are ready for piss, but not like, for. Okay, cum. if like okay, genuine question: Would sexual peeing get censored less harshly than uh ejaculation everyone in chat who saw this segue coming <laughs> give yourself five <laughs> 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 oh my 
Okay, so that's that's I guess the hot take. Anything else you wanted to cover? I don't know, like broad strokes. What I do you mean, think the problems in are? Broad strokes. Uh, another problem I could raise is the show is absolutely allergic to nuance. Like com the writers running for the hills whenever they hear like a whisper of nuance. It's insane. Anytime there's a possible dilemma where there's like it's not clear who might be right or who might be wrong or you know what the correct answer in the situation might be or what the right thing to do is, the writers try their absolute hardest to just try and demonize one side to make it so that one side is right and the other is wrong just so there's nothing to really think about would you say that the show not that there are any other shows like this but do you think that this show might suffer a little bit because it understands that its target demographic is rather young and so they Absolutely. have to make things extremely clear so that like maybe potentially like a child's brain has to be able to digest it so absolutely its um, biggest problem is that it's entirely and absolutely written for children but then it has the goal sometimes to pretend that it's not and that it's something more when it really isn't and it doesn't have the teeth to be like it got to the point where when i was watching it with the people i was watching it with every single time a jedi that was not like one of our established Jedi Masters or Anakin or Obi-Wan or Ahsoka was on the screen, we were pretty confident they were going to die within the episode because that's the only time they ever show up so they can die. Like there was this Russian gremlin one who they were prison breaking at one point and just because they needed someone to die because this is the Clone Wars and, well, you know, war is hell, they have him just get killed by dogs. Dogs? Oh. Just Correct. space so could dogs. You. Like he's defeated by just space dogs. I'm sure my people had a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they did too, considering you know they were protecting a government black site for the CIS. It was you know it was fine. Yeah. All right. Well, Theo, I've heard that Maul has a great character arc oh. in there. So uh, why don't oh. you why don't you why don't you get the audience to hate you a bit more? <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to say, by the way, the three hot takes of tonight: one's from Theo, one's from myself, and one's from Fringy, who will be here eventually. Uh, so okay. strap in, right, chat. Which, this which is not. The, which of the which of them is the is the like? I'll on ping the scale you. Of hot uh, to I... hottest. Where would you say this one lands? Oh, this one. This is probably the easiest one. I've noticed that chat have been fifty-fifty split on whether or not they agree yeah. with Theo. Chat are not going to be happy with the other two, I don't think. No. I... Someone said the the Russian gremlin guy is in the Phantom Menace. Is he? <laughs> so I I have no idea who you are referring to. I just saw that in chat and thought I might highlight. He's in it. the Phantom Menace. That's news to me. Maybe he's in the background and he doesn't have any speaking lines. That maybe probably be the who? case. I'm What's his sure. name? Let me Google him. Chat. What's My his favorite name? lines in the prequels are the non-speaking lines. Oh, that's a point. On the point Maul, of Maul, and on the point of it. This is, someone said Maul became, was the best developed hero in Star Wars, and I will add you, Theo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! Oh, no! Wait, sorry, what was that? Look, ah. if Theo, just deliver your tisms. Go on. Okay. Uh, Maul's dialogue is one of, like, well, the, the dialogue in TCW on the whole is not very good at all. Like, it's really bad for almost its entire run. Everyone is hilariously and horrendously explicit about what they want to say. Everyone misses, like, the easiest, like, the easiest counters they could have to points. Like, there's another, just as a quick example of that before I move on to fucking Maul. Um, Padme oh, and Senator Bale, they're having, an, they're having a little discussion in their chambers because the point of this little arc is that padme is motioning to not buy more clones while the war is still going on <laughs> oh um, you're suggesting that it would be really stupid for them to stop because yes because they're in the middle of a war for their existence you know right. so maybe you want to not just stop buying your military i don't know seems kind of reasonable to me and but like her only real answers are just like moral appeals to like we should be looking for better solutions and the like and that kind of thing and that's what the episode chooses to focus on when bale has a real answer that actually means something he says which he says to padme and the show never really brings up again he tells padme we can't really buy more clones this war's bankrupting us we can't just like unlimit the banks and in order to take out this loan 
we can't just deregulate the banks in order to do this. This is a terrible idea. We need to think of something else because this is outside of our budget range. And then this, instead of focusing on that very reasonable objection, the show goes with, goes with Padme's moral appeals, which amount to nothing in the face of the Senate, really. And there's not much to it other than like, okay, yeah, war bad, but the Republic doesn't even have a leg to stand on in that front, considering not one citizen, not one citizen of the Republic is willing to goddamn fight for their own nation or Republic. They just want the, they'll just make the clones do it instead. That is weird. Hmm. Yeah, that's always struck me as really weird that not one single Republic citizen went out and, you know, got their blaster put on their armor or whatever. No, they're perfectly content to let the clones do it. So well, on to more. So, <laughs> what, um, go ahead, does, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll okay, interject sure. if I, yeah. Uh, Maul, he was still somehow probably, hmm. I almost want to call him the best part of the show because he does get a little bit of character development that actually sticks. His relationship with, don't laugh at the name, Savage Oppress was, um, <laughs> was you know, there was something was, there. That's a Shadow the Hedgehog level name right there. I know. <laughs> it's, it's very embarrassing. Like, Is it real. spelled Savage Oppress? It is spelled Savage Oppress. Is this a is this a, a villain in the show or a hero in he the show? He's in fact a villain. He's a big oh, wow. man what? powered up. He's a big Sith man powered up by magic, like straight oh up with actual magic. There's Good. there's a sorceress in the show. I see. <laughs> Savage oppress. I, I like it because it's <laughs> subtle. He's one of Mallman's people. Uh and yeah, they are, they have a thing when they eventually meet up. Uh but with Maul, uh his dialogue is some of the most painful minutes of life I've ever experienced. <clears throat> I genuinely can't stand it. I, I want to have a talk to the person who took Darth Maul, the character that, like, I don't I don't want to say he has, like, widespread appeal or anything, but the little appeal he has is based in, like, he has a strong appearance, and you can maybe think about a few little things to do with his character like based on got two how he on. acts. And, yeah, wow, two-pronged lightsaber and decently cool design. Yeah, and he's, he's like a hardcore Sith zealot. Yeah, they choose. They chose to took, take this character and have him be the one who starts like spouting cryptic prophecies and strange rumbling fucking Sith villain monologues in this low rumbling tone, not a hint of like real impatience or anything about him. He's a very Saturday morning cartoon villain, and I don't want to say the voice actor didn't do a good job, but I think he probably didn't do a very good job because... Uh, it oh, okay let's bring us back a step <laughs> fucking <laughs> wow going after so, fucking so, so oh. when, when Maul's first introduced in the show it's when Savage goes and finds him uh, and Maul because they needed to somehow justify how Maul survived after getting sliced in half uh, so they find Maul he finds Maul off on I think it's some some important planet in like KOTOR or something. I don't remember the planet exactly. Uh, but Maul, he's been trapped down in this like hole place in, in the like, pit. And he's got his bot, his lower half has been replaced by a spider, like a robot spider. Why not two legs like he's used to? <laughs> I <laughs> That's a good question. Why not a um, hover legs? That just <laughs> no, no robot spider, uh, and he's also gone completely uh, insane. Like he's that does kind of look more insane. evil, though. I imagine it's spookier to have give him spider legs than just oh. you know a typical biped set. You know, like, that, yeah. that's absolutely why they did it to mm -hmm. a try and disguise that it's mole and b you know to m make the whole thing a bit creepier and weirder. Because like I said, he's gone completely insane. Like. He's out of his mind. He's rambling about nothing to Savage until Savage manages to like get him back and take him back to the sorceress lady. And you know what they, they do with all this like insanity and trauma and you know potential they they could use to then build a character out of the magic lady who just kind of sucks it all out of him and replaces his spider butt with a with just normal humanoid robot legs because her oh. magic can do that too. Oh, that's, that doesn't take any sort of, like, machine skill or engineering. No, 
at all. Okay. She does it with her magic. And then Neat. when he wakes okay. up, he's completely fine. What do you mean <laughs> fine? As in, like, any, all of the crazy rambling and stuff from his earlier appearances. Is oh, well, that's what happens when you attach yourself, you, when you give yourself a spider ass, that's what <laughs> happens. But when the natural order is is restored and you get, go back to having two legs, then like you, a bad you, trip. you get your sanity back. Yeah. He was turning into a spider. That's why he was going insane. I see. His body couldn't, his his upper mm -hmm. half, his his organic self couldn't accept the this abomination of nature. The main point I want to make about Maul is, for the most part, the types of lines and dialogue they choose to give him seems like something I'd give to Sidious or Dooku long before I'd give it to Maul. Like, granted, we don't have the most information ever about like how someone would characterize Maul on a broader scale. But the thing I always go back to in terms of if I, if I was forced at gunpoint to characterize Maul in some further thing after phantom menace because for some reason someone's mandated from on high that he has to survive uh it's the bit where he's trapped by the weird arbitrary laser doors away from qui-gon and qui-gon goes to sit down and meditate and sent and like center himself while maul's pacing back and forth like still clearly very hot-headed and aggressive I feel like there's something in there you can start to extrapolate a character out of. And I feel like TCW went in completely the opposite direction and turned Maul into a patient schema type. Which yeah, is that doesn't seem right. It's very strange as yeah. a writing decision. Well, okay, what if he was you got... you know, we've got this villain who stands out from a typical Star Wars villain and, and is quite different in character from the rest of the Star Wars villains we have. Is what he... if we made him the same as all the other ones instead. Yay. I've not actually seen this show. I'm just going off what you guys are saying. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the opposite point here, and I'm going to say that it makes total sense that he is a extremely patient schemer. Because imagine how fucking long it must have taken to get his body tattooed like that. <laughs> oh, no. They have wrecked. Incredible oh. patience. I think that's natural coloration. Oh. Is I don't it? think it was supposed but, to be in the films, but I think but, it is. Because in TCW... But we, see another one of, but we see another one of Maul's species in, like, in the prequels, and he just has like skin tone skin. We see more of them in TCW, and I think most of them have like skin color skin. It might be the weird sure. magical nonsense that the sorceress lady does that makes them that turns magic, them into weird magic tattoos. Patterns. It's either then, it's either then like, like that. It's, like it's in either Park natural Ride, and like oh, not magic all of them tattoos. Have it. It's like either natural, but not all of them have it, or it's like very prominent mm. in that culture. But I'd always I'd, I'll say it's it, another species. Like all right, it just looked exactly the same minus the tattoos. But <laughs> well, to be fair, there are like there are species in Star Wars that look exactly the same as humans, but a different color. So. Yeah, it's like, oh, mm. like, no, those aren't Romulans, those are Vulcans. Like, all right, <laughs> fine, tomato, tomato, whatever. You're right, yeah, though, I had always those are supposed to be, like, ancestors of one another. Yeah, I guess. Also, don't panic, chat. None, none of us four have seen it. We're just, we're just goofing yeah. with Theo while Theo delivers the hot take. Theo's yeah. allowed to have a hot take, okay? Yeah, send he can all be... of your complaints to Theo, his <laughs> email. Please do complain at me, because I'm... If you've hung around the Discord at all, I am ever too happy to complain about this show there's so much that like if if you give me inroads i'll have things to talk about but i can't come up with off the cuff just like there's so there's so much wrong with it almost persistently the entire way through i don't think there was ever a single sequence of episodes that weren't riddled with holes on some level or another it's no. a mess guys it's not that good <laughs> what? and some it for some people sure does feel not fix the prequels. Some people feel vindicated by you saying it. So you got you got some people. Yeah, I feel the chat, this chat is split <laughs> between like very bad. This things. is really cool. The Based. community itself Based. is imploding because of there's yeah. so many opinions that are so strong both ways. Like I've <laughs> I've seen the statement. I don't like Theo, and I completely agree with Theo back to back. <laughs> I've never been in a controversy before. Someone said talk about Jar Jar. So after oh, watching Jar season one, I was I was told again and again, like, don't worry, he becomes less focused. And I was just like, why the fuck did they focus so hard with yeah, Jar Jar? They, 
and the answer, the answer is that it is for kids, and they think Jar Jar really appeals to children, which he probably does. Yep. And then they I try feel like Jar Jar applies. Uh, he appeals to infants. You know what appeals? Because even when I was a kid, I didn't like Jar Jar. I yeah, I wasn't, I, I wasn't fond. Jar Jar's yeah. death with a crowbar. Mm. Violently. <laughs> oh, uh, I want to hear his screams. I, I, Regarding he, Jar Jar, he's he's gone for like most of the show after that because yeah, they do drop him when they decide they want to try and grow up. <laughs> but he does come back for like an arc in season six or so. He I has a weird team up arc with Mace Windu oh for my some God. reason. <laughs> See, I <laughs> to defeat I, it would be it would be if I was ever like handed a Star Wars like if I was given, if I was given the sequels or whatever you know in that fantasy world. It would be my objective to build up enough good faith with the audience that I could bring back Jar Jar for a scene and they'd think it was funny instead of going, why the fuck have you done that? <laughs> I'd say, yeah. I, I would like to point this out because I think it's topical. Mike Gussler uh, sent a super chat. He said, I love Jar Jar Binks. Don't mess with my boy. <laughs> um, however, I would like to point out um, that I do indeed believe uh, Mikey, uh, based on his... Um, his icon. I, I, I totally do believe that Mikey really does enjoy Jar Jar Binks quite a bit. I, I'd like to point out that I don't actually want to beat Jar Jar to death. I'm not weird. Um, I may, maybe I I would I would like to give him something to think about with the butt of a rifle, but I I wouldn't want to kill with Jar Jar with his, with a butt. <clears throat> I would put I, I would put Jar Jar on a complete arc. I would have him get beaten the fuck out millions of times until he like becomes a grizzled veteran Binks. Grizzled mm. Binks. Django Binks. People keep telling me to talk about General Grievous, and there's not much to talk about. Go on then. He's ineffectual and pathetic. Oh, gee. And all right. I'm keeping loses... it out on chat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's fairly non-controversial even among people who watch the show i would hope so because you can't there's no arguing against that he is ineffectual and pathetic in one of his first scenes in the show he loses a fight to a padawan and lets her escape said padawan being ahsoka but you know Oof. oh he because he seems like he'd be a oh. really difficult opponent with a four lightsaber no but he can't use the fucking force so just yeet no, him no, no. a cliff and you're fine it's really good it's even better than you think right because Grievous literally is holding her neck in one of his fucking claws, right? And she manages to pry said arm off of her neck. Like, with just like strength. robot strength, though. But doesn't he have three yeah, other but, arms? Uh, uh, clearly, clearly she used the force. Is measured in, like, PSI. She used the force. <laughs> I don't think she did. Well, that's... Yeah. well. Using the force is the obvious way to defeat Grievous. Just... Mm. Force push him away. He can't do anything about it. He's not. He's not. He doesn't have the force. Nope. Hmm. Uh, what about because we, we were told when it when it came out because we weren't watching it. We're like, oh my god, Rags, Maul, why aren't you? Why aren't you watching the? Uh, I forget. You'll know what it is. It the fall of Mandalore. The something of Mandalore uh, arc. Siege of Mandalore. That's the one. Right. Yeah. That's um, the last arc in season seven. We were told some of the greatest TV of all time. We checked IMDb. Several ten out of tens all over the place. Ooh, this is God. top People tier. Say that, I don't believe you. Oh dear. Well, let's uh, let's hear Theo's perspective. Okay, uh, I want to lead with I guess something positive. Uh, I usually don't. I think TCW's art style is quite uh, hideous. Oh I'm my! Say. I don't <laughs> that's think leading it's very. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I honestly but, don't like no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, but in the Siege of Mandalore, the show gets like a big upgrade to the point I'd say it looks quite pretty. I think it looks really good in that arc. Uh, the arc leads with a fairly neat character moment for Anakin, like him being a cocky son bitch, which is kind of what I'd been led to expect was what Anakin was gonna be most of the time, but he's not really. Uh, but the arc is mostly hurt by the fact that it's taking place alongside, like concurrently with Revenge of the Sith which hurts a lot because they're constantly having to like go out of their way to make sure you understand where the timeline is relative to revenge of the sith which also makes revenge of the sith seem like it happened over like a weekend as opposed to being a long sequence of events but that's a slightly different story uh an example of things going wrong with regards to it trying to tie back into revenge of the sith is um Obi right at the very start, Obi-Wan and Anakin have just come back from 
doing a thing in like an opening fight or you know just to get us into the episode uh and ahsoka's shown back up uh f- for some context she at the end of season six she'd got or was it season no at the end of season five yeah she'd got kicked out of the jedi order and a bunch of baptisms had happened but we've caught back up to her they didn't leave on really bad terms and she says she's found darth maul and darth maul is currently leading the mandalorians from the shadows as some weird mob boss thing which is a very strange setup to have in the end of the clone wars uh and she's asking them to send uh like some number of clones to go and help him help her smoke him out essentially but the issue being Obi-Wan's just got a call saying Coruscant's under attack. Like this is this is where Revenge of the Sith opens. And somehow the show wants us to believe that uh the Jedi going to help with the battle where the where the Chancellor has been kidnapped over the Republic's capital planet, like the heartland of the Republic, is that's the them going to help with that is the Jedi playing politics, according to Ahsoka. And what? she tries to call Obi-Wan out for that. What? Oh yeah, that's I mean dumb. At that point, it's their planet that's being attacked, so <laughs> yeah, and... of all the planets to attack and with the Chancellor, mm-hmm. I, I feel like this is the time, yeah. you know. If Wait, not we're... if not going here, what would they possibly have to do to get your attention? So what you're saying is that the show is deliberately characterizing Ahsoka as unintelligent. No, because the show also wants you to believe that she is correct, as far as I can tell. Like, the show is trying to portray her in that scene as, like, the correct one. Because Obi-Wan doesn't really offer any counters. Like, at no point does he really go, dude, it's Coruscant and they've got the Chancellor. What are you... Maybe he assumed it was so obvious that it didn't need saying. I don't... I think that, like... I'm I'm not gonna say this is a hard and fast thing, because it's just something that started buzzing around in my head while watching season 7 and the end... Well, the Siege of Mandalore arc. I think Ahsoka in that arc might be a Mary Sue. (gasps) I just saw someone say that that moment was stupid, but the arc is great. You gonna... no, oh, here we go. No. Uh, just to expand on Ahsoka a little bit. So, in this arc, pretty much everybody likes and respects her and looks up to her. Like, just about like, to the point where even Maul is going, "Yeah, you got to join us, bro. You're you're the best." Like, I like ev- your tats. <laughs> <laughs> Every single character seems to be in support of her. And like since she's hyper competent, she succeeds pretty much everything she does. But I guess I, I, I'm not ha- I'm not happy yet to commit to saying yes, she absolutely is a Mary Sue. I just it it occurred to me, and I had to keep thinking like, oh my god, she very well might be as the whole thing proceeded. But uh, back to how it connects with Revenge of the Sith, because I think that's where most of like the bigger problems are, other than structural things, which are from set up from earlier seasons of TCW because this is the culmination of a bunch of things. Like, this isn't the first time they've gone to go and try and smoke out Maul while he's on Mandalore. <laughs> that happened again, that happened before in season six, I think. I think yeah, I think it was season six. Uh, and that's how uh, the Mandalorian... I don't know what her position was. The, the person in charge of the pacifist Mandalorian peoples ends up getting killed, which was one of the few times the show like vaguely impressed me. But uh, there's a later scene, again with Ahsoka, where it's um, it's the scene where the, the Council in Revenge of the Sith are talking about, you know, the dark side surrounds the Chancellor, blah, 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 all that whole thing. And for some reason, they just called Ahsoka in on that. Like, she walks back into her chambers, and that call's just taking place on the, I don't know how, you, the hologram thingy. And then they start letting her in on all of these, all of this stuff that they're talking about doing and going ahead with, despite the fact that she's not a Jedi anymore, like got banished from the Order. Uh, and then she starts, you know, offering her own input and the like. And then when she starts saying things they don't like, only then does Mace come back with, no, we shouldn't be telling these things to a civilian anyway. When they called her, <laughs> they included her in this. Holo projector conference thingy directly 
by their own volition for mm. some reason just so that we know where we are in revenge of the sith at this point it's right. incredibly bizarre what a highlight sort of chat said this chat is debunking everything this guy is saying and then like a few below says theo is right <laughs> <laughs> Because some people are like, you need someone to come on and defense the show. This is a hot take delivery, fellas. You can make of it yeah, what you will. We got two more I'm to come and two videos right to cover. This isn't like a I, TCW you debate thing. If talk to me about the show, I'm on the Discord, and like I've said, I like insulting it, so feel I'd free like to talk to, uh, about <clears throat> Go. I'd like, I'd like to bring up a hot take of my own. Oh, God. It's just that, um, hey, hey, Mola, remember like two hours before the stream when I said, hey, so... When will the coverage start? And you're like, oh, the hot takes will probably take, you know, maybe like five to ten minutes. We <laughs> talked about Minecraft milking things. That was entirely for you. <laughs> Let Theo have just some time to explain himself, and then we'll go right along. This is more than I've ever talked on EFAT before. Let yeah. me this one. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not. I'm not protesting that. I'm just. Um, I my my point is that uh, I want to. Mola, I want you to be aware of how long your show usually is. Like, like a it's few okay hours, right? It's okay that it's that long, but you need to you need to get it in your noggin. What do you this mean? Is what happens? I know, this happens with every single thing I'm I'm involved in. I always I always underball it. People like underballs; they don't like overballs. Exactly. That's that's my point. Well, then you can guess every time I say how long it'll take. You should just you know give it a mollify it like times it by two and add half an hour. Okay. So something like that. <laughs> also, by the way, while um while this was going on, you know how we, when we were playing Among Us, I accidentally like sabotaged one of our games by by accusing you of being the imposter when you weren't. Oh, you want to tell everyone about that? Or... <laughs> no, no. Weekend Warriors just posted the footage. Oh, on his to channel. His main channel to his main <laughs> channel. He's like done a nice edit of it as well. <laughs> is that that's pretty copyright free? We could we could pop that on, but before we start up today, if you want, I oh, guess. that'd be fun. Let's go. <laughs> <sighs> Looks like it'll be funny. Yeah. Um. Well, to to make sure we've hit the main the main main things, and um, I remember people talking about something to do with the repeat the zombies and magic or some shit in the show at some point. Yeah, there's magic. It's very the, the so sorcerer's it like lady. The force, I've been or. About. I, it doesn't appear to be the Force. I don't think it's the Force. I think it's just magic. You know, oh, cool. Asajj Ventress, character from prequel era, Dooku's protege person. I think she I comes know. from this weird. She comes from this weird tribe of strange. I think I don't know how to describe them, but they're led by basically just a witch. She does strange spells in a cauldron. Gives. Dooku, basically the bubonic plague through space. I don't... Hmm. At one point, she shows up into a fight because I think Grievous is invading that planet, and she just starts blasting things with green energy. It's... Um, I don't I don't know. There's just magic in the Star Wars universe now, and it's very out of place. Alright. Uh, the only other thing I, I just wanted to ask you about, because again, I got a bit, sure. only got a season's worth of context. Is there a point where either Anakin or Obi Wan have to get their memory erased because they know too much that they could possibly know for the third movie? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, oh, seriously? I believe so. I believe so. Well, first off, there's things that they shouldn't really know because it fucks with things that I want to mention. Uh, on that note, they find out that this Tyrannus figure is Dooku. Like, Dooku straight up tells them, I am Tyrannus, and that I, I bought the clone army. Oh. oh, yeah, I wouldn't have written that into my show. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't get erased. There's this arc called the Mortis arc, where it plays out like really bad fan fiction or filler, because they go to some planet that's like, it, it's the primordial nexus of the Force, and there's three figures there who are impossibly powerful. One of them is has, like, grey skin and red eyes and dresses in all black and red, and the other one is in, like, greens and whites and, you know, brighter, shining colours, and the other one is more in grey. Can you guess what they may represent? Christmas. Um, <laughs> favourite condiment. They represent the Christmas versus Halloween. <laughs> so one of them is essentially the like the avatar of the dark side one of them's an avatar of the light side oh. one of them the, the other who is their father is 
balance neutrality i don't know one of the two oh. centrism let's go with that oh. uh, be the most enlightened of the three <laughs> um yes because he's their father and he's got like wisdom and shit <laughs> uh there's all kinds of revelations in this arc for example anakin being shown that he is the one who is going to destroy the jedi order he like he's shown all the things he'll do in revenge of the sith Oh, fuck. Well, that kind of all fucks of with the Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Just a little all bit. Everything. So and the wait. best part is, he's shown all of these things, and that's what turns him bad, because he decides, I'm going to do such horrible things, I'll have to do them anyway, I guess. Oh, is, is it like the kind of thing where it's like, to stop myself from becoming this, I shall do these things, and those things turn out to be the evil things, or what? I, I'm not quite sure what it was trying to go for, because, of course, he's getting, like... But wait, he's getting sweet talked by the evil man. Where does right? the where does the erasure come in? The erasure comes in right at the end of the arc after they leave, and everyone pretty much forgets the entire experience. So oh. is this like a machine they hook you up to? No, it's just a planet. A planet? Oh, it's a planet of like everyone forgets, like it's an amnesia planet. <laughs> I. It's not entirely clear exactly what this place is because it's it's Can you ironically not like, remember? It's I can't remember clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's giga not important though because like Someone in chat said the father erases Anakin's memory. Oh, does he? Yeah, he might have hmm. Well, it's I don't think it's particularly relevant who does it, when and how. It's just that it happens, to be honest. Because you never really want. To it's be like a force plant kids. or something. Force planet. It, it, yeah, it is. It, it's it's this weird force nexus planet. These three figures I've mentioned are the only things, are the only people living on it, and just the the entire way it works seems incredibly like intricately tied to the force. And they spend the first few like they spend most of the first episode wandering around, getting talked to is cryptically that, by these three other characters. Is that and, the character that Matt Smith plays? Or was supposed to, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. They they were gonna have one of the one of the people from Mortis be the villain in Rise of Skywalker, weren't they? Yeah, he, yeah. That was Matt Smith, I think. I think it was the son who was so, the dark said, side man. The father does it first, then all of them die, and then the planet dies, and then they all wake up and <laughs> oh, they've forgotten the whole thing. Planet dies. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a funny interesting message the show sends um so everyone dies in the end like the son accidentally kills his sister uh and is very upset about it despite him being like plotting against her for the majority of the time uh and then he ends up killing the father and then the son dies so yeah they're all dead by the end uh and as with his dying words the father tells anakin that he has brought balance to the planet by destroying it? By all of them being dead. The planet then, was, the planet then starts to explode. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so so in order to bring balance to the force, kill everyone? I mean That's an right. interesting concept of balance. I guess zero does equal zero. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Time yeah, but Well I this don't, uh... I don't think it was going for that. There's your hot take, I suppose. Uh, a lot of a lot of people like get Anna on to debate Theo. It's like, I mean, we could possibly set that up in future, but. Uh... Um, oh, the debates are always the most popular. <laughs> yeah, just, just uh, think that they always go so well. Good. I'll try it if you want, but I've never done live debate before. And... Uh, yeah, the thing is, me and Rags <laughs> actually can't really be involved because we've not seen the show, so that's going to be awkward. Yeah. I don't know. If half of what I heard is true. Mm. Well, we've already we're, we've already been told several times by many people to avoid it, and I th I don't even think Ufab Chat want us to see it because we're gonna shit no. on it. I think you'd do worse than I did. <laughs> <laughs> um. So don't worry if Theo has said uh, everything that Theo said. If it, if it's all inaccurate, if it's all misrepresentative, if it's all cruel, and Theo's a big dingus, it's okay. We just wanted to show you his hot take. My I perspective on the Clone got Wars. Wrong. Yes. Um, but don't worry. My my position on the Clone Wars is is, is just gonna be that yeah I've heard I've heard different things from different people. 
Hey, but at least it's not some kind of like critically acclaimed animation. Yeah, yeah it's not like everybody directs to his like it's one of the great not a beloved show that uh, people really well, it's really. It's a enjoy. beloved show, but it's not like it's what, not one like that. It's, it's not generally not considered like you know really <laughs> smart and and like You'd generally considered like a. Is it really? Yes, it's generally not considered like an intellectual masterpiece, right? It is in some of the later arcs, I believe. People bring up some of the later arcs, like Umbara, Siege of Mandalore, things like that, and they're held up as like great well, television. A very, a very grown-up intellectual masterpiece. Yeah, because the show does try to grow up. It really does try. It fails, but it tries. Well, some people fail to grow up, so... Yeah, true. Art imitates life. But yeah, um, have fear, because... The other two hot takes are going to be much more fiery than this one. Um, oh, they shouldn't, but... Uh, the But but I was going to say, I guess we can move on to checking out Weekend Warriors video, and then uh, we'll get to coverage. Once Fringy arrives, <laughs> the next take shall come. It's going to be great. So everyone jump into the watch together. Hooray! So this is going to be... Is, is this like a super cut of when we were playing it today? Or yesterday for some people? Jay, what is this like a supercut of us playing it? I'm guessing. I don't know. I just it, we can worry about playing it, and they started, and it's like, oh, this is the footage of that time that that thing happened. All right then. Um, does everyone want to jump in? We've only got three so far. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I am in. Oh, are you in, Jay? Hang on, hang on. Someone asked me, GX, do you actually think Christianity is indoctrination, but Drag Queen Story Hour is not? Dude, Twitter is rotting your brain. What is oh, yeah. Direct, story Please direct now. me to the place I said that. Fucking. Okay. <laughs> so I posted. Okay. Oh Christ, that's what a what a bad faith interpretation. Like I post like oh Christ. Yeah. Okay. Fuck that. Shut up. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, uh, just. Well, I was indoctrinated into Christianity. It does happen. Okay, I think I've got the video up. Well, it ran for me for like a couple of seconds. Is uh, can anyone not see the video? I can see the video. I, I see, see the you know, video. I, yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna. You know what? My my favorite response. Okay, I'm just gonna. I feel like a good uh, part to start with the response to that is uh, I don't know what drag uh, queen story hour is, so I I doubt that I made any specific comments about it. Um. The idea that you can be LGBT and that's fine isn't the thing that you are describing. Shut the fuck up. Okay, carry on. All right. So, like Drag I said... queens are different than LGBT, aren't they? Yeah, you don't even have to be LGBT to be a drag queen. It's just a, a strange I coincidence most of them are most of them are. Wait, uh, you think? Yeah, I'd imagine. I, I imagine most, since the vast majority of men are straight, I would, I, I would imagine that it's just Guys like who like to dress a up. a lot of dra uh, gay drag queens, though. I feel like, I'd I say more than the general stereotype. population, but I, I think I'd still say that... I'd, I'd still say most are probably straight. Uh, any drag queens in chat? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Come on and let us know about uh, drag queen sexuality love... demographics. I, I would love to you like not men? care. It's important that we understand. We need the statistics like on this. Dudes. Do you like dudes? All right, I'm playing it now. Are you ready? Yay! Yep. Oh wait. Ah. Hmm. It's smaller. It's, uh, oh. Press that. I went from. I've completed all my tasks. <laughs> I went to. So uh. No, yeah. Let me explain. Yeah. Uh, okay, Jay. Smaller walking to admin. Um. And then I um was wondering what he was doing in there. Is, uh, I like, checked the cameras, I've done all my tasks. No, yeah, but that's not an admin. That's in uh, security. But I saw you walk into admin. <laughs> oh, well, I was in security. I went, I went, I know, I saw you walk into admin, then I uh, walked back and I was like, oh, I wonder what he's doing now. I'm gonna look if he's looking, if he's swiping his card or he's looking at the map. I go back in and he's completely gone. Oh. So he walked out in that time because, um, because Jay's going way yeah. too hard on me. He's gotta be the imposter because mm. I'm so, uh, mm. like, the, the problem is. That's There's no way that I'm going to be able that's to the only available that's left, but... Yeah, but where are you, Jay? 
Well, I know it was you. I it's, I know. I, like, no, I was I was with Faye for a little while. I was around him. Mm. My way to games, Jay. So I don't know why you would trust that. You gotta have something to corroborate. Where was the body? Uh, in in the place where you view people, uh, security, right? Where you see people in the videos. Is that the big screen? Doesn't really help. I didn't see anyone around there. I don't know. It wasn't in there because I was in there. Oh. <laughs> hmm. So, I, I would. I would recommend skipping vote if you kill me. You're gonna be an oh, oh. bad choice, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would be very suspect of Jay, but I'm dead now. Oh. Oh no! It's. it's oh no! <laughs> oh. We can listen. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. What? This fucking Jay guy. Yeah. Mm. Let's just do our tasks. <laughs> like, I'm just. I'm oh my God, Mauler! Oh my God, you got played. <laughs> no, I didn't. There's <laughs> nothing I could do. I, 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 I got played. <laughs> Watching that fuck up was kind of hilarious. If only... <laughs> so if there's only two instances. In a killer, so if the killer kills someone, it's over. It's yeah, over? yeah. Oh, so when there's three people, oh, yeah, it's like a sudden death thing. But whoever the killer is just needs to press the button one time, so we need yep. to split. What? No, we don't. We need to split. No, we don't. Jay, <laughs> Jay what? You guys have just it's all over. three of us need to split because if the killer kills one person, which they can do at any time, no, the thing. No, the thing is, right? Like, we should just go to the admin. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Well done. Fucking idiot. Yeah, you kept the game, Jay. Well <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I saw, because I swear I saw yeah, you going Yeah, you me. don't know what you saw. <laughs> really oh, Rags, like have me in the fucking people face. Left. Yeah. So said it's Rags, he literally <laughs> just asked what the win condition- Yeah, like, I just played it. This was one of my first games. Yeah. And so, I- I was- You see, here's the thing. I don't actually think Among Us is all that great. Um, it's like a bad version of TTT. Oh, the second hot take. Yes, the second hot yeah, take. <laughs> oh, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's just like a watered-down version of TTT that isn't as interesting, and it's boring and dull. But I see why people like it. Because I, I had to get clarification because I was like, oh, if there's, if there's three players left, they, the, 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 the imposter just has to press a button and win. So it's almost like, what's the point of even... So that's why if there's going to be three people left, you might as well just bank on guessing on somebody um yes which i don't think is i just don't think that's very good game and as you saw I jay still... jay was just super fucking sure that i was the bad guy based on i still don't understand what i saw based on like, terrible I... vision i went in the fucking um I, I, I was in the hallway outside admin i saw you go in there i go away and i'm like hmm, maybe he's the imposter i'm gonna see what he's what he's doing in there i look in and he's just not in there anymore and it's like I swear there was no time for him to leave by any other direction, but fuck it. I guess there was. Yeah, and you're so sure like, you, you can you yeah, kill the innocent so vampire. Sure. Yeah. Someone says, ah, for fuck's sake, Rags, it's just a fun mobile game. You don't need to criticize absolutely everything. <laughs> but what? So for starters, sentences begin in capital letters, oh. uh, and they end in punctuation. <laughs> so why don't, you, why don't you think about that for the next few hours? Damn. You said right. firstly, I thought there was going to be a second Frank, one. you need more than five people. It's like, so, what I just criticized has nothing to do with how many people you start with. Um, I think it's fine for the game. Yeah, I think it's, it's fine. fine. It is totally fine. I definitely see why people really like it. And you can expect it to turn up on EFAB Gaming at some point, probably. Yeah. Uh, probably. Probably, yeah. That's a new word. It means probably, but but not for sure, but probably. Wait, where's the Australian? Uh, I don't know. You'll be here at some point, but we're gonna Australian. soldier on. Because it's He's... time for the He's return. Right, kangaroo! You know what's funny? Uh, we haven't covered Patrick Willems in uh, just about 100 episodes. Ooh. Yeah, it's crazy. Since I arrived. Since before you arrived. Community. Yeah. It's uh it's nuts that he's like such an endearing meme or enduring meme rather. And he uh and yet we've we've literally not covered him since episode three or four. Was it three? It was three or four it was early. It was in the first five. Was uh, it episode two was covering him in episode three or four? I can't remember. Well, let me double check. 
here. Let me go to uh, youtube.com. EFAP Patrick Willems. It was episode two. Well, we covered him again after that. It was either three or four. And four. And four? Two and four. Ah, so yeah. 99 so episodes averages, ago. So if you answered three, you averaged out to being correct. Hey, there you go. So there you go. Good stuff. Well, either way, this is one that's been, you know, that's, that people wanted us to cover this for a while, and you made a part two to it as well. It was what do we want from a Star Wars movie? I feel like, you know, Patrick's Wait, perspective. Oh, I'm Star Wars EFAPs. I know, right? You love Star Wars. No. Literally a favorite thing of all time. Yeah, yeah but this is this is more about, I feel, more about the meta of Star Wars. It's not about, like, oh, re- like what goes on in them, I think. Yeah, this so, is going to be like a, a meta discussion in is, many ways. Think of this as Star Wars adjacent. <clears throat> yes. Right? And, it's like Star Trek. It's Star Wars adjacent. And Star- discussion. Um... So yeah, is everybody is everybody ready? No, I have to pee, but I will be back in just a moment. All right. I will yeah, update. Not bad. Hour and a half intro. It's pretty. It's pretty good. It's pretty quick. Hmm. Um, and you know, <laughs> I've just been sent this by Wolfie six six six. You might enjoy this. <laughs> 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 Is that is that me? Or... <laughs> I, I guess so. That was a little. I was hacked. Yeah, I've been hacked, guy. Yeah, that's a combo of gas mask plus I was oh, hacked, guy cool. plus Among Us. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was unable to. Actually, no. The one time I got to play imposter with you guys, I did kill you all, or at least all that were there. Good, good times. Yeah, um, you did. Well, you did really well as imposter. You keep saying that. I fooled people once, just once. No, you have that to live up to now, forever. I was gonna say you're gonna be you're gonna be embarrassed when you find that I'm not actually very good. I just got lucky. You get at running conversations and people tend to listen. Um, that well, counts for something. What 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 happened in like the Alien game uh, that'll probably happen in Among Us is that you just the goal of like a lot of people just be to waste time. Yeah. Just, like, getting in the way of stuff and. Uh, yeah, you don't know. Hey, Rex, check out that wonderful Among Us art. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. That, I believe the same gentleman made one of me that was pretty nifty. Oh, and really? Now you got yours, too. Uh, mine mine was a... Uh, I didn't have a bloody knife in mine. Maybe... Uh, uh, I don't want to armchair psychoanalyze here. <laughs> but... Uh, I'm seen as the villain. Was, I don't know. I don't, What's it, the, it, it, do you want to post yours? I can put it up. Um, I don't have it saved. I can click on it real quick. Here it is. I've got it. Boom. Got it handy. There you go. There's mine. Ah. <laughs> I like you have the shades on still. It does kind of look like, yeah. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming we're both imposters and I'm, uh, I'm the one who's killing. You're the one who just looks nice and is like, hey everyone, how's it going? I'm the unassuming, um, uh, you're the honey pot. Mm-hmm. The honey pot. I'm the honey pot. I'm the oh, money wow. shot. Mm. Honey pot, money shot. That's that's me. Yeah. Um. That so, time to delve into the mind of Patrick Willems once again. Yeah, the first of, and it's, it's suitable because it's called Every Frame a Psycho. I'm not saying I'm Patrick Willems is a psycho or anything. Every way ready funny to cringe. If he was sponsored by Rogaine. Sponsored by Dollar Shave Raid Shadow Club. Washer. Shave Legends. Raid. Raid. Oh, oh my god. Loud. Stop. Lately, oh. I've been thinking a lot about Star Wars. Why? Yeah. As in. So, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop right there. Oh no. So I would like to point out the very odd modem placement that we have going on <laughs> right on top <laughs> of the wood floor by behind the lamp. What an interesting and the surge protector. Seems like a tripping what hazard. What an interesting home setup this is. Think about where you how have to long... put your modem down on the on the floor behind your surge protector, right on the couch, right by the couch. Right there. What an unusual. There's a story behind this. We'll never get the answer to. Well, he's a filmmaker, so this is all very deliberate. Mm. So maybe the modem represents 
his connectivity uh, perhaps with others like through that modem it's his hub for how he views the world and sees other people and or he's, I don't know <laughs> or you just put him there cause fuck it <laughs> or you just put him there mm. imagine how long it must have taken to get the camera in that like position set up like that I wonder if there's a dude holding it Maybe. He's like he's Why like teetering on the couch. He's like, oh god. You think he's used to sharing his couch with a dude? Yeah. Why not? No. I mean, well, I, I don't know if that's a. Okay, so like epistemologically <laughs> speaking, I don't know if that one holds up. But Wait, maybe we'll get more clues as what we soldier mean? forth. In more than I usually do. But recently, it's been less about the movies and more about what people think of the movies. See, I'm fascinated by the responses to The Last Jedi. The movie is a massive critical success, it's a massive commercial success, but among a sizable portion of uh. the fans, it's divisive. In <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. It's, uh, yeah. it's successful in these regards, and it's just divisive with fans. So, I mean, yep. I like the pronunciation of fans, like, fans. <laughs> Again, it's a commercial success, but it, it made $700 million less than its predecessor, attributed to the loss of the next Star Wars movie and the next Star Wars movie, and splintered the fan base in one of the most divisive, to, to the point where it's its own analogy for divisiveness now. So, yeah, it's, I, there, there's a few things to be said concerning that, certainly. Also, he fucking he hated Rise of Skywalker, and that was uh, commercially successful. Is that a notebook? What is that? Because you have the modem here, and it's got if I hope his camera isn't too good, because that's probably like got his Wi-Fi password written on it, like most oh. modems do. It's taped on the side. Yeah, that's too blurry. Um, It'll be fine. I yeah, sure. Um, that's probably the case. Um, but I, what is that behind it? Oh. Huh. huh. Weird. Um, but, what an ever ever enigmatic is Patrick Willems. But yeah, I just um, it's always questionable to bring up that it made money. It's always just like, oh, I don't know, man. Uh, mm. Lots of lots of lots of things that'll be in your corner if you do that, especially with uh, critical success. I'm assuming he's referring to like critic scores on aggregate sites. If that's and, and how much does that too. count for what you know? I'm trying to think you know, of like. At that point, you may as well refer to the fact that it got made. Like it was created. All of these people who were supported by the industry thought it was a good idea. Yay! I'm just saying, the only like even Force Awakens managed to get past the fan base as a sort of I would say as a majority, but uh, TLJ couldn't squeak by. So uh, makes makes you wonder, surely, about, about what's going on. But you know, that's maybe his setup here. He's like, hey, this made me think. So what is he thinking about? In a way I have from a major blockbuster, maybe ever. Occasionally, I'll skim through social media, reading reactions from people who so hate- So he has furniture to put the modem on. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't an empty room that he just moved into. <laughs> but like- it's The evolving so story. He's got a wine bottle just sitting there by the window. He has a Wii. Yeah, yeah both guys have Wii Wii's, that's all right. Of course he has a Wii. It's a bit childish okay. to refer to it as a Wii. Well, oh, what about a Winky? <laughs> Best name for a, for a Wangus ever. Patrick that was the, that was my that was my first. It was it was when I was very very young. It was the Winky. And that's why even as a kid I was confused about Tinky Winky. I was like, why would you why would Tinkle and Winky and then you name a character Tinky? Uh, why would you well, do this? Tinky is an adjective that describes his Winky. His Winky oh. is very Tinky. It's better than Wanky Tanky. <laughs> wanky Tanky. That's his musically inclined older brother. Both what? of those words mean things. What does it mean for he something to be Tinky? Hmm? What? For what something it, to be tinky? Yeah, if something is tinky, what does that mean? I feel tink, like that means well, small. Tink is like an onomatopoeia, sort of, for like metal on metal. Tink. But also, right. pink was right the uh, was was a, a shortened version of Tinkerbell that Peter Pan would call her. Um, tinky. Urban so perhaps dictionary. he's implying that his penis is like a, a, a small fairy creature. Uh, okay, that's tinky, one. Urban dictionary. When you shoot a boss in a video game and the things hit him, and he makes a tink noise. Most bosses in video games are tinky. That's shit, Urban Dictionary. That, Fuck off. What? That's <laughs> I imagine cool. that's a very poorly rated definition. T 
Tinky. Uh, no, that's the top definition. <laughs> Second definition. Yeah, but they have is, ratings uh, where it's like positive and negative. Second definition is uh, Tinky. Stinky without the S. Wow, very <laughs> insightful from Bart Belcher 39. What, what are they suggesting about Tinky Winky? It was actually uh, posted by Crackhead Kuza. Ah, well, Crack, like Crack Yakuza? You can always trust crackheads to have the best takes. Well, what if the Yakuza bosses are tinky because they go tink whenever they get shot? Well, I'm I'm just glad they don't go chink whenever they get shot because that would be that would be very inappropriate. I'm just curious if the the original idea was stinky winky and they were like, oh, we should tink probably not. Works. A boss who is impervious to your attacks and makes a tink sound when you hit him. Okay. So his winky is impervious to damage. Yes. No, stop. His That's... winky is impervious to damage. Well, I mean, no wonder he's on the Teletubby team. That's like a power. No he's the fucking. The, is he the leader of the I Teletubbies? Think so. They had he's, a. He's the they alpha. Had an actual oh. Dick resilience contest, and he won. The eleventh definition is Tinky, a cute synonym for cock, dick, or penis. <laughs> so his uh, name is Cock Cock. Yeah. Penis penis. <laughs> I mean, penis, dick, penis. Dick, dick Cock is a, a legitimate name that someone in the world probably had. Yeah, probably. That's what happens when you spend too much time in the po hole. Nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I hated it. Line that I've encountered countless times. It's an okay movie, but oh, a bad Tinky. Star Piss. Wars movie. It no, it's just a bad movie. Oh, I don't like that phrase. He's it's just got a the bad text movie. on the screen. Uh, well, the, the implication here is that the implication here is he's reading it out from something he saw. Like he's he's like, this is in the review. Someone said it's yeah, it's an okay very... movie, but it's a be it Star Wars movie. Half of that is right. I mean, half correct. Yeah. Every I time think I you see this, ban the phrase. It's a good movie, but it's a bad X movie. No, it's it's. So so he said so he's the thing said it's a good movie about a bad Star Wars. Okay. Yeah, it's an half, okay movie. Right? Yeah, that's half wrong because it's not a good movie. Yeah, by itself, adding Star Wars to it makes it worse, not better. Yeah, but well, I think we talked about this at some point. But the idea is that um, if you remove all of Star Wars as lore and history to that film, how does it function on its own? It's like I guess it's an improvement because there's less to contradict, but uh, there's a hell of a lot less context. Yeah, but the child is ruined. That's for sure. But it's still garbage on its own. Like, it still self-contradicts. I wonder, what does that even mean? What makes a good Star Wars movie? And more importantly, what do we want from a Star Wars movie? I'd say probably um, strict adherence to lore and previously established informations and characters acting as they've been shown in the past. I'll go simple. It just makes sense. How about that? Yeah. Just All makes right. sense. Payoffs that uh, are supported by the events previous to them. Like cause and effect being that. respected. That would be neat. I think I wouldn't adjust. That one song from the Cantina. I want a scene where Chewbacca barebacks Luke. Chewbacca barebacks okay. Luke? I thought you said Chewbacca. Can't, can't, because he's such a hairy fellow, can he bear back? I don't think so. Doesn't bareback just mean without a condom? That's normally what it means, yes, Jay. But I was, I was, you, I was. It's in the spirit of the, of the concept. With the fellow. Theoretically, he could shave, and it would, it would be about, you know, approximately. I agree. He can only shave theoretically. <laughs> Hang on, I bet if you Google "shaved Wookie," oh no, oh, no. Let me give that a shot. that's a great idea, Jay. Um, oh shave. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it to be posted. Is it getting posted? I mean, it's not. It's, you know, honestly, it's really. Well, so there was a character from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, that show is garbage. I hate it. I watched one episode so, of it. Chase, that's a bad opinion. And <laughs> the, yeah. the character was Drew. <laughs> there was a character named Drew, and uh, uh, <laughs> Drew Baca, I think, was his name, but he went by Drew, and he was like, clearly supposed to be a Wookiee parody character. Um, and, and he looked... Well, let me see if I can get a picture of him. 
<clears throat> let me let me get a picture of Drew Baca here. He he was a he was a fellow. Let me old Drew Baca. He Fry put up with a lot from Drew Baca, but he was he was quite a sight. <laughs> Drew Baca was something else. So this is the sh oh that's well. I guess we have our answers. No, there you Oh, that's what that image was. Why is he naked? Yeah, he drew. Uh, Carl throws some batteries at, at at him in in his entrance episode. I'm gonna stop looking at that now. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna carry yeah. on. There for everyone. I'm gonna carry on looking, guys. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's more nipples than I do. Yeah, that's a lot of nipples. Yeah, because he's got that 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 one loner at the very bottom. Like his nipples kind of taper to a point. Hmm. It's a good thing he's got that bandolier on, or we'd have some issues. We want from a Star Wars movie. So I decided to figure it out. I put on my Skywalker Ranch hat to prove that, yeah, I went there once, and ventured outside to get okay. to the bottom of this. <laughs> the Skywalker the... Ranch, one of the dressing options at Galaxy's Edge when you go to the restaurant there? I don't, don't want to know. I get, I mean, <laughs> I give that a thumbs up, Briggs. I do. I think that was worth. I would think that was worthy of. It was out there, but I think you can grasp the pieces. Some people, I guess. I mean, um, healthy choice. Why is he like? I'm gonna go outside and why? discover what we want from Star Wars as a movie. <laughs> like, okay. Why yes, is this an entire article? Huh? I found an entire article called. Um, Belch. Star Wars characters, even Chewbacca, shaved edits. Yeah, but why though? Some and people just don't have a lot of time. I don't know. Look what we so do. Ed, basically, what? every um, okay. every Star Wars character, and I mean every Star Wars character with some facial hair, gets a shaved edit. Oh hmm. well, that's that, by yeah. the way, isn't very well done. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Oh, they remind me of uh, Justice League Superman. <laughs> oh no. Why did they bother? Oh no. It's it's like done with the blur tool. Mm. See more, yes please. Uh, no. No, thank you. It's good that we found this out. See more. Oh my goodness! So okay, so the the second to the pilot guy, what's his name? Frank Biggs. Frank. So Frank, without he kind of looks like he kind of <laughs> like. I want to say that's Mads Mikkelsen without the uh, facial hair. What? I I hard disagree. Mads Mikkelsen didn't look. There's it's, it's too different. I think I think yeah, that's what he reminds me of. That's what his face reminds me of. Is. Is 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 M squared? Oh, two M. Double M. Why did like somebody do it? this? What was the point? Okay, there's an entire uh, there's another article here uh, dedicated to mostly um, photoshops of Star Wars stuff into real like wartime pictures, which just seems seems like taste wasn't involved really with the creation of these images. Like, okay, <laughs> this is a bit cringe. So here's the thing, that could potentially be a good idea, but this is just, like, lazy crap. Yeah, it's not well mm -hmm. done either, but it's like, hey, let's, let's oh, add Star Wars crazy. stuff that into, <laughs> into <laughs> pictures from World War I. <laughs> That's terrible! I, this is why? the cringest yeah. shit I've ever seen. This is shit, yeah. That last one especially is awful. Oh my. Yeah. <clears throat> They thought they were so fucking cool and badass when they were editing these, but they weren't. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about this. This is a bit, like imagine they submitted this for like so, for some art project. You, as a teacher, you're like, oh, oh, oh. You fail. You fail. I art. give you a C for cringe. <laughs> C. My favorite is definitely the, uh, the, the not this. even like fun cringe. 
the yeah, stormtrooper and the dude coming Anakin together Shopping. to have their fight that's just <laughs> hey oh. can someone can someone editing post this to cringe topia thank you i'm sure you'll get lots of upvotes stormtrooper <laughs> versus gi drawn of justice john of justice john of justice yeah john of justice i guess because yeah, the, the guy's name is john and the the name of the stormtrooper is justice <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go with that sure all right, anyway, back to the video. <laughs> yeah, videos, right? Before we get started, quick disclaimer, I'm going to try to keep this as objective as possible, but Ooh, Star Wars uh, might have opinions yay. on Star Wars that are bound to crop up in some way, so really Calm quickly, down. here's my take on every movie. A New Hope and Empire Wait. are masterpieces to return. So I guess, like, after he was done with the video, he went back and made this? I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be how the video is well, done in total or not. No, I mean, like, this part specifically, it just seems what like... say that? No, oh, the fact that it seems like it's really quick, like he's in a hurry. So I think how he presents stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think that's just how he does stuff. Hmm. No, I, I think he did this afterwards, after he did the rest of the video. This seems like something he put in, like he squeezed it in and he thought, oh, I, let me, let me, before I get started, I want, I, I should get this little preamble thingy out of the way so I can explain myself before I go forward. I mean, yeah, you might be so, right. We'll be able to tell. Because uh, once he's done with this bit, there should be some kind of change in how he's presenting it. Can't the Jedi is good, the prequels are not good, but Phantom Menace is the most watchable. Force Wake. Wow. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to try this to keep this as objective as possible. The Phantom Menace is the most watchable. Out of all the prequels? I mean, so, I didn't even know that was in question. Surely it's Revenge of the Sith. Surely it's Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, it's Revenge yeah. of the Sith. Like, surely. Like, it's not even close, right? It's, of, it's clearly the best of the three. Yeah, like, it's I'm, really close. I want to, so, chat. Yeah, I want to see if anybody, unironically, th believes and agrees that Phantom Menace is the most watchable out of the three, uh, three prequels. I want to, I want to see who's in. Even the... then, like Attack of the Clones is way more watchable than. Uh, I don't know. I can see the I argument for both of those. I, don't know. I feel I'm, like it's got I'm... way more. It's bad. It's good appeal. I think it's nah. I think it's I think... neck and neck between the two in terms of terrible. I think I'd rather watch the Phantom Menace because I just think it's worse, and there's a there's an appeal in seeing how bad it is. Because I do uh, think I feel that way about uh, the Clone Wars. I, the I think Wars the, the, Attack the, of the Clones is Attack better the Clone. than the Phantom Menace. Attack of the Clone Wars. <laughs> Attack of the Clone Wars. Revenge. The War of the Attack. Revenge of the Phantom Clones. Oh yes, Wars. Damn, Damn that sounds cool, attack. right? Let's make it. That does actually sound very cool, Lucas. Um, Do it. You can have that one for free once. Uh, well, once you own Star back Wars. Save Star Wars. Remember, Revenge of the the Phantom Clones. The saying you could use it. Just you know, remember, remember, remember us here on. It'll e be. Not that one. It'll be all the Jedi who've died come back and as then, Phantom Clones, and they kill Rey because she's Palpatine. They will get revenge upon yeah. her and restore return balance. Of the New Empire. I uh, see. That's, that's not as cool that's the original as trilogy. Phantom clone. Can there be a Phantom clone of the Death Star? Return of the New Empire just sounds weird. <laughs> then, um, the, the, um, yeah. Hang on. A Jedi Strikes Back. Come on. Okay. Let's do these I'm titles. on board with that. And then the sequels would be um, garbage poop shit. See, I feel like you changed your uh, <laughs> your operation like there. Garbage poop and shit. And then you just added them to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's what I was doing with the other two trilogies. I was Good. taking like one, one, one word from each film in the title, and then garbage poop shit. <laughs> <laughs> People would still buy tickets. I'd go. watch it, dude. If they had brought like Star Wars Episode Ten garbage poop shit, I'd be like, "You serious? I want to see this." Very avant garde. What are you doing? The last Skywalker Awakens. Fuck it. Who cares? It's just the sequel. The title crawl that, that's is just a subtitle, not a title, right? No. The title crawl is just the troll face in ASCII. Be the so ready. Rise of the Force. The... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where did the Force go? <laughs> that's a good question. Mark. All right, Patrick, take it away. A New Hope and Empire are masterpieces. Return of the Jedi is good. The prequels are not good, but Phantom Menace is the most watchable. Force Awakens is good. Rogue One is pretty no. good. Last Jedi is great. Here's my ranking. And just right. remember, this is objective. Whoa! Revenge, Revenge of the Sith, Sith is, is last. 
Oh my god, are you shitting me? Wow, I didn't I had no idea. Jeez. He puts Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones and The Last Jedi over Revenge of the well, Sith. The Last Jedi doesn't surprise me because it's yeah, him. Yeah, uh, but like, wow. Why? Remember, this is this as objective as possible. <laughs> I would say it's number four. Revenge of the Sith, yeah, there's a good chance. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. We did rank I them in a hundred, right? I can't remember what we Rogue said. I, yeah, I can't remember. I think I was super torn between Sith and Rogue One as to which one was better. Yeah, we need to see Rogue One again. And we did say when we ranked them that the ranking would probably change the next time we do it. Because that's true. But he, man, he puts Revenge dead last. Oof. Wow, that is uh, opinions discarded. <laughs> is what this list, uh, like, as, to. In terms of uh, just craft i feel like return of the jedi and rogue one and revenge of the sith there's an argument for all of them having that third spot oh and some people wanted to mention um he was saying this part is to get his biases clear this isn't the objective part yeah oh okay oh okay good good well done <laughs> thank you and hey empire's number one so you know there's that i have a beer now now let's get Weak. back on track. I'm already on the track. Bitch. Oh god, here we I go. I win. So, when I ask, what do we want from a Star Wars movie, you might just think, The same thing we want from any movie, you dummy. For it to be good. But Star is Wars is more complicated than that. I no, not really. Do you mean... <laughs> it was a fucking movie. Does he mean Star Wars specifically is more complicated than... Apparently. Unless he's, he's maybe he's going to refer to the fact that it's like a phenomenon rather than just uh, your average... It's just a movie. It's just a bad movie yeah. and it's a bad movie. I was giving some credit like along the lines of what do we want from a Star Wars movie? Okay, so what do we want from films that exist like off of existing frameworks? Like, could you go to a Star Wars film and have it be some gritty noir investigation film or whatever and you'd be fine with that that's the kind of angle i was expecting from that title i guess but surely like from them from the most charitable point i don't get this then surely if it meets whatever standard he's about to introduce that would mean it was good I th so the i think he's talking right. in different i don't think he's talking in terms of good but well you? He, 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 he seems to be drawing a line between good movie and good Star Wars movie, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. He's definitely bringing expect audience expectations. I don't know. I'm very confused. Mm. I think it's accurate to say Star Wars is the biggest American cultural phenomenon since football. There's lots of big movie franchises, but none quite like this. Of the 10 highest grossing film series, Star Wars is the only one that's not an adaptation. It's not based on novels or comic books, which means they're... It's based... but... But it's based off of prior established movies. Yeah, but it's original movies. I, yeah, but I don't know how important it is that it, it started yeah, from... I... some Because a lot of these are adaptations as well. Don't even... Like, the people who are fans of the comics are pissed off at how brazenly they ignore their source material in a lot of these. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you look at that list... Um, the MCU often goes completely against uh, the source material. Um, I think this is J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. I guess that includes the new ones she's been doing too. I don't know how faithful they all are. Uh, Batman, that's all over the place. Um, uh, wait, they got Wizarding World and then they got Harry Potter. Okay. Huh. Disney's live-action reimaginings. Those fuckers... <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, you know. I just mean like, oh, it's not built on something else first. Um, some of the like the fact that Star Wars is Star Wars is almost like that's why it's so successful. The name sells whatever they're putting out, which I assume is the benefit he's referring to when uh, with the other adaptations mm -hmm. that they have something to build off of. Which you know, Star Wars is so old now that it it, it may as well be is what I'm saying. I. I, yeah. I just think that, the, like, The Force Awakens is so reliant. Like, it's insanely reliant on what came before it. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, they, things should stand on their own either way. But, mm, like, to say that The Rise of Skywalker is standalone is... Ooh. Safety net of source material. What is source material a safety net? I don't know. Uh, uh, safety. Yes and uh, no. Yeah. Well, it depends. 
safety net from what perspective? I think it, the, in terms of earnings or like wide appeal. Recognition, I guess you could yeah, say it is. Because um, you can point to Star Wars and go, yeah, that's a Star Wars thing. Like and... certainly not in terms of quality, because obviously theoretically oh, you could just not. have a shitty book that's adapted into a shitty movie and you're like, but you had something to adapt from. How'd you fuck up? Yeah. 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 Hmm. What do I mean by that? Well, going into a Harry Potter movie, most people already know the story from the books. Or with the Marvel movie, even if it's not do based they? on one specific most comic. I feel I like don't, most people I don't. don't. I don't agree. Yeah. I feel I, like I what put Harry Potter... The Harry Potter movies did not read the books. You have to do like a poll, I guess. Yeah, they were hyper-popular books, and the Marvel comics did spread out. Is, I, th I think reading books is kind of like a niche thing. Yeah, I guess we need statistics on that one, but um... Marvel comics, Maybe though, like... It. Give me a second. The MCU pushed, you know, superhero shit to hyper mainstream. It wasn't as where it is now wasn't where it was before. Let's just put it that way. And that's the same for Harry Potter. I I guess he's saying like, yeah, but it could take advantage of a of a preset audience, which I would agree with. Yeah, but the the Still. comics audience is way you know is insanely small compared to the uh, MCU's audience. I would have so... to imagine so. Yeah. This is this is from uh, today.yougov.com, whatever I don't know, but uh, July eighteenth, twenty eleven. So according to our results, they they did a poll, I suppose. Eighteen percent of those surveyed had read all of the Harry Potter books. Thirty one percent had read at least one of the books. Uh. Let's see. Da, da, da. The movies posted even larger numbers. So 25% of Americans had seen all of the movies. That's fucking insane, actually. Yeah. Shit. Uh, and 61% had seen at least one. Um, and these and these numbers grow between 18 and 34 year olds. When asked their opinions on the Harry Potter books, oh, that's interesting. 15% of uh people said that the series was a bad influence on children because it portrayed witchcraft oh my god <laughs> interesting um 45 percent 45 percent said it was entertaining but no important life lessons and 39 percent thought it was a good influence and had positive lessons to teach um so let's see yeah that's uh yeah um that's interesting I tell you, once I found out about witchcraft, I was, it was, I was, it was over. Ruined it. <laughs> Usually, few different storylines. Plus, you know who's not going to die because they're already appearing in trailers for movies coming out the following year. People reference this all the time. That only really happened to Black Panther. I was gonna say, how often does? I feel like that's a one-time thing, right? I don't know. <laughs> was there any confirmation Black Panther wasn't like a prequel? Um. Well, to Infinity War, it technically is. I guess, but like... Well, what I'm saying is the trailer for Infinity War was in the cinema for Black Panther, and it's like, oh, oh right, yeah. like, and then they bait his death in Black Panther, and it's like, uh... Bit weird. But, you know, um... I would actually appeal to contracts. People know, like, everyone knew that Chris Evans and uh, Robert Downey Jr. were leaving after Endgame. Like, everyone yeah, just but knew that. Between, like, you know, I don't think your general movie-going... Oh, what I'm suggesting is I feel like that's more widespread than people guessing the deaths from the comics. Like, I don't even think that's a thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But he didn't say from the comics, did he? Right oh, there. Sorry, what did he, what did he say? Maybe I... The comic, it's usually an amalgam of a few different storylines. Plus, you know who's not going to die because they're already appearing in trailers for movies coming out the fall. Oh, trailers, right. Um, yeah, well, well yeah, my, my thing to that would be uh, that, that, that that rarely ever happened. I don't even know... Like, outside of Black Panther, I can't even think of um, a time that's happened. No, I got nothing. I don't. Because I brought that up when it happened, because I thought it was so fucking strange to show that trailer right before Black Panther, but um, he's right that that could be a thing that could happen, but I just don't think it really did that often, and especially compared to the, the contracts information, which a lot of people would, would drill out who's going to be staying and who's going from. Yeah, but that that's like that's that only happens in like peak nerd circles. I no, really I agree. Um, in... But I think that was more widespread than anything. That I don't think people were able to predict a hell of a lot from just trailers about who's going to be living and dying. Plus, you know, there was explicitly uh, trailer trickery. Um, yes. You know, they 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 did like huge, big budget CGI stuff, 
to put misleading things in their trailer so that so. Oh, people are referencing Far From Home that, that the exist Was the trailer for Far, Far From Home out before Endgame was out? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's another example there. It was out after Captain Marvel. All I would caution with that one is that I would be surprised if anyone thought Spider-Man was staying dead in uh, Infinity War. I'd be like, really, still do you think way. so? No, yeah, it still I, counts, I but he's that. like the one hero I'd be like, I don't think there's any... He's got like infinite plot armor. I remember, I remember that because uh, Austin McConnell has a video out um, about... Uh, he Where he has presented the theory that Spider-Man Far From Home was fake and it was there to mislead. Like the trailers <laughs> were only there to mislead people. That's interesting. That Spider-Man that actually did die. An expensive misleading plan, though. But, yeah. all right. That, Dude, it would have been kind of cool. I, they would have pulled... If they would have done that, like, mad props to him for going the extra mile um, for what insanely little payoff that would be. But still, like, wow. following year. But Star Wars is the only major film series where the primary story developments happen exclusively in the movies. When audiences go into a new Star Wars movie, they don't know what's going to happen. It's an entirely different experience. Um, okay. Wait. Um, wait. So, so, uh, so let's, so let's this talk. The same thing, if you don't read the books, the exact same thing applies. Let, let's talk a little bit about like how, how we get information to do with what's going to be happening in the future for plot lines in these franchises. Uh, funnily enough, you look back on the past few years, we knew more about what was going to happen in R Rise of Skywalker than we ever did in Endgame. Uh, in Endgame, true. I think people got a lot of the plot points, and that was out of desperation to find out, while in Rise of Skywalker it was like, tell us how bad, Doc. Like, how, 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 how's this going to go? Mm. So, um... If we're talking strictly about the proliferation of information about these fucking plot lines, we got shit tons for Star Wars. But if he's going strictly from the idea of just like, oh, you know, Marvel has surrounding information in lots of ways that you can get info, you can get access to, to who's going to be living and dying versus Star Wars that's mostly secret right up until people enter the cinema. It's just like, I guess. I, I think I already know what he's doing. I think he's going to argue that uh, since it's not based on any source material, people don't know what's going to happen. Star Wars is the perfect opportunity to subvert audience expectations. Oh no. And that's why mm. Star Wars needs to do that. Because it's the only thing that really can. I'm calling it now. Maybe. I hope not. But yeah, I just want to say, um, in, like, in reference to trailer footage or comic knowledge or whatever you can draw from the MCU, he might be right, but in reality, like, Star Wars' plot lines were completely pilfered by the time uh, the films came out. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Experience than just about every other modern blockbuster. The Last Jedi's other work, series have been. Um, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think the Last Jedi's were. I think because the the culture grew around. Maybe yeah. Maybe this video, by the way, because this video is from after Last Jedi, but before Rise of Skywalker. So. I think so. It wasn't mm -hmm. on his list of rankings. Maybe he would change his mind about uh how it works at this point. But yeah, um, I think that happened because of how fucking pissed. Fans were so there were people on set even at this point who wanted to leak stuff. I guess. Have I ever taken this man yet? Sorry, I have to check if I've ever taken this man yet. Taken this man? Overtaken. Oh, where do you want to take? I it? haven't forgotten any man I've taken. <laughs> no, but I'm close. Um, I beat him up, Jay. Beat him up. Close to forgetting. I'm three thousand subscribers away from him. Well. Happen. It's a really different Coming experience Patrick. than just about every other modern blockbuster. And while other series have been rebooted and remade, Star Wars has been one ongoing story that has continued for 40 years and counting. Has there is ongoing. Okay, so mm. that when this whole a story that began 40 years ago is like, yeah, but there's huge gaps in between the trilogies, huge. and a yeah. lot of this stuff was not meant to happen. You guys literally didn't have a plan for the last three movies. You were. <laughs> Disney was practically scrambling as and, much as Disney And Disney could. have fucked with canon several times. Yeah, so don't don't give me that shit. Yeah. Don't don't even. Mm, yeah, it, it sounds a lot nicer when you put it in a broad sense of where it started, where it is. It's like, oh, that's cool. It's like, not really. Simply no other film series that works this way. We live in a strange time oh, where no other Star film series that works this way. Surely Alien, Predator... Terminator all Listen, work this way. I, I there are, that again. 
Other series have been rebooted and remade. Star Wars has been one ongoing story that has continued for 40 years and counting. Yeah, that's not true. So, so okay, Alien hasn't been rebooted. Um, Prometheus and Covenant are prequels. Uh, there are there are soap operas on television that are just uncountably long, basically. Yeah. Well, he said thousands did you say, of episodes. Did he say film um, series? Film. Well, I oh, think he tomato, tomato. I, I think he might mean it, but oh well. Oh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth has twelve movies. I think that, I think they've been have they been retconned? I don't know. He, he's he's saying ones well, that Star haven't Wars been, been retconned. So who the fuck cares about that? Um, well, retconned like in a meta sense, you know, like Terminator got retconned twice, so that's out oh, of the running. Yeah. But um, uh, Alien had AVP, right? And I think a lot of people like to imagine that they actually retconned that and Resurrection and stuff. But uh, the newest. Predator. Wait, Resurrection uh, was pre AVP, I thought. It is. Well, no, I'm just saying those are the bad ones, quote unquote, right? But the, oh, the, okay. there's been no effort to decanonize any of these, and the Predator actually references AVP uh, in universe, so it did. It's still canon. How does the how does the the the, the, the time and James Bond work? Is this a continuous thingy, or is that just always rebooted with a new actor? Mm -hmm. Like you don't know. That's always rebooted. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. Um. I think it's harder to name uh, series that have been retconned than their well, I... <laughs> film series is now. Coronation Street. Uh, the UK's Coronation what? Street holds the official Guinness World Record for being the longest running, oldest television soap opera in history. It first premiered in 1960 and has since aired over 10,000 episodes. <laughs> Oh yeah, Mission Impossible. Surely, wait. I want to listen to him again to see if he said film series. Whoop. Rebooted and remade, Star Wars has been one entirely different experience than just about every other modern blockbuster. And while others said and remade, Star Wars. Fucking! It just skipped over the series. part. Did he say film series? He just said other series. Huh. Well, then he's double wrong. Yeah, but like, I feel like I feel like um, I'm gonna make a guess that. He appe appealing to the length of time isn't actually important to his point. It's just something that uh, makes it makes him sound more right. Because let's be honest, you could make you could release uh, six films in twelve years. You know that seems pretty reasonable, and uh, it doesn't make the fucking it doesn't make it higher stakes. The fact that there was a long gap, like it doesn't make know. it better. Yeah, especially yeah, if really, you have twenty-year yeah. gaps between your trilogies. Yeah, it's like uh, you you could accomplish this with just the same amount of content in any amount. Wars has been one ongoing story that has continued for forty years and counting. There is simply no other film series that works this way. Oh, he did say film series. Yeah, well, he's wrong. What about Star? So, what about Star Trek? No, but well, if film you say series. forty years, if you if you film Star, Star Trek, Trek there's, a, there's a series of Star Trek films. Yeah. Oh yeah, also, you, had the, you had the you had the original uh tri you had the original series movies, you had the TNG movies, all in the same universe as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know how much longer, but I mean, I, I that depends on how you tally up the time. Uh, I just did a quick Google search: just longest continually running film series, The Pink Panther. 1963 <laughs> to 29. This, I think they rebooted that though. Uh, I, I have no idea. I'll just, uh, do, 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 do. uh, yeah, Friday the 13th, that was rebooted. Uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, okay. Uh, Star Trek, yeah. Star Trek's kind of weird. Star Trek's been rebooted. Well, what's that? What happened? Star Trek was like a soft reboot, right? They, they combined the old and it's different. Dimension, Kelvin, I can't remember what they do. Um, Alien would be my counter, right? Because that's been going since 79 till uh, Covenant, which was 2017? 18? Is that 40 years it's, more? I think it's just under 40 years. Ah, so uh, it doesn't count. Like, it's fucking 39 or some shit, so yeah, I uh, guess. Termin Terminator's close, 1984 to 2019. Well, if I'm assuming he doesn't count things that are rebooted, then Terminator's out. People saying Bond, um, I think Bond is considered to be something that was rebooted. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we just talked about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Alien wins. Like, it can it can get into his count. Uh, same for Predator, by the way. Alien it, 1979 yeah. to, yeah.
But, all right, but yeah, because um, one continuous story that keeps going on. You, you, I guess, if you wanted to be really specific, it'd be like alien films regard different characters in different parts of the world, so that doesn't count. I'd be like, okay. So does Star Wars, kind of. Um. Yeah, no, you know what? That's kind of true, actually. Uh, I, 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 maybe he would argue it always it always regards a Skywalker, so no. Ray Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> He was in Rocky as well. Jurassic Park, like that's... Memory. When did Jurassic Park come out? 93? That's probably not close to 40, but that's another one. Yeah, because that's not rebooted, that's the same universe. We live in a time where Star Wars is omnipresent. New Star Wars material is available in books, comics, TV shows, video games, and Disney plans to release... That's not even close to new. Uh, that it's no. available in books, comics, TV shows, and video games. That's been going since prequels. Possibly earlier. Star Wars is huge. It's gonna be like that. For a while. It's a new Star Wars movie every year until long after we're all dead. Or in case they fuck it up and then get <laughs> back the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> like, oh wait. Because they, they totally would have done two Star Wars movies a fucking year if they could have. It just didn't work out. One Star Wars film later. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't always like Oh, sorry, this. two. Wait, was this before or after Solo came out that he was saying that? This was, I'm assuming before Solo after, because sure. well, but he, did, Solo wasn't on his list, so. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. good point. But, like, <clears throat> But, Maybe it doesn't I mean, count it took solo. Us this long to remember. It, look, it took us this long for any of us to remember that. Yeah, we forgot solo was a movie that happened. A long, long time ago. Oh shit, I better be careful with music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna mute it until it's it over. Mutey. Mutey mute. I have muted it. Sorry, guys. If you wanna. Is it done yet? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. There is still music behind it, though. We're talking about Jimmy Carter. Much different. There was no canon, no episodes, no Wikipedia. There was yeah, just there a movie. Was. What do you mean? Wait. Yeah. What do you mean there's no canon? <laughs> what, is he talking about in 1977 there was no Wikipedia? Because, yeah. <laughs> because there was no internet? Yeah, I was gonna say, but there would still be law keepers. There were people obsessed, and they yeah. would write books. And like, come on, what are you talking about? Yeah, the, As the if Empire Strikes Back came in out. 1997, before the film came out. <laughs> My God, I don't know what, he's, what point he's making. He called Star Wars a billion years in the well, making. He's just saying there's only one movie, and that it wasn't like some huge extended universe is, is my guess, is my best faith interpretation of what he's saying. And now it is because of the greasy neck beards. And it's coming to your galaxy this summer. Cannon was not invented <laughs> until Dr. Cannon made it in 1896. Sweet. <laughs> uh, okay. Bet you guys didn't know that. That was before 1977. Yeah, well, but it, it's, he invented it and then they started applying it to things and they didn't get to Star Wars until way late. Oh, shit. Man spectacle ever put on screen with a classic story, both mythic and relatable, and it became the most successful movie of all time. Whoa. Fucking movie clips. Go stop. Go be careful. They can knock down our stream, Patrick. Do you not care for me? How could you? They're littering their Three videos years. with defensive measures. <laughs> Later, there was a sequel, and back then, what did people want from a new Star Wars movie? Pretty much just more Star Wars. And while the Empire Strikes Back, like they the wanted Wars. more Star Wars. I thought that was the investigation, right? Well, that's the, you know what he set it up. That's another. That's part of the theme of the because that question is going to keep coming back. He's like, you know what it is? I hope he doesn't fucking mock Brownus and end the video being like, who knows what it is? <laughs> like, no, please. I want to know what more Star Wars means. God damn it. Back is in May is a truly strange sequel. Yeah, like, we'll what, get into that more later. What attributes are of the original is important to carry forward, and what needs to be changed to make it original and not just literally a carbon copy of the first one? And that's a generic That's a very answer. important thing to establish when you say you want more of something. Because you, you, let's be honest, you know, you don't want literally a recreation of the first installment. Force Awakens disagrees. With you. <laughs> it's like, clearly, that's what we wanted. You want you want um, certain elements to be continued and carried on, while others to change and evolve as the story continues, and and that's how that's how it works. You know that's what sequels do. Mm -hmm. Without uh, without anything of the original, it's sort of pointless to make it a sequel. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you don't just want it to be the original.
Star Wars. And while The Empire Strikes Back is in many ways a truly strange sequel, we'll get into that more later, it gave them that. It had the cool, fun surface elements of the first one and- Yeah, like, are, are those bits? He went in and he shot himself with these, <laughs> like, interruptions? He shot himself. Pop <laughs> I, <laughs> Patrick Willems doesn't own a gun. I, I, Rax, I assume he shot all of his talking points in that way, and then he put the video clips on top of it, and then he did insert bonus bits at the end. Hmm. Like when he realized Maybe. he needs to provide some tisms for it. Um, yeah, if he's gonna say, like, well, what you described, Jay, is pretty much what Empire is. It's, you get all the stuff you probably really liked about A New Hope, and cranked up a little bit, and then you also get things changing, and new things happening. I wonder if that'll be his conclusion, I don't know. And built on the story in surprising ways. And another three years later, what did people want from seemingly the last Star Wars movie? More Star Wars, plus an ending. And they got it. <laughs> this this, dude, this, an this analysis is top tier. <laughs> this is... <laughs> what did they want? They wanted more, and an ending. Not, no, did you miss no. the point of your own video, man? Hey, Come on. You, know, you know who disagrees with this? Fucking wisecrack. They said it's hard to end anything. The middle is the best part. So, how do you think? How? how why do you think people wanted an ending? Nobody wants ending. They just want middle. Yeah, they were, were students of Mihai Cheek sent Mihai. Who shared his tutelage with uh, Hiddle Subtleties and Hiddle Subtleties, uh, <laughs> Freudian and Begidius, the the legends and themselves. Lesbonius. Don't forget Lesbonius. Oh, Lesbonius. We, this is like five scholars now. This is getting a bit nuts. What a pantheon. Yeah. The yeah. world is bigger than you can comprehend. True. Mubenheim. There you see, is as... more in your universe than can be dreamt of in your philosophy. Shut up, Jay! <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Jay! <laughs> Everyone liked Star Wars, everyone got what they wanted, and everyone was happy. I like that he put, I like that he put generalization. No. <laughs> no. I don't think you get to just asterisk generalization on the screen. <laughs> Listen, everyone liked The Last Jedi. Generalization. <laughs> and then we entered the strangest, arguably most important time in Star Wars history. That's part one. Uh, part gap. two, the long gap. Okay. So this will be the time the between gap. the OT and the prequels. Exciting. Guys, you ready for a Good history lesson? I'm ready for some analysis. Anywhere. I was hoping it was would have started earlier, but no. People, Star Wars fans want more Star Wars. <laughs> no way, dude! Really? <laughs> no, they I'm want the smart. long gap. In '83, it there. seemed like Star Wars was over. It was complete, <laughs> and for generations of audiences, including mine, we experienced it simply <laughs> as this. <laughs> VHS is uh, to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this, Patrick? <laughs> You wanted this cool his, shot? His I don't know. I'm very confused by this shot. <laughs> I don't even think <laughs> the shot is... The shouldn't he have no, set it I up don't... on like a stable ground and then had like a nice still shot instead of this pan around to his VHS uh, is awkwardly sitting on the beach? For the shot to be complete, and everything. needs to fall over. He should, yeah, he should use... He just, just hits it with his finger and it falls over. <laughs> to symbolize the death of the OT. Oh no. We consumed Star Wars with no hype, no anticipation, and- He found it on the beach. He what? found the Star Wars trilogy. He oh, found it on the beach. So narratively, he left the house after putting on his cap, and then he went to the beach and he found the OT there, and he was like, huh, this is helping huh. him on his journey to discovering what does it mean to be a good Star Wars movie. Never mind the fact that we're three films in, by this point, in terms of what I think Star Wars may or may not be. He's getting there, Theo. Jeez. Give him a One sec. More Star Wars. Time's ticking. He's given himself twenty minutes, and that's it. <laughs> more Star Wars. No, this is part one. Last one, we want an ending. Well, yeah, but then what do you want? Good. <laughs> Good. When, when they the said movies simply when, were. When people when can't bring myself to agree. A, when people said they wanted a grittier Star Wars, they didn't mean that. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> So far, um, he disagreed with the guy saying, uh, um, well, well, you just want a good movie, right? So far, uh, how long has it been since that? Like five, ten minutes? Of his video? Time. In his video or in our video? In his video. How long <laughs> has it five been? minutes ago, we were probably fucking starting to talk about the beach. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. So in, in, in his video, it's how four long and a half minutes long so far. So make it two. Okay, yeah. so um, <laughs> so that guy said, "Oh, I don't. Uh, we, we just want it to be good, right?" And he's gone, "No, actually, we just want it to be Star Wars." <laughs> I, by but definition, it can't that be with, anything but, sir. Prefacing that with, uh, it's more complex than that. Actually, they want it to be Star Wars. Thank you, Patrick. Very cool. This. We consumed Star Wars with no hype, no anticipation, and no expectations. Well, well only the what? first one. No, the the second one was probably even the first yeah, one was shit. We definitely dude, had expectations. Dude, they would, <laughs> they would even films in that box. Films they would even be hyped for the first one. Before. When people, yeah. word of mouth is how that film sold. It's like, oh, you, this film is amazing. It's, you'll blow your mind. It's the best experience I've ever had in the theater. You'd be like, oh my god. Yeah. The idea that it wouldn't have been incredible hype for Empire and then through the roof mountains of hype for the third. Yeah. I don't know if he's referring to the the whole of the OT or before the first one even came out. Either way, I think he's wrong. <laughs> the movies simply were. Collect no. the complete. No. The movie no. simply no. were. <laughs> what are you talking no, about? Not how this what works. Is how this work? he's like, trying to... Oh, that's like I'm just gonna go to the cinema and go into a screen room and see what happens. Like, oh, that's a good movie. And still, even then, that that person was still goes like, "I just seen the best movie ever. Go watch it." <laughs> so even then, by hypothetical, you're wrong. Get fucked. I think he means no expectations for sequels. I mean, but he didn't say yeah. that. He said no hype. He said no expectations. Yeah, I, don't think, I actually like, don't think he meant that. Like, I, I think he just I, meant the atmosphere of the fan base surrounding the films was different back then, almost non-existent or some shit. Like like in terms of yeah. the abundance of bonus material surrounding it because we're all obsessed with it sort of thing. Maybe you just think there weren't people leaving mean comments about it on YouTube. Listen, Star Wars fans have always been crazy, okay? They love this shit. Star Wars trilogy one by one in their attractive new packages. <laughs> in their attractive, attractive new packages. packages. <laughs> Which is weird because if you look at like the letters on all of them, there's just no through line here. Yeah. <laughs> Or in this collectible gift pack. We were like. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way it cuts off. In this collectible gift pack. So, anyway, let's talk about the. <laughs> now that that man is done talking. Shut up, old man. I won in their attractive new packages. Or He's in this collectible dead. gift pack. We were like devout Christians, and this was our Bible. We watched uh, them over and cringe. over and over, studying them, memorizing them, discussing them. And then, and then all of us disagreeing about them? I'm getting I mixed I messages see how this here. Follows through. All right. I thought he was saying that, like it wasn't like that, but now it is. I don't know, fucking okay. I'm just gonna go with it. Ninety one. What became known as the Star Wars Expanded Universe began. Countless novels and comic books and video games filling in every gap in the story of the original trilogy, telling stories from earlier in the timeline, and continuing the story after Return of the Jedi. Soon, there was not a moment okay. in the saga unexplored, no character whose backstory could not easily be looked up. Official Star okay. Wars guides and encyclopedias were published. For over 20 years, fans were taught that they could learn and know everything about Star Wars. Yeah, people people care about information <laughs> making sense. Yep, they like this like, shit, man. I people, yeah, people really yeah. like the idea of a world that's congruent with itself. Is that Casper Van Dien on the on the right? Looks like him, guy from Starship Troopers. But he more. does look like Rico. Hmm. And the one on the left were... looks like, um. Hmm. All right. He looks like um Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. We were given a canon of events that happened after the original movies ended and they accepted it. The expanded universe taught fans that there were answers to every question, that the backstory to everything will surely yeah. be I'm really I'm curious. Your life. I'm really curious where he's going with this. Like mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, this is all the thing that happened, all right, we're, we're, what's, what's, what are we doing? They could way, learn how, how all the rules. Uh, they, they could know the... everything about- What'd you say, sir? They... Uh, how did this work back in the day when they made all this- I mean, the, the expanded universe, wasn't that basically headcanon? Or did they actually get licensing from George Lucas to write those books, novels, whatever? Yeah, I mean, they would have had to have licensed the IP out and then they were writing them. I think there was a unified sense of like trying to make it make some sense, but it just all got ditched at one point. Yeah.
Okay. People in chat will probably know more about how that all worked exactly. Yeah. Backstory to everything will surely be explained somewhere. They could learn all the rules. Oh, they could know everything camera. about Star Wars. In 1997... Like, it's very important for my video that you carry this camera behind me while I walk down this random sidewalk for three seconds. He's a filmmaker, Rags. You wouldn't understand because you just sit on the internet complaining about things. He's doing the real job out there. Yeah, and I do my own camera work, too. Boo! Anything like documentaries you'd see on TV. I do want to say... People underestimate how difficult it is for Rags to maintain that position, the, uh, that live feed from the Discord avatar as well, and looking so happy. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not easy. Yeah, you would think that all the blood would rush to my head, but I'm used to that. I'm getting a bit of dry mouth myself. Metal is resisting cleaning out his eyes. Excuse me? I'm, my middle <laughs> bit is moist because of those, the, those pumpkin innards. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really slickery in there. I was just reading Shad. What, what is the why is dry? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at Chad because he was like, "Not mostly licensed." Because George Lucas liked it. Uh, he was like, "I have a dry mouth, <laughs> and my middle is moist." Like, okay. And my generation finally got to experience something we'd wanted for as long as we could remember: the Star Wars trilogy on the big screen. Ow! Why'd you have to do Thanks that? Loud. Now. For its 20th anniversary. We should have had we someone carry his sound balancing for him. Now, for the 20th anniversary. They just don't use that voice anymore. The vo voices aren't as cool anymore, okay? There, I said it. Picture of a lifetime returns to the big screen. The original movies were re released into theaters as the Star Wars Special Edition. But they weren't exactly the original movies. As we all know, George <laughs> Lucas made some. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so weird. Lucas, why? Why did you do it? Some alterations. Some were small, like cleaning up old matte paintings. But others were bigger. Changes that impacted characterization, that fundamentally changed scenes. We pretty much all agree that these changes were a mistake. But this moment marked a shift in Star <laughs> Wars fandom. Lucas, why? <laughs> <laughs> we needed to have this. It, in fairness, it added so much. <laughs> Look at those little Jawas on that dinosaur, it's so cute. <laughs> For the first time, the fans knew better than the creator. They said, oh no God. George Lucas, uh, Han shot first, Luke didn't scream as he fell, and Psy Snoodles was better off staying in the background. Okay, we gotta talk about the prequels. And Why do they do that? They, they, they start it where they're sitting down. They start that's, the film and, they, and they're sitting down. I'm almost Why? certain that's... This no, is you, coming from somewhere. You are right, but like he does this very deliberately. He fucking starts like all of his shots sitting down. He usually throws his hands into the camera too. Like that's like his thing that he does. I don't know why. It's style. With, it, we, we had like, like three back-to-back -back videos at one point. It was like Brown Table and like two other people where they would start like sitting down like we wouldn't have guessed that if they're sitting down at one point they weren't and there was a time where they transitioned from a standing to a sitting position a plot we hole. just weren't there for it they they like, i always i've always interpreted it as you know when they their face is really close to the screen and you can see their arm is fiddling with something and then they go mm -hmm. all right yeah like they're preparing the camera yeah, it, i've always thought it's like i'm just like you i'm a normal person okay you ready? Uh, and you, you as the viewers, like, oh my god, channel. they're so normal, just like me. When they record themselves, they press push, push on on the camera. This is so artsy. And yeah, these movies have a lot of problems, but we're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the two things here that are important. One, they were all backstory. They gave us origins for the major characters from the original movies, as well as the minor ones. Look, they gave us more backstory than anyone else. Hmm? Well, no, they introduced totally new things. I mean, when he says they were all backstory, I'm not entirely... Like, temporally, they came first? Yeah, I was going to say, technically speaking, you can say that, but, like, it sounds dismissive. I'm more concerned like, about what he thinks they're missing. Like, Zam Wessel wasn't a... That, she wasn't backstory. She, she was invented. She lived and died in the span of... Yeah. You know, just a moment, but that was new. The clone stuff. Well, no, they, they referenced the Clone Wars once, but... You didn't know exactly what those were. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't all backstory. It's true at all. Actually, asked for two. They didn't feel the same. 
The originals were How will they ever- People say that about Force Awakens, it felt like the OT, and it's always like, hmm... Mm. People Gotta suspicious. Gotta tie that to Element, if you're gonna say that. Well, it's the peak of, like, impossible to define. It feels <laughs> right. You're like, what does that mean? What are you saying? Because yeah, I, I would concede instantly that the prequels don't feel like the OT, but I don't know that that is a criticism. It's like, uh, they're, they're not yeah. the same thing. I don't think mm. the feel of the two different trilogies makes one better than the other. Um, I feel like specific. If, that's where, if that's where he's going with this, then surely he needed to spend a lot more time on the special edition and the changes well, that came with it. I'm because assuming... I feel like that's very important. When he, when he introduces part 5, The Force Awakens, or whatever the fuck it's going to be, um, he's probably going to be like, this felt like Star Wars. This really did. They were about relatable protagonists who were mostly regular people who came from humble beginnings. The world felt lived in and tactile. And the prequels abandoned... The world felt tactile. Isn't that the world felt feelable? <laughs> I think that is. Uh, let me double check. Tactile. Of or connected with a sense of touch. Perceptible by touch or apparently so. Tangible. Designed to be perceived by touch. Hmm. It felt feelable. Okay. Like, you, people usually describe things as lived in when they probably mean that. As in, like, it just, oh, it just looks so real. And all of that were stiff and formal. The characters were all royalty, politicians, and monks who spoke stilted, vaguely medieval sounding dialogue. No, there was like a no. bunch of thugs and stuff, and bounty hunters, yeah, and got, slaves, and well, this, pod racers. Got all kinds of stuff all over the place. Yeah. We visited all kinds That's... of places with all kinds of people. Yeah. Again, varying degrees of British accents. I will take back what's ours. Sorry, my lady. The world was clean and artificial, and quite often... You can't... Clean, clean and artificial. artificial. It's I mean, a lizard dragging itself through the dirt, kicking up a dust cloud behind it, while I suppose clone that can... troopers with scratches all over their armor and blast marks are standing at the ready. Well, if he wants to qualify artificial, just, it just look, doesn't look real, it looks CGI-ish. I'd be like, okay, fine, but uh, clean, I don't know about that. It's certainly some places, but I would assume it's the places that are meant to be clean, like Camino. It's right. not going to look There's dirty. There's a fire burning in the really? background. Hmm. Weird. Strange way to go with this was obviously created in a computer. While there still existed surface elements like lightsabers, spaceships, and alien planets, relatable, tactile feeling that made the originals feel you special... Keep, you keep using that word, <sighs> but if I asked him to define it on the spot, I don't think he could. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, dude, I'm pretty sure he means feels feelable. He looks at the thing and he feels like that could be in real life, while this looks like it's just in, made in a computer. Is that what we're going for with the core of Star Wars? Yeah, I guess so. That it needs to feel chart. needs to feel real. Yeah, I really feel like the writing is more important than any of that. But sure. yeah, the writing, the style of the writing, the general messages and ideas that come through. It it does seem like it's it basically made by a different person. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. Should probably. I feel like tactile has made it into so many videos where it's. Almost a stand-in, because they don't want to be more specific. It feels very tactile in its feeling. That's a it's very totally gone. Sentence. I should underline that a few times. The feeling was gone. We're going to come back to that. Because what people wanted from these movies was... You need to be answering in this stuff, like, now, earlier. Like, mm. better the Dude, earlier guarantee... the better. If you're going to rely on these things to try and make points, but you don't define them and you don't explain what you mean by it, the earlier the better. It's probably mm. the fact that he's going to say, like, the sequel trilogy nailed that part. Like, the, that's probably what he's going to say. That's why he's going to bring it back. should have raised that with the special editions. Mm-hmm. And what they got contained elements of Star Wars, but it didn't feel like the Star Wars they remembered. When he said it didn't feel that like the Star Wars awesome. they remembered, he forgot to put generalization on the screen. <laughs> so he taught. So part two was the long gap, wasn't it? Yeah, part three is the new era. So why was the prequels why a part the prequels? of the long gap? Yeah, that's why mm. I ask. I was pretty mm. like, yeah, I thought that would be the end of the because mm, the prequels were not a part of the long gap. Obviously.
Yeah, because it kind of <laughs> kind of had to call it a gap. The Star Wars content. We're almost caught up to the present. This is the final part of the story. So, in 2012, Disney bought Lucasfilm and announced they were going to make new movies continuing the story after Return of the Jedi. So, episode 7, 8, and 9, but you already know that. For the first time in 32 years, the story of Luke Skywalker, <laughs> Leia Organa, and Han Solo would be- Don't remind me. <laughs> yeah, ruined, let's see, they ruined Luke, they ruined Leia, sort of, they ruined Han. Yeah, they, they continued the- yeah. They show did. Because I remember being like, that was one of the biggest draws to see this. It was like, this story's going to continue. How fucking cool is that? Mm. Be continuing. And not in the expanded universe, since that was all scrapped from canon, in a new movie. For Kathleen Kennedy and the Lucasfilm team and J.J. Abrams, director of Episode 7, there was one major goal. Make it like it used to be, and more importantly, make Star Wars feel like it used to. There you go. <laughs> they failed. How does it make you Absolutely. feel? Yeah, it needs to Bad. do something that I haven't really defined or explained. That's the thing, if, um, if that's gonna tie in to what this whole video is about, like, it's important. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll just let him carry on, because I really don't know where he's gonna go exactly. On every level, The Force Awakens was designed to give viewers the Star Wars experience they hadn't had since the original trilogy. All those changes in style and approach in the prequel trilogy, they were reversed. And yet, look at the reputations of both of these trilogies. Reversed. Yeah. They, they reversed the style of the prequels. And it got them this. <laughs> it's like, oh god. Yeah, I, um... Mm. Hmm. Man, I was for the characters was again talked like normal people. The protagonists were relatable. They came no, from humble beginnings. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, we're already entering into troubled territory now. <laughs> The movie was shot on 35mm film. It used real sets and practical effects. The art direction was dirty and So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it for all the people who are gonna explode in chat. There's loads of practical effects in the prequels. Loads yeah, of there them. Are. <clears throat> lived in. It was once again relatable and tactile. It felt... <laughs> no. no, it wasn't relatable at all. I, <laughs> relatable. The, the, the most relatable of the three trilogies? Exactly. Well, what, <laughs> by re, it's most weird that he described it all as relatable rather than like a particular character. It's just like, oh, yeah, this, this, this the just this. The prequels are the least relatable. Or sorry, the uh, the sequels, sorry. The sequels are the least relatable of the three. It's the most hollow and empty universe that I've seen in a long <laughs> there's, time. There's like um, a there's like a hand icon that's like it like it pinching and people people put that icon with tactile. Like <laughs> you can pinch the film. <laughs> You do you think that the OT or the prequels are more relatable? The OT. I find that the characters in the OT are very, very close to human, and it's really easy yeah, to slip into it. So, yeah. But uh, the sequels are fucking bizarre. I can't. I, I don't get anybody in the sequels. Everyone's weird. Yeah, that's. It's like a. It really is like a different universe, and I don't mean that in the in a complimentary way. Like Star Wars again. No, the didn't. movie wanted so much to give viewers the feeling they'd missed that it largely based its structure around the original film. While it featured new characters unlike those we'd encountered before, the story beats and visuals Yo, were all familiar. At, you, yeah, you bet your ass they weren't like what we'd seen before. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Ugh. It was designed to reassure us and win us all back by being just like the Star Wars we remembered. This is so music. This is so gay. Oh, Star Wars is back, everyone. Look at it. We got the music swelling and playing. When is going to be coming? Coming like a like a but soon when the music. Oh well, then the last Jedi attacked. But the last Jedi. The misconception of this video is that TFA was like a miracle and TLG because he's obviously going to say that TLJ challenged our perception perception of TLJ. I mean of Star Wars. Disney's new one a year for Star Wars goes like this. One year we'll get a new episode in the. I love that he's about to explain how it works, and it's not. It broke a year after this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it yeah. was over. 
time time was not kind to this video main saga then the next year we'll get a spin-off another story taking place within the world of star wars and they'll alternate like that now for all the faults of the prequels they were always designed as key components in the main saga but the spin-offs like rogue one and the upcoming solo aren't they're basically wikipedia articles in movie form Rogue One is a two-hour film designed to answer a decades-long nitpick, or plot hole as some call it, about the design uh, flaw on the- That's a pretty decent question to ask, honestly. Uh, yeah, I absolutely think it's worth- There's no reason why you wouldn't ask the yeah. fuck out of that question. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a pretty- it's, uh, That's not a nitpick, it is extremely plot-related. Uh, it is uh, I'm integral to the plot, in And fact, to say it's, it's a purposefully a designed flaw from the creator because he's trying to sabotage the project while actually coming across as though he's making it, it's like, hmm. That's something. Death Star. And Solo will answer questions like, how did Han Solo get the Millennium Falcon? How did he meet Chewbacca? And presumably, what is the Kessel Run? And then, of no course, there's The Last that. Jedi, which has only been out for a couple months, and I'm sure you have your own opinion on it. This is where things get interesting. While, to me at <sighs> least, it still very much feels like a classic Star Wars movie, it doesn't no. play the- Fuck, we haven't it even gotten into- any, it looks, What do you mean by that? Like what does it even mean to feel? Empire? feel like Star Wars? What does it even mean? Give me the analysis, bro. <laughs> I need help. It, this is, like, this is the Nega universe version of the Empire Strikes Back. Like, this is the the evil universe, the, the bizarro world equivalent of the Empire Strikes Back. Well, this film is, uh, you know, a wizard is coming up with technology. He's like, I'm going to take you to the universe that has the worst Star Wars movie in it. And we're all like, oh my god, so exciting, here we go. And it's like, it was also the whole time. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Then the credits roll. Dun -dun -dun. Actually, <laughs> other people here will be visiting you. Ah! And, then, and then we're all like, seriously, this is the worst? And he's like, oh, there's a couple ones that are like, you know this but with some tweaks to make it worse but yeah this is pretty much as bad as it gets <laughs> like, she had time to do her nails while she was commanding this oh yeah an arm. maybe she's a type of alien that grows black nails you don't know her hair is naturally colored that way because she's an umbakuk they're from planet ugalak she's a femoid oh my god Things as safe as The Force Awakens. Instead of repeating familiar story beats and continuing a familiar status quo, it pushes the story forward into new, unexpected territory. <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, he's tried so hard not to say it's a masterpiece because he doesn't want the video to come across as just a lecture about how TLJ is great. But this video is all a masquerade to sneak in TLJ is great again. For God's TLJ is saving Star Wars, yeah. It's a fucking masquerade. Uh, God damn it. Well, a lot of people save their money on movie tickets. Some. Some saw it three times and they weren't even bored. <sighs> Hello. Yeah, we're just trying to make up for all the people who didn't fucking see it. <laughs> so now that we've caught up to the present, it's time for... What a weird... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's time for... <laughs> what? Part four of the video. Part of... The it's meant for a P. Did I miss the whole of part three? <laughs> this is well, I'm, I'm, the, the structure of this video is about to be called into question, I think. I agree. We're halfway through, so Belch. hopefully we can get some, you know. I'm starting to not register where in the video I am. I have the same. So really? if you didn't, we're if you're not following because you're all stupid, part one is the okay. OT, part two is the gap between the OT and the prequels, part three is the, uh, the, 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 the <laughs> That was, was going to be my joke, essentially. The prequels. Oh. <laughs> they're, they're, for some reason, the prequels exist between parts two and three. <laughs> they're in their own thing, but they happened in part two. But yes. Uh, and now part four is the question. Which... As you guys have been watching this whole thing, you can tell what this is leading up to, right? What What do you think the question is? Um, what, what do we want? want from what do we want from a Star Wars movie? Yeah, yeah, that's the the video. I'm title, excited. I Here we go. Okay, I've gone through forty years of Are history. You obsessed over the. <laughs> I've gone through forty years of history. He says in it ten has minutes. Been ten minutes. <laughs> in, he's in the woods now. Dude, this I've is what I've never seen someone more out of their element than Patrick Willems in the woods. Dude, he's he is right next to civilization. He's terrified. Even if this <laughs> Oh yeah, where he lived. Yeah, he he's like, "Oh, I found this like 2 acre brush collection. I, it looks like the woods if I 
you know, have it, the camera facing the right way. Listen, I, you ain't in Arkansas where I am, where if you, you could travel in a car for 10 minutes and just be in the wilderness. So he feels like he's in the wilderness. Okay. It's a couple of trees in LA or something. Well, yeah, it's terrifying. He found, he found a, a lot. That's just a couple acres big between some zoning projects. And it's not, it's currently not developed. But it, there's definitely a big for sale sign up front, and he just walked in. And, oh, oh imagine the camera this way. It looks like I'm lost in the woods. Imagine he had said, "Part four: The question: What is the secret of Mario's jump?" We'd be like, oh. <laughs> "Part four: The question: Finally, What are these the really universe. tall, bendy things that grow like what, what from are the these ground? Things? Is this Earth's hair?" I remember these being green a while ago. Now <laughs> they're the evolution of Star Wars fandom. So what was the point of all that? Where am I even? So, what was the point even... of like? What was the point of going through forty oh. years of history? It's just so funny because people consider this concise. By the way, I'm the long f idiot. He's the concise one. He managed to sum up forty years in ten minutes. Like he didn't say anything. Yeah. Nothing was covered. Are there buildings in the background on the back left. Yes. I gained any knowledge? Like even when you're just writing history, you want to be expanding on something. Yeah. Like what did he tell us that's new? It's like, oh, people liked Star Wars, but it came out, and then the prequels happened, and they were they were a bit iffy, and then uh, and then we got the new one, and people liked it. Yep. We did it. Because it felt like Star Wars again. Oh, right, I was supposed to be answering what that... Yeah. Oops. I've been going with this. The new Star Wars movies have okay. been... Okay. Oh, they added in forest <laughs> sound effects, too. Yeah, he's a like, filmmaker wow. critic. That's the that's the like, gimmick. You make it. A wouldn't movie. it be more impactful if it was dead silence? Stop doing the documentary person thing. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, but when they do it, they're at least going somewhere for a reason. He's coming back home because he was in the woods looking for Star Wars. And he's coming <laughs> back home because he realized that nature is shit, and he wants to be back inside with his modem on the floor and his wine bottle. By the window. Just ask and his Wii. Where hey, art thou, Star Wars? Pringle, save us. Hey, Pringle. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> that is a sound of a... sound a little bit. You need to calm the fuck down. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, <laughs> yeah. there's other people here trying to talk, okay? Yeah, goddamn, shut your mouth, Pringy. <laughs> What's up? What's, what's I said happening? shut up. Oh my god. We saw, we're watching Patrick <laughs> Willems return from the woods. <laughs> You got lost in the room <laughs> looking for Star Wars. Yeah. Concrete and, uh, by the sounds of it, it's not great video, is it? It's amazing. Oh, it's Patrick Williams. It's a Patrick Williams video, what do you mean? <laughs> wow. Racist. He's gonna he's trying his hardest to make it seem like it's good. <laughs> he's he's out here, he's he's at the he's at the, the, the bus station, he was in the woods, he was on the <clears throat> beach. Man, he's he's just traveling all over the place you know what's crazy is he's kind of he's joined at a perfect moment basically we're at the halfway point of his video where he's doing a little summary of how far we've come so in the first 10 minutes he told us that the ot came out and everyone was really happy about it and then there was a gap where people made some eu content and then the prequels came out and people were sort of 50 50 on that and then there was a gap and then tfa came out and people were pretty happy about it i don't know if you knew any of that Oh man, that's uh, that's some really enlightening information. Yeah, so now uh, he's called this section of his video Part 4, The Question. And we believe the question is, what do we want from a Star Wars movie? So really excited to finally get to the meat of this video. I don't know if you guys have ever written like essays in school or anything, but you're usually told to, you know, answer the question. That's hey, the this is one quarter. On. One quarter of his two videos, okay? So you're rushing him. And to be honest with you, what's funny about how like people say I need to cut shit tons out of my video? I would actually argue he probably could have started his video here, yeah. assuming yeah for what happens next. All that shit's filler. Yeah, it's shit we oh. already kind of know. You could develop I mean, your point as you go through that information, or you could do, you're, like, you could do things like define your terms at the beginning of the video. Well, I think part of the problem is like when it comes to looking at videos and what they're talking about. The, the idea of length, there's no discussion about whether or not the length, you, you know, uh, you may want to be tasked with a 500 word report or like a 5,000 word report. It doesn't, 
you know, whether or not either of them have the correct information isn't contingent on the length. It's about whether or not they say the right things. Sometimes it takes longer to say the right thing than it does, you know, in different instances. So it's kind of stupid to look at, you know, like, wow, you, your video is an hour long. Oh, geez. Wow, brevity is the soul of wit. Well, like, it's like you're missing so much of the... Like... Remember, it took me, what, like, coming up to fucking seven or eight hours to talk about half of one movie, while Patrick Williams has talked about 40 years of history in 10 minutes. Who did better? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, Patrick, because it took him 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, Yeah, because, I mean, the shorter you can do it, the better necessarily whether or not you say everything that you need to say yeah. to make your point could have even made it shorter though because if, if he's going about <laughs> it this way then he shouldn't even have had the first 10 minutes <laughs> if you're gonna have those first 10 minutes of you know setting the scene of star wars history you should be developing ideas of what it could potentially mean like in terms of expectations for a star wars film as you go Rather well, than he, he knows that what he can do here is he can rely on every individual audience member to fill in for themselves what is meant by feels like Star Wars and feels different. Like he doesn't have to define shit because everyone's just going to bring their own well, version of yeah. that into the video, and he doesn't have to do anything. You get He's the relying audience on other to do people. the work for you. Mm. <laughs> Um, also, so I just, I just, I was just made aware of this bit of artwork. Check this out. Paula and Mooper. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's the, the intern, you see. Learning all about the long. <laughs> um, now somebody has just mentioned in chat that I sound sleepy. They're correct. I need to make <laughs> Nailed coffee. Nailed it. I forgot, I forgot <laughs> to make coffee. Give me five minutes. Wow. No problem. I'll be back. Don't. But yeah, thank you for that. It's good shit. Um, also, <laughs> that Star Wars girl is asking if it's my birthday. No, 6th of October. Three days from now. However, uh, she also sent me, sent me this. Um, suddenly, two pieces of fan art. Ooh. Yay! Ooh. I Exciting. love it. I like that. Good stuff. Perfect for halloween -itisms as well. Hell of glorms. <clears throat> Look at that. Poor Fringy ends up with the cobwebs on his icon. What can you do? He looks unimpressed as well. He's like, why me? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, really? Is it because I'm green? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for uh, for both of these. They're awesome. Um for for in October sixth I'm gonna I'm gonna stream Amnesia the Dark Descent from start to finish, ready for rebirth on twentieth. It's gonna be great. And um, I figure we'll do this, because everyone's like, oh, what's the second hot take then? So the second hot take <laughs> is gonna be coming from Fringy, and um, it'll be, once we once we get through this video, we'll probably do it, and then we can start the, the next one, alright? So... I got it, I, I, oh, sorry, sorry. What's, what's wrong, you okay? I, 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 I got another Among Us drawing from uh, Wolfie. Uh, this time it's me and Charlie. Ah. <laughs> that reminds me of that meme guy. I, lo I love that meme guy. You're crying as you try to put the credit card in the face. <laughs> it's red, but it, it, it is too slowly or too fast. Like fuck. I, I could just picture Charlie trying to try to just like wobble himself forward to you to try and stab you. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, Wolfie six six six. Good shit. Um, thank you all for 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 the fan art. It's fucking great. Uh, but yeah, let's kick on. Been the biggest move each of the past three years. They've each received an A cinema score, meaning general audiences really liked them, and the vast majority of film critics have given them positive reviews. But the response from the most passionate set of fans has been extremely mixed. And I don't think this is as simple as hardcore Star Wars fans being more demanding. I think over the past 30 years, several factors added up to change the way Star Wars fandom works. Do you see there's already holes in it? Yeah. So that, oh, yeah. does that mean he sat up like several times <laughs> trying to get this shot right or something? I guess. Oh. 
I guess it was worth it. What do we want from a Star Wars movie on a pinboard? First, the canonization of the original trilogy turned the stories into a rigid set of rules. Then the expanded universe created an expectation of backstory, plus it gave fans a timeline of events they would later be told to disregard. The special editions and pre- Is this really easier than just saying the writing got shit? Oh. <laughs> what, do <you> mean, like, <laughs> what do you mean the canonization of the original trilogy? Does he mean to say that it's it's set in stone as a as an IP? I don't know why you would say it that way though. Uh, canonization like it's the first Star Wars thing. It it is like canonity requires some notion of like, you know, non-official material to go along with material that is recognized. When there was just Star Wars A New Hope, what well, it is the canon, I guess. Because there's, yeah, there's nothing else. Weird to, to refer to it as the original trilogy get canonized. It's like, it never uh... had to get canonized, because it always was just the canon, because it was the films. Yeah, it's not the same process as, for example, someone writing a fan fiction and Lucasfilm buying it and then canonizing it. Hmm. If that would, yeah, it's weird, weird way to say it, but alright, let's, you know. Hmm. Prequels created the mindset that the fans knew better than the creators. And of course, there was the huge gap of time between episodes 6 and 7, during which fans formed expectations for what they wanted to see. Over several decades... Did you really write new oh. trilogy on a post-it? <laughs> What is the point? Of, is he just, does he want to come across as a crazy person for the meme? I don't know. He wants to poison the world. Mm. It's Star Wars fans became Star Wars experts. Fandom became an achievement built on an accumulation of an trivia. You're, he's really going a little too far. But yeah. Even in the nerd circles, it's not like all of you guys are like, are you a Star Wars expert too? <laughs> it's like, no. I don't know shit about Star Wars. Chill. It's the, people can be yeah. fans of it without going to hyper space. Yeah. I'm a fan of Star Wars in watching the movie, Just watching the movies, it's like, yeah, that was a bad movie. I wouldn't <laughs> even say I'm, Star Wars. I don't know if I even call myself a fan of Star Wars when I think there's two good films out of the lot of them. Yeah, it's all, it's a, it's a love hate relationship. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and these movies they waited their whole lives for were expected to be a reward. Something they had earned. When we were what? what? So, am, I, am I like watching a fucking psychologist? Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you see, Star Wars fans felt they had earned the right to have good Star Wars movies. Okay, we can't just be annoyed that we didn't get one. All right, that's it's, that's way too simple. When we were younger and watching the original movies for the first time, our priority with each successive film was just to find out what happened next. But now, a lot of fans are going into a new Star Wars movie with a checklist. A list of- You're like, yeah, now that I'm not a stupid kid, I was going to say, what, higher. Correct, did, yes. Isn't he of the same set of people that say that Empire got shat on by loads of critics when it came out, and that if it came out today, Ryan Johnson would have been equal to the amount of hate the director of that would have gotten? But like, everyone loved Empire. Uh, well, that's my. So he's saying, like, oh, you see, when the original trilogy came out, we were all just like waiting, waiting endlessly to just see what happens next. We we don't we don't talk to each other about like, oh, I hope Empire's good, or I hope Empire does this, or blah blah. blah. Even though didn't he earlier say that Empire needed to do what the first one did, and then also, uh, be, you know, be what people expect from Star Wars, but then also change some stuff. Um, so that. Plus the fact that he's one of the people who says that uh, Empire would have gotten just as much hate as TLJ if it came out these days. So, like, it's not about... Uh, and the critics did. Hello Greedo's got a video where he's, he looks at, like, an old review of someone saying fucking Empire sucks. And it's like, ah, oh, see? Dan? See? A single one? Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. Empire wasn't hated. <laughs> it's just... It's Listen, just... if... I, one's a good a sample size as any, really. Yes. Um, well, but then he's I'm also going to say that the attitude back then was just, eh, fuck it, let's just see what happens. I don't really care if it's good or not, I just want to see what happens. Um, I'm sure that most people who go into a movie want to know if it's good, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> no, man, this is all come with the internet that everyone's critical. You see, reviewers well, back I would, then I, I would didn't exist. I get really frustrated when people are like, oh, Empire had a divisive reviews, it's like, but, but it's like, it's good though. <laughs> that's, that's all that I care about. Whether like Blade Runner got divisive reviews, it's good. The people who said it was bad were wrong. Same with the thing. Like it does. I don't care. Yeah, the critics like, like these are good I films. Don't fucking care. I don't know what the point is. It's... Well, he's pointing out 
you because I think it's what Theo was talking about a little bit earlier. Like he's going to be saying that this attitude has risen as Star Wars has evolved. It's not something that was there before. How well, is he meant to prove that though? Because we all, I think he just wants us to accept that that's just the case when the OT yeah, came like, out. Like he's trying I don't think to think that's dive true at all. I've only been watching for like a minute, and he's already trying to like <laughs> ascertain the psychosis of like millions of people when they're coming in to watch Star Wars movies specifically. There's he's, no way that he can make any claims. Like I'm, he I just use the word ascertain. The small part of it is he's not even accounting for like the sheer amount of time that's passed properly. Yeah. I don't think. Like, even between singular installments in this franchise, or what have you. Like, like when people you... say the 80s music was great, when they're doing that with 40 years of time to weed out all the shit. Yeah, they, they <laughs> tend to view... Because we, we've done that every once in a while, like, oh, the older times were better. It's like, we're not considering all of the shit of the older stuff, at the t usually. Mm -hmm. right. Though I will say, these past few years have been amazing for media, haven't they? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Even for Empire, then for Return of the Jedi, then, like, on and on and on, people would have had expectations and would have been going in with a checklist. Because when you go to see things that are from a franchise that you're that is established and that you may or may not be a fan of, you expect certain things about it. I mean, otherwise, you wouldn't... Expectations, right? like, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't know what you're going in yeah. for. You go and, like, if you went into a Star Wars film and again, it turned into some murder mystery yeah, some noir thing. Buddy and... cop film takes place in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I expected Star Wars. This. What's well, the thing? I could totally end up seeing myself That's be like, of... man, this is a really good story, but what the fuck is it doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And that could, like, depending on, I don't know, your response to that, that could lead to a negative reaction. Like, this isn't Star Wars at all, because you could be super let down or whatever. Despite, like, regardless of the actual quality. So this is what I thought Patrick was going to talk about. I guess I was giving him too much credit. I don't know. Imagine my shock. Questions they want answered, scenes they want to see, and a strict set of rules the movie must adhere to based on a dogmatic interpretation of the original film. Dogmatic? So most Jesus. It's, it's dogmatic oh, to That's assume really Luke coloring. cares about his family. That would be dogmatic. <laughs> It's yeah, dogmatic I, to yeah. say you can't use hyperspace as a weapon because it'll fuck everything up. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> clearly using some uh, terminology here that's very loaded. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, this yeah, is just him like... expressing his fucking hatred for, like, TLJ anti-fans, if you want to call them that. Like, they just dogmatically want... don't want these new things to directly contradict the old things. Why is this video in black and white? Because <laughs> he's because an artist. Art. It's, it's, yeah. You don't he's understand. You probably haven't even seen The Lighthouse. Most <laughs> <laughs> uh. of the fan comments about The Last Jedi are the points where the movie does not connect to the trivia they've learned. So they the trivia. The trivia. The trivia. <laughs> yeah, like Luke's character is just trivia. This reminds okay. me of fucking Quentin being like, ah, uh, you know, world, plot, characters, it's all fan <laughs> stuff. <laughs> And stuff. <laughs> it's not what the movie is. It's about how did it make you feel. <laughs> they don't like new force powers that we haven't seen before. They don't like the speed at which Ray's skills grow because. No, it's not it's that not it's a <laughs> new force power, it's that it fucks with shit. Dude, the yeah. speed at which Ray's fucking strengths grow is like, what, you mean binary? Like. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I love the idea that he thinks that she goes from like, she's like progressing. Like, fuck off. Should training dress go? Okay. She selectively degresses temporarily just to. I uh, never fuck it. <laughs> exactly how it happened for Luke. They don't like Leia what? using the force exactly because. How it oh happened. my god! No. Luke got his ass kicked in Ana the second movie. Anakin wasn't the same as Luke. Anakin took way longer. So how do you explain oh, that yeah. we're not? We're, how come everyone's not fucking raging about that? Again, this. This fucking video is a thinly veiled masquerade <laughs> to defend the sequel trilogy. Listen, there's, I'm gonna be there's objective. There's nothing about what do we want from Star Wars about it. I'm gonna be I'm... objective, but TLJ's great. <laughs> like, Alright. I'm Shut sure up. his mind is as objective. Like, I've, I checked this once. Five years ago. <laughs> I don't know. It's like insane. 
It was exactly the same. How did you even say that when you do an objective analysis? Just well, fuck you know, okay. what it's I want to do is, because this was made before his tweet, obviously, about Rise of Skywalker, he said, fuck J.J. Abrams. I want to put that on screen <laughs> and then be like, this is a fan who dogmatically clings to the past. <laughs> <laughs> won't accept that things can change. You're a piece of shit. I, I just find it very frustrating that we're watching a video that's talking about movies where the vast majority of it is a person trying to figure out what millions of people secretly believe <laughs> with no evidence and no qualification to do so. He's nailed it. You're just, you're just sad that he's got your number. That's not four years ago. They don't like Snoke's lack of backstory because it doesn't give them the explanations they want. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty important explanation. I, you nailed it, my dude. Yeah. Oh man, yeah? wanting sure, explanation. Explanation. After you, Return of the you, Jedi, I need some fucking answers, my dude. Can you get all that poison no, out of the well, please? Wanting explanations, the sign of a dogmatic. F <laughs> <laughs> some, some loaded shit right there. What is? It's getting to the point of parody, because if you're sitting down and talking to him about the movie, and you're like, man, it was so weird that, like, Snoke, we just got nothing on that, wasn't it? What, what do you think? And he's like, what, you wanted an explanation? And you're like, yeah. 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 <laughs> you, sort of, you sort of owe it to, like, the original trilogy to explain what the fuck's going on. And then he's gonna be like, well, you know, it's, he was in a, he was in, like, a pod. He was made by the Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Duh. They don't like Luke's characterization because that's not where he was last time we saw him. And they really don't like the Finn and Rose subplot because it's about new characters in a new setting, so it doesn't connect- Yes, that is new it. It was new characters uh, yeah, in a new setting. New characters, new setting. Nailed it. That's why everyone hated the prequels. Nobody liked how it brought us to different places with different people. Everyone hated that. People wouldn't fucking stop bitching about Endor because it was a new place and there were new people there. I just like the idea yeah, as well. Uh, material. He didn't even str straw man there because straw man usually vaguely resembles the point you'd made. It's like, oh, you don't like new people in new places. You're like, where the? Where did you even? <laughs> like, where? He's just, what? He's just vanished. You look him up and he's in like Mexico fighting someone there. Just a single what? straw, and he's like, this is kind of like <laughs> you. <laughs> no. Connect to the lore of the original movies in any way. What it seems like these fans want isn't the a story, lore. it's a Wikipedia. No, no, we wish it connected to the lore in some way. <laughs> Here, is, That's what we want. Is that all, what all this comes to? The fucking argument where they're like, oh, Mola wants a whole movie before the movie to explain everything that came before it. It's like, um... I mean, sure. I'll take it. I'll take that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please show me a movie that explains why everybody forgot about the whole fucking things. I feel like you could, here. you could repair a lot of uh, the sequel trilogy if you had a trilogy between it and the OT. Not that you I mean, want to. I just the mean story you still could. Probably wouldn't be that great. No, of course, like, because it destroys itself. Well but I mean, especially with Rise of Skywalker. But I mean, like, uh, if we just had TFA, for example, we could probably do a lot of repairing by making a story between. Fuck, we could. We could have... Imagine, like, crazy idea. Han, Leia, and Luke in the same room. What do you think? Yeah, what? That'd be cool. That's just fan stuff. Though. Oh. <laughs> the article. They want plot, information, and payoffs to reward their accumulation of trivia. They want Snoke to be Darth Plagueis. No, we just don't want it to no. contradict. I don't Let's fucking care there. if he's Darth Plagueis or not. I just wanted to make what sense. <laughs> our, our, our bar is so low. Yeah, we don't- we're not asking for a lot, just saying. We just want it to make sense and not contradict stuff. And this just goes back to, to the question I would want to ask him specifically. What does he want from a Star Wars movie? Um... He still needs He to... wants TLJ, mate. <laughs> he wants it filmed on a certain type of camera on real sets. Oh... He wants yeah. it to challenge what Star Wars means. <laughs> Disgusting. I guess so. about knowing who Darth Plagueis is. I have a theory that the Rosetta Stone for this whole thing, the key to what many fans want from a new Star Wars movie, Rosetta is Stone. this. No, he's gonna do no. the thing. He's gonna do the thing. You what want to see Darth Vader killing rebels? Rosetta, That's what you want. You not know what the Rosetta Stone is? No, I never heard of it. Um, the Rosetta Stone was a old ass fucking tablet 
that had the same message written in three different languages, like uh, Greek and then two different forms of Egyptian, I believe. And it's what we used to, it's it, it's what let us um, translate uh, old Egyptian hieroglyphics and stuff. Oh, okay. And it was like, um, I think it was, I think the message was, oh, it's been so long since I listened to the lectures, but it was like, a, it was basically a guy writing this message about how great some, somebody else was uh like like a pharaoh or some egyptian guy this dude's like man this dude's fucking great you're amazing mm -hmm. and i mean we just happened to find it one day and we we're like holy shit this is fucking useful as hell hey rex want to read a tweet <laughs> all right oh uh, i was hoping that didn't come uh movie bob tweeted out <gasps> donald trump stole my summer my halloween my ability to enjoy life itself for four <laughs> years and people who would later help him steal the presidency in the first place ruined my professional life and put me in a debt hole I'm still only barely back from for years. Fuck them all. Um, how, Donald how, Trump how, stole no, my I, house. I don't know about that debt thing. <laughs> Dude, how did he the should president make, put you in debt? He should make a t-shirt that says Donald Trump stole my Halloween. <laughs> What does that even mean? Donald Trump is like the next supervillain in a, in a Halloween movie. <laughs> the Orange Man. <laughs> Slurking in the shadows, coming to get you. Stop Diabeto vs. Trump and ha on the set of Halloween. That's what it's all about. You got like your torch and you're shining it around. And then you point it at him. <laughs> he says wrong and sludges at you. Wrong. <laughs> So my ability to enjoy life itself. <laughs> I mean, like, I want some follow-ups on this. Like, how did he steal your summer? Like, I think the coronavirus is what is, yeah, is your is, is who you need to be blaming here. Trump is absorbing um, the sun. <laughs> He's Mr. Burns. He's gonna fucking put up a big blockade. A big blockade. I think the dead is a dead hole. I think the it's debt's on you, movie Bob. Yeah, that's take the... that Capitol building. Take that, the White House. Oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> he, dude, he's just, he's blaming whatever he can blame, because it's absolutely not Movie Bob's fault, alright? Goodell the tweet. Oh, you know what? Yes, good idea. <laughs> I don't even know how you come to that conclusion. So. Well, I can tell you in three easy steps. Step one, be Movie Bob. There are no more steps. The Darth Vader scene from the end of Rogue One. If you do what I did and search through comments on Twitter or YouTube from people who aren't fans of The Last Jedi, this scene gets yeah, brought up the most as the high- 10 seconds, sure. Um, I mean, yeah, most people really like this scene, but I don't have to argue it's strictly a, I like seeing Vader kill people. I can argue other things, like how much yeah. sense it makes. <laughs> Yeah, this is entirely in character for the Rebels and Darth Vader and for just fucking everything involved makes well, total... It's a it's nice this, look uh, into the universe that we see at the start of A New Hope. I into think uh, um, that this scene is kind of like what you're gunning for, right? Where it both makes sense and is something really cool that you know people will enjoy. If you can Which, yeah. nail both of those I things, think is the then perfection. you're doing a really good job. Of fan service. That's like the best kind of fan service. When you know it's here to make us happy, but also it makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm pretty sure that's like uh, Gareth Edwards said, like, someone just suggested that they put this scene in. It wasn't in the original script, and they were like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. And they were like, and it's easily like the fav, like everyone's top pick for best Disney moment in all of Star Wars from Disney's era. Yeah, it's the best scene they've ever made in these movies. <laughs> I don't think it's since. close. And the um the two arguments I think that this is kind of like the two takes you can have from it. I remember I think I can't remember if this was RLM's take, but some people feel it's like ah oh, no you've ruined the mystique of Vader. We always knew he was uh you know th this that and the other, but showing this is too overt. It's like it's taking away what was so in in intimidating about him. Now he's just like a a, a psycho that did actually just rip people mm -hmm. down. But I, I just be like, oh, I just, I kind of felt like this earns his fear. Like, everybody's terrified of him because he's the horrifying monster that just tears people down and scores because he's they incredibly... They can't stop him. Yeah. And I think it does actually work better if you see this scene after the OT rather than before it. But it yeah. is, it, I think it could work both ways, I don't know.
I think after you've you've got the knowledge of you know who he is, so you're kind of in the same position as the rebels. You know who he is, but you do, you're you're aware of what he can do, but you've never had to see it firsthand. And then the scene plays out. I think it works really well. Also, it's so it's so just gasm worthy the 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 darkness yeah. and the smog, and that it's just the lightsaber. The it's lighting, like oof, yeah, <laughs> it's good stuff. But he, obviously he's going to be like, this is all the fans want. <laughs> like Vader killing people. It's like, yes, Willems, that's all we want. That's it. ...point of the new movies. And you'll see people saying things like, they should have given us the Luke equivalent of the Darth Vader hallway scene. But while a fun yeah. moment, it's essentially empty. Comment. It doesn't add anything to the story. Oh, so it adds, it adds nothing to the story that Vader just massacres a series of rebels over trying to do something for the Empire. That adds nothing to the overall world or the story. Hmm. Gonna hard disagree on that one. Yeah. Our character. It's like an HD remake of a PlayStation 1 game. That <laughs> thing you all- Um... What? Um, um, specific. It is nothing alike. Um... <laughs> that is an interesting comparison to jump to. Weird flex. <laughs> I want to, what point is he making here? I want to. I want to know. Who fucking knows. <laughs> what did he say? A remake of a PS One cutscene? No, of a game like a, a remake of a PS One game. I mean, but he's showing footage of a remake, so he's definitely talking about like a remake, not mm -hmm. just a remaster. It's the well, same comparison. Let's just let's see what he let's see what his means. Point is already like what you expect, but shinier. While the original trilogy is so- um, But it's, it's a totally <laughs> different game. I was about and to say, I, I play, the remaster is completely different. What also, is there yeah, are plenty of people- I understand it's very different. There are plenty of people who would say the Luke Vader fight scene in Empire is better than the hallway scene, right? In terms of- There are plenty of people who would argue like story, visually yeah. and story and, and their investment and the intimidation factor. Like there's, there's loads to talk about. The idea that it's shinier, I should be like, what do you mean? Like. The seat, I don't know. <laughs> Things just look. I, I don't know. So often treated as the perfect standard to which all oh, new Star Wars that must be held. Does not make sense, actually. That he because people don't like it when the original movies got the special effects added in and everything. Yeah, wouldn't so, that be a shinier argument? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. But, but nobody wants them to touch the original trilogy. They like it as it is, so it's not analogous at all. That was a bad things to bring up <laughs> also is this he like brought that up earlier in his video before you arrived is this the answer no. to the question by the way the, what we want from star wars is the same but shinier no because that's <laughs> kind of what that's well i mean what ruined the uh i mean from his perspective trilogy. they wanted does that even make sense? Because a lot of people don't like what well, they did with the world, and I what mean, they did with the world was just copy the OT. He's going to ignore the counter-information, and he's you can tell why he's doing this. He's putting himself above these kinds of fans. Like, you guys just want the same shit, and you want it to be all special and action-packed and stuff, while I want challenge. I want Star Wars to be redefined. I want its structure to be challenged. I want intellectual fucking content. Yeah, well, I want you to fuck off. I guess, oh my I, guess God. Watching, I guess we're watching movies wrong. Oh, it all comes back to this. <laughs> but shinier. While the original trilogy is so often treated as the perfect standard to which all new Star Wars must be held... That totally makes sense when the prequels are completely fucking different and they have like a legion of fans. He even said the prequels like feel completely different, but... This is the standard, everyone. You gotta make it. Maybe he's trying to account for the fact that Force Awakens did well, but TLJ didn't. <clears throat> he's like, you see, it's because TFA is like a new hope, and that's what fans want. They share so many sure. of the things people complain about in the new movies. Luke goes from a farm boy who's never left his home to a Force using X Wing pilot who blows up the Death Star in about a day. He could X Wing pilot in the beginning. Oh, so it wasn't a day. <laughs> but. And why was Obi-Wan Kenobi the Rebellion's only hope? Leia had never even met him. What did she expect him to do? The Empire Strikes Back barely Her parents knew him. Yeah, and he's a Jedi. Her parent, did you not watch Revenge of the Sith? I know it's the least of- I know- Oh, by the way, Fringy, <laughs> he rated the, the Star Wars movies. Revenge of the Sith is his last. It's the worst. Really? Even yeah. though it's absolutely the best of the prequels? Yeah, absolutely. But no, it's yeah, the worst I, of them. You should probably okay. watch that again. Revenge of the Sith directly explains how Leia would know who Obi Wan is. Like I don't. So what? What, what was his uh, listing then? 
was it just that he said that that was because I'm curious now. Uh, what was Pretty his list of movies? Okay, went... right. Okay, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's that's expected. I feel but, like it um, makes sense to call on Obi Wan when he was the one who trained and kind of almost killed Darth Vader previously. Like, man, it'd be her pretty useful. Her parents would have absolutely told her about yeah Obi Wan Kenobi. And remember, they were technically in the same room together. I mean, it was Obi Wan who brought. I mean, who had you know um, what was his name? Bail Organa. Yeah. Take yeah. uh take her to Alderaan. Bail Organa. Is the overall the series. Most of it is spent with characters either running away or hanging out on a swamp. They hype up a legendary that Jedi is, uh, warrior who turns out to be a silly Muppet who steals food. Out. What are we doing here? He's not a silly Muppet. He's that was doing, an act, he's, doing he's doing the thing where he says that the sequels do what the prequels do. Uh, not the prequels. <laughs> OT. I just want to appreciate he's like, that. Oh, he's not a silly Muppet. It's an act, you asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Han and Leia see on the run for a couple days, while Luke appears to be training for weeks. New Force ability- I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, he is doing the thing where he's trying to twist around that, um, you know, the time scale. And also, they weren't on the run for days, they were hiding out in that cave for a while. I was just gonna say, the word seems is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence, isn't it? Yeah, as opposed to what we know about the, uh, this, uh, TLJ, where the, the chase only lasts, like, a couple days at most. <laughs> We know that for sure. Abilities just appear through all the movies without us ever seeing the characters learning them. The f yeah, he's doing the thing. So, very the two examples sneakily. he's got of powers that we've never seen before, never been seen learn them. One is the fucking electric power from the Emperor, which, by the way, I think we can accept that one of the most powered and feared and oldest Force users has a power that others have not yet mastered. Like, I think that's well, more but, than fair to assume. I think, uh, uh, Part of it is that by the time that we get up to the Emperor, how many people have we seen that know the Force? Four people? Five. Five. That's it, we have five. We have a sample size of five. By the yeah, time we're in the sequel trilogy, we have a sample size of dozens of named characters and hundreds of Jedi. And so he's when using... one of them suddenly has a new power, it's weird. And it's dark sightisms, the implication being that you get a lot of power yeah. access from like pain and darkness and stuff. So it's like, yeah, it makes sense that he's got a power that we've not seen from the others. Secondly, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Force Pull is not a new power. Stop saying it's a new power. <laughs> Everyone who fucking reviews these films in a sense of trying to rip on them in the same way that the sequels get ripped on them. Like, Luke just pulls his power out of nowhere. Since when, since when was Force Telekinesis a thing? And for some reason, Force Choke gets separated out as just this, no, that's not Force Telekinesis, that's a specific move in the Force that chokes people's <laughs> throats. It's like, what do you mean? Well, if you read the EU, it's this whole discipline where you choke someone using not telekinesis, just force choke. <laughs> Fuck that's off. Like a bag, that's like taking a baseball bat and saying that hitting a window and hitting a wall are two different powers. The implication was that he helped guide the rockets with the force. That would be telekinesis again. Stop it. <laughs> The first 40 minutes of Return of the Jedi have zero impact on the story or characters beyond just getting Han back. Oh, well that's kind of a big fucking deal, <laughs> don't you think? Can't... That is not the problem with the first 40 minutes, that it, all it does is get Han back. It's like, what do you mean all? Like, the, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real at the uh, yeah, but really, all they really accomplish at the end of A New Hope is blowing up the Death Star. So really, I mean, you might as well just skip it. Honestly, it's all they did. <laughs> I can't believe you just said all they did was get Han back. What the fuck? Try to compare Jesus it to Canto Christ. Bite as if like it's is, remotely comparable. He's desperate. Oh yeah, rescuing Han, that's no big deal, but Canto Bite was very, very impactful, very, very meaningful to Star Wars. It's essential that we had a um, We really, really had to go to Canto Bite. Han should have just rotted in Carbonite. I don't think he's comparing it to Canto Bite. I think he's comparing it to whatever happened. Well, in the earlier first on, he was well, praising uh, Canto Bite. Yeah, well, what I'm suggesting, I think he brought that up as a slice, a sly comparison. Like, like, you know, there's all these problems with the OT, but we we we're ignoring them because, uh, you know, we love the OT. Uh, but but simultaneously, he's bringing up points that can be stapled, like new powers coming out of nowhere. He, you know what he's referencing with that, right? It's the fucking forced telephone shit in in. Uh, yeah. the new films. 
oh, a, a B plot that's totally pointless. It's like, like Canto Bite. It's like, yeah, but that's not, first of all, it's the A plot. <laughs> but so not, not, yeah. but uh, the, the, the fact that they save Han's life compared to doing fuck all in Canto Bite, like, you can't, I think that's what he's trying to get at in, in a subtextual sense. That's, that's what I'm saying. Because because he wants to bring up the 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 OT suffers from all the problems we bring up that are in the sequels, and so it's, and then he's going to be like, so why don't people hate uh, them as much? And like, the eh. problem is that what he's doing here is super dishonest. Um, he pro he's probably not even aware of that. Charitable. Well, besides, he doesn't even think these are actual problems because uh, he doesn't consider these the things he's bringing up to be problems in the sequels. <laughs> he's just trying to point out a hypocrisy, I think. For the final right. of the entire war, a lot of time is spent on wacky hijinks with Ewoks. The revelation that Leia is Luke's sister was clearly a late addition to the story, the and she's given battle. no... A different part um, I, I would like to note, though, that um, I like how he's trying to say, well, you know, Luke being Leia's sister, that was a late, last-minute thing. It's like, yep, uh, that is not as bad as... You're important. You're no one. You're important. You're no one. <laughs> no, you're important. You're Palpatine's kid. <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Like, they didn't yeah, at least when they say it in each film. <laughs> at least when they say he's got a sister, they stick with it. Yeah, they don't give it up. In fucking the next trilogy, like, no, sister, like, figuratively. <laughs> no. <laughs> Closure with her father, let alone a single scene, which really lets down the promise of there is another. Also, they couldn't think of anything more original than just another Death Star. And by the way, there is a lot. I, okay, so well, I, I don't even know if we're supposed to You've be addressing these. So, first of all, whether or not you want to criticize it from like a, a broad meta storytelling standpoint, like should we really have another Death Star? Like, it makes total fucking sense that the Emperor would want to make another Death Star after what just happened in Episode Four. Yep. This was being used to essentially hold the entire galaxy hostage, and then they blew it up. It's like, fuck. Can we make another one? It's like, if we can, we can get back what we just lost. So narratively, yeah, it all imagine, flows. Like, wouldn't it be funny a war movie? Mm -hmm. Another, <laughs> another. Air, what's it called? They blew up carrier? one of. Yeah. They blew up. Yeah, they blew up one of our tanks. I guess we're never gonna make one again. <laughs> well, this is really mean. Like, not very the, good. If it was this one thing I fight with that, I guess, is that at that point, wouldn't because uh, I remember there was something of a disagreement. Like, okay, do we want this big Death Star thing or more Star Destroyers? Right. Well, they, like they've clearly the got. They've clearly got star just... destroyers, like a lot of them. I mean, more can't hurt. No, but it's not going to be the same. Really big place. Not the same yeah, as a Death Star. They don't need to blow up a planet. But having the yeah, power to blow up to a, blow planet up a planet is, a, is what's yeah. keeping the galaxy hostage. It's, the, the, it's, but it's the... also what's in, what incites them against them to an extent. Well, that's I done. That's we already had we're, that. Yeah, we're talking. That's done. That's happened. That's episode four. We're talking about episode six. Like, why would they have done this? Like, well, the toothpaste is out of the toothpaste to hold it. <laughs> right. <laughs> toothpaste <to> holder. <laughs> The point being is, like, the whole world's like, wow, you guys are fucking assholes. And it's like, oh, you don't have your giant laser. Hmm. It's like, no, 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 we do, we do, we do, we do, we do, we do. Get it back up, get it back up. I can see that. And, like, yeah, it does make sense. I'm just saying it is worth considering still that, you know, a fuckload of Star Destroyers does a similar thing without putting as many eggs in the same bar in the same basket. People will still people will react differently to the idea of being subjugated by the Empire when they arrive with Star Destroyers, and the idea of their entire planet being destroyed constantly at risk because that thing can shoot them. Yeah, after always just jumping. Yeah, mm -hmm. fair. I think it makes enough sense, but I, I understand the criticism oh. of being like, I don't want to see them destroy yeah. another Death Star lame. Just like, oh, okay. That's well. not even where I was trying no, to. No, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Plus, oh. they even used the fact that this would draw out the Rebels to as part of the plan in Episode yeah. 6. So. I'm not saying running it back is necessarily wrong. I just think perhaps they could have considered... Why don't we just go for more Star Destroyers after that, considering the giant weakness that thing had? Who's to say this well, one won't blow up? Wouldn't it make more sense to just know. remake it without the weakness? Assuming such a thing is possible, yeah. Well, as Family Guy put I, it out, just I... put, put planks of wood over the covering. You'd be like, <laughs> that'll be better than nothing. <laughs> Ply with space plywood. Um, yeah, I'll stop space it. stucco. Be, as for the other one, though, the, the disappointment of There Is Another, it's like, but There Is Another is more so, I thought, to give us a sense that, oh shit, 
Obi-Wan and Yoda haven't actually put all of their investment in Luke. If Luke was to die, it's not over for them. So we, and quite a perfect thing to put right before Luke's about to be killed by Vader, potentially. I just, I just, I think it works for, you know, dramatizing the stakes. I don't, I don't know that it was necessary to have that fleshed out, that option. Sure. So I don't, yeah, it's just, just, it's just a different story at that point rather than a, a, you know, a loss. A lot of silly comedy through all these movies. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah, but these are really funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that puppet hitting that puppet is it was it is legitimately fucking funny. Yeah, he's well, these, like, these old movies are funny. Han on the intercom in the prison room is fucking gold. Yeah, yeah everyone loves that fucking bit. Now, how are you? <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Things fine. Things are fine. How are you? Yeah. And, and Yoda <laughs> just scuttling through all of his stuff, picking out the light, smiling at it, and then R2D2 tries to take it off, and he's like, "Fuck off! This is my life." He's in with his chick. <laughs> fucking funny. And this is the thing, it's not like there's, well, TFA had a joke or two that landed, TLJ was miserable, and then Rise of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker, did that make us, I think I laughed, it was one of C-3PO's moments, I think. I, oh yeah, C-3PO made me laugh like three times, C-3PO's great. So, you know. He's the best part of that movie, uh, unironically the best part of the Rise of Skywalker is C-3PO. Yeah, he is, I think. But I would That's say, because, again, I feel like he's saying this to try and account for the fact that the criticism is, they made a Yo Mama joke, Patrick. That's very different, okay? <laughs> no, that would totally hey, stall the Empire, is but you see, a Yo Mama joke. It all comes under the category of, ah, funny joke, silly joke. See, there were silly jokes before. Look how something fell on Han's head. That's silly, too. I got a question real quick. Uh, this still right here where we're looking out the window, is this the uh, remastered where they have the Slave 1 out in the window, or was that in the original? It looks like a matte painting, so I'd assume it's in the yeah, original. Yeah, it does, yeah. Well, at least you're still in one piece. Look what happened to me. Last week, Pablo Hidalgo from the Lucasfilm Story Group oh posted God. this tweet. Oh, why yellow? Often... Why yellow? I often think how lucky we are that the best stuff came out when we were the most impressionable. You do get that everybody was of a different age. Yeah. Is he trying to say that we, uh, because we were so impressionable, we think that things were really better than they were, so we we like to think that the best things came out when we were the most impressionable? I even think, though well, I mean, really one way things. to read this is it's really good that when you're young, you were exposed to a lot of good content because <laughs> yeah, you're maybe. standard instead. Very high. Maybe I agree with this statement. Maybe yeah, I, 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 I agree that. that even though I was a child, meaning I could be satisfied by a lot of shitty things, it turned out the stuff I was actually being provided, be it <laughs> classic Simpsons, you know, the Alien, yep. Predator, and Terminator franchises, Drama, Star Skywalk. Wars, fucking all these yeah. different things. Like, it's like, oh, lucky I did, like Jurassic Park. Yeah, these things were actually good, as well as me being impressionable. It's like, yeah, maybe I agree with them. Now it's shit. <laughs> and we're not let's impressionable. See where, let's see where going with it. I don't think about it's, it's very important that all of us, you know, we, we got to remember that maybe the stuff we saw when we were very, very young that left an impression on us, maybe it wasn't actually as good as we remember. So, okay. Let's, are yeah. we, we're fast approaching the hot take. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> what hot, we, what we, hot takes? That we just, did. That's just life advice. We should all keep, you know, we've done the Clone Wars one for you, which means you'll be up next because oh, the third hot okay. take will be later. <laughs> all right. And yes, I will yeah. still hold to why yellow. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Don't, don't. If you make it, all of you people out there who want to make videos, fucking don't. Just don't. Piss cow all over it. Gray, man. black, a, a dark blue, dark gray, something, not yellow. Just don't. How lucky we were that the best stuff came out when we were the most impressionable. And honestly, I could have just made this video a 15 minute screenshot of that tweet. No, like, you couldn't have. No, you were <laughs> probably going to say that. Because we would have. Yeah, there are multiple interpretations of what he's saying and what he's referring to and why he is and his explanation for it. Yeah, because plenty of people. Uh, whatever. Yeah, that. Because it kind of <laughs> says it all. So the fans who hate The Last Jedi, who say it's a bad Star Wars movie, that yes. it ruins the series, it I'm not saying they're watching movies wrong. There's no wrong. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you retconning your own lore here? What's going on? Oh, he's, it's a classic. Long way to watch a movie. Well, okay, you could watch it while texting the theater, that's wrong. But it's not that these people are watching movies wrong, it's that in these movies, they're looking for something they can't get.
They're looking oh, for something they can't scary. get. Can get we can outside. get good I mean, movies. One is a good story. That's really all. Don't I you care see? About. You want yeah. the OT. You can't get it. It's locked away in the past. If what you were saying actually had anything to do with expectations for Star Wars, then maybe, but it doesn't. Yeah. They want to give them the experience of being eight years old, sitting on their living room couch and wearing out their VHS tape. Well, this is great because Crash Bandicoot 4 came out like two days ago and playing it was like, it was, it was great. It felt like, you know, being a kid again, just playing like Crash 2 okay. back in the late nineties. And it's, it's funny, right? It's like, well, you're chasing a feeling that can't happen again. It's like, well, I mean, it's not just like that game. There are a lot of things that have had, have done that. All it needs to be is good. That's it. That's really all I need. Well, yeah, this dichotomy is flying all over the place here. Like, as if you can... What, what, how does he explain TFA when his whole argument was how that's what it did? And it was successful. Like, like mm -hmm. they, they're, getting, they're chasing something they can't get. It's like, you said that TFA gave them it, so... I don't know tapes of the original movies. For many people, Star Wars is less a movie than a feeling. A feeling that new movies, seen as an adult, can't possibly recreate. What about TFA? You yeah. said that that's what it did. Yeah, yeah you already said that's mm -hmm. what it did. It felt like Star Wars. It had the feel. Unless... <gasps> you get a time machine and go forward to the year 2020 or later, and buy the new trilogy on Blu-ray, then transfer the movies over to VHS tapes, then hop back in the time machine and travel back to the mid-90s or whenever you were a kid and give them to yourself. Strip away the anticipation and expectations and the need for backstory and rules until they're not new Star Wars movies. They're you fucking kidding me right now? You, you think people would have been happy with wow, them back then? Wow, I have then. no idea what my stupid kid brain would say back then, and this is the biggest conjecture of the what-if game that I've seen. Dude, I'm me. almost certain my kid brain would have been really fucking annoyed with what they did with Luke. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have liked it either. No, wait, isn't, isn't he saying that you show this to yourself before you watch the OT? I think what he's saying no, no, no. is that as a kid, you would like it. It would give you the same feeling. He's suggesting that back yeah, then, no, we didn't have it. restrictions. We would have just accepted it. It would have just, it would have just jumped. Because he had the whole sequence of uh, the problems of the OT, implying that if we were to be treating the OT the same way that we treat the sequels, we wouldn't like them either, kind of. But obviously the OT benefits from having been watched when we were super young, which if we did that with the sequels, we were to convert them to VHS and watch them when we were kids, we would have liked them. It's like, hmm... Even I if, think... which I don't even think is true, but even if it were true, what, is, what does that mean? That, like, we wouldn't be able to look back and be equally as critical? Because we've done that with the OT. I think, that my, uh... I think that my very, very young kid brain would have liked TFA, but hated The Last Jedi. <clears throat> so, that's uh, that thought. Let's uh, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> They're just Star Wars. Now, most of what I've been... Wait, was that supposed to... Did we skip? <laughs> no, no, that's... that's Are that we was... done? Is that... Wait, that was it? Are we going to address the question now? Well, I think that's his answer. Wait, did we miss something? What you, what you want from a Star Wars movie is the originals, but you can't have that. Yeah, I, yeah, that's I can perfect. watch the originals. <laughs> well, you can't have that from a new movie, even though he already said in this video that TFA was that, so I'm interested that he's not addressing that at all. The most juvenile understanding of franchise expectations I've ever seen. No, he's right. He's totally right. That's it. Okay. Never mind, sorry. Anticipation and expectations and the need for backstory and rules until they're not new Star Wars movies. They're just Star Wars. Now, most- So, if we got Luke- from TLJ, and then the OT came out as the prequels. I don't think. And I would wonder what the fuck happened. It didn't. It, yeah. It's not that it needs to be watched before or after the OT. It just needs to be watched when around the same time you watched the OT as a kid. As it, he's trying to argue that anything you saw back then got a free access pass into your brain as good content. No. No, I know. I know. I know. There were things I hated as a kid. Like yeah. I don't know what you mean. Mm. Asparagus, yum! <laughs> so what I've been talking about really just applies to a certain section. Oh, like, I, all right, I, okay, let's be fair. Asparagus is fine, it's okay. But I think that, I think Brussels sprouts, I think they get a bad rap, and I don't think that it's deserved. I don't like them. I think well-seasoned and grilled Brussels sprouts, I think they're legit delicious, and I like them quite a bit.
and I, I I like them. It tastes like death. You taste like death. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, they're it's they're they're good shit. Brussels sprouts are some good yeah. shit. I I legitimately enjoy them quite. I a bit. should buy some. That's actually a good idea. Thanks, Rex. It tastes like yeah. They slice death. them in half and they, they they season them a bit and then they put them in a pan and grill them up and man, good stuff. It tastes mm-hmm. like death, but snotty too. They really don't. <laughs> snotty. Ew. Brussels sprouts. They might have cooked them wrong. <laughs> snotty old death. <laughs> of Star Wars. And just because they've learned the most trivia about the lore doesn't make their opinions more valid or more important. It's not true. Star Wars is- <laughs> Like, that's the thing. We can't do this- We can't do this Hello Greedo maneuver where we're like, oh yeah, the hyperspace kamikaze is just a nitpick. It's just trivia. Well, once it's they not. classify every single fucking thought you have about it as trivia, they could make you trivial. Yeah. Basically, this is just an outgrowth of label and dismiss. There's no yeah. argument. Well, it's just funny because if you cordon off every single thing we talk about as trivial, it's like, what are you left with? It's like, um, that spaceship in the distance over there, uh, that planet that we don't know the name of. All right. Because <laughs> we've lost everything else. <clears throat> is a popular thing in the world, and it means so many different things to so many different people. Well, to the kids who grew up with the prequels and Clone Wars cartoon. The recent converts, won over by the new emphasis on strong female protagonists. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I, uh, I had the recent this. converts, <laughs> won over. What are you. <laughs> What's happening? Oh my god, the Fringlings. It's both from Wolfie again. <laughs> <laughs> they destroy your Halloween. What is this, Trump? <laughs> <laughs> Fringy, you seeing this? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin's. <laughs> Jay was ejected for no reason. Jay, are you sleeping, by the way? Nice. For reference, Jay, um, Jay told me that he normally goes to sleep around two hours before EFAP was supposed to be starting, so the genius plan is to go to sleep for two, wake up for EFAP, <laughs> go through all of it, and then go back to sleep. <laughs> I don't think it worked. <laughs> Someone, uh, someone posted this in my Discord in the memes. I, I thought it was very funny. <laughs> the movies like a stupid. Ah, Godzilla <laughs> movies we like a stupid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and diversity. The old people who have been around for this entire thing since it started in the 70s. And my group, maybe the biggest or at least the most vocal. The ones born between 1980 and 1992. The ones too young to see the original trilogy in theaters, who grew up with them on VHS. So what do we want from a Star Wars movie? Please tell I us. I think that's a question worth asking ourselves. As <laughs> Where <are> you <laughs> Your fucking video title that! He mock browned us. I knew it. He mock browned us. Oh, Fucking worthless YouTuber. <laughs> I swear the only productive thing that some people are is a bad example. Yeah, what do we want from a start? Maybe we should think about that. Yeah, that's Who a good knows? <laughs> Maybe you weren't fucking around for the last 17 minutes. We could have gotten an answer. Hey, right, he had to give all of that. What the fuck was the point of that history lesson? Seriously, it was like the weakest and quickest. Ugh. <laughs> vast as Star Wars is, trivia and lore as there is to learn about, the reason we all fell in love with it in the first place is the story. Star Wars is a- What I else would there the be? The story, the characters, the spectacle, the images, all, the, all of it. Of course but we fell in love with the, the story. <laughs> you told me that people didn't like the prequel trilogy because of primarily audiovisual things. That's true. You also said the characters were not relatable or whatever, right? Yeah. Above all else, a big, sprawling, ongoing story, and like it or not, that story is going to keep on going. And if it's going to- <laughs> Unless it doesn't make money anymore. <laughs> it's gonna keep going, oh, yeah. oh, until no. it doesn't make as much green. Also, he says this as if he's, he needs to be his future self, who's seen Rise of Skywalker. He's like, it's gonna keep going, whether you <laughs> like it or not. He's gonna be like, Patrick, seriously, it's not good. It gets really bad, Patrick. If I could make a time machine, after I've seen The Rise of Skywalker, take it, give it to my, get my time machine, go back, give it to myself before I made this video, would I make this video? No, because I'd like it, because that's me. 
You, no, he is... because I have no self-awareness. I have the self-awareness of a bag of gravel. He becomes the very thing he wants to destroy as soon as he sees his Rise of Skywalker. It's funny to see pre-Rise of Skywalker Patrick, because he's so on the top of the world. He's like, I get it. I get Star Wars. The new one comes out, and he's like, fuck you, Star Wars. You got it all wrong. <laughs> this new direction of Star Wars will keep going on, and it's amazing, and I get it. Then suddenly, his Halloween was stolen by you Trump. 2019. <laughs> to be meaningful, continue to entertain new generations. It can't just feed us nostalgia. It can't just recycle elements from the movies we grew up with. It needs to surprise us. It needs to. What's this shitty, like, <laughs> carry with the fire, like, ripoff version? What, what is, is this? Music? What's happening? It's so funny. He, he treats it like this big revelation of this yeah. coming together moment. It's so warm and fun. It's All like, we did piece. it, guys. That arduous 17 minutes we just got through, <laughs> we've done it grow to show us new sights and characters and stories we haven't seen before Part tfa a great example of a story we've not seen before yeah <laughs> never seen a world destroying thing before never seen new hope but shit <laughs> so how about yeah. that it's it's why I love because they destroy five at once oh my god, fuck. Oh, god fuck. because six would be too many <laughs> that would be insane <laughs> loved The Last Jedi was that it gave me what I wanted, but also what I didn't know movie. I wanted. It took the elements that I- No, what the <laughs> translation for Patrick Rowe, he decided after the fact that it was good, and he had to justify that it was good and amazing. He, it, he knew. I think a lot of these people know that they were not allowed to not like this. What, TLJ? It's one of those movies. <clears throat> I, I reckon he's fully- on the TLJ train, he always seemed like the fact that he said "fuck you" to 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 a director, which is something that he's like argued against. Because... I think he is now, like, and, and at the time of this, he is. But I think he almost had to like will himself into that position. Fair enough. But I liked what pushed the story well, forward so. into unexpected new territory, yeah, yeah. and it created countless possibilities for future new stories. What do you mean, TLJ is the most closed-off ending you'll ever get? How the fuck do you follow that? Yeah, the, it's the, the, the first order rules the galaxy. The good guys are twenty dudes on a ship. It's like, oh, you have so much potential. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> In this world, and I think that's the key. It's not that we're supposed to let the past die. It's Bro. that we need to accept that there's a future as well. <laughs> Shut up. What's happening? Don't just let the past die. Remember, there's Shut a future up. as well. That's not what this video is. Yeah, this it feels this ending is more equipped for like an hour long video. It's like we just rushed mm. through some stuff, and he's like, "Now for my triumphant ending." You're like, what? What is what? <laughs> After saying fucking nothing for seventeen minutes, time for my incredible ending. A future with a hell of a lot of Star Wars in it, and it's going to be a lot of different things. We'll like some, we might not like some others, oh, but every God. one of these it movies nice is going like to be some. somebody's favorite. That would be great. I don't like sand. Course. I mean, it's better than the sequels, just saying. Yeah, this line is absolutely better than the sequels, easily. Not even close. This this line makes sense for him to say. <laughs> Compare it to Knights of Red. Ghouls. Ghouls. <laughs> I don't even... Like... They don't know which way's up I just, out there. I want the Knight of Red at the end to turn around and go, huh? Huh? What did you just say? And he goes, Why'd oh. Why'd you say that? Oh, he said cool. Just, Knights of Ren, cool. Well, imagine owning it. You'd be like, I, I said ghouls. He's like, what do you mean ghouls? Why are you saying that we're ghouls? And he's like, I, I don't really know. <laughs> you know <laughs> he was just, just in the script. weird, scrim. and you never say anything up till now, and you have all these masks all the time, and you disappeared in the last movie. Yeah, where were like, you? Oh. We were searching for Exegol. <clears throat> Rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. <laughs> So beautiful. Oh, is that it? That's it. Oh. Ooh. Are we oh, getting like an ad? Like two minutes to go. Do we have an Avengers style stinger? Hey no, guys, have, thank you so oh, much no, for watching. No, this topic has been on my mind for like six months now, so it felt good to finally take some time. You didn't do anything with this topic. You, you just said everyone anything. wants the OT. That's what That's everyone what fucking with. says when they casually talk about this. You, you just said... sat on a couch with your fucking modem on the floor and didn't say anything. <laughs>
He went to the woods. He that, he made it seem like this <laughs> huge, <laughs> arduous <laughs> fucking task to discover the truth that is. Everyone really likes the OT. I guess they just want a repeat of the OT. There you go. That's my thesis. This is just going to be an, uh, incredible sponsorship now and Patreon. I'm indignant. Now, while you were watching this video, I'm sure there was one big question that was on your mind, which is, what kind of grooming products does he use? Yeah, and doll sex <laughs> product. Why would he bring that up? Don't. Why? Terrible segue. I, 95% of shaving equipment is identical to one another and it works perfectly. He has Mr. Burns' hair, almost. Is it not a lot of it? I'm hmm. telling you, guys, if you, if you just start, if this happens to you, just take it off, man. Take it off and own well, that see, shit. Don't, Mr. Burns, don't just desperately hang on to what little you have left. When you're like you're 117, like, <laughs> like Mr. Burns is, you just like, at that point, I don't care if you don't care. I'm like, yeah, you're old enough. You've earned the right to just walk around with whatever the fuck is growing now. <laughs> but, but when you're like, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, like, yeah, you may as well, you know, keep yourself groomed. Why not, right? I mean, he's doing a grooming ad. I don't know. You are in luck because this video is sponsored by... Dollar Shave Yay. Club. They actually sent me this whole little starter kit here, which is very cool, but the truth is I already have is this it? stuff because, like, no joke, I've been a member for the past two years. See, a lot of us- when am I watching so this? I, I, mean, not watching. I would recommend you guys go to, like, Amazon or something, and for, like, 20, 25 bucks, you could buy, like, just electric shaving little boxes and stuff, and just buy one of those, and I promise it'll work just fine. It'll work just fine. Yeah, but this is a sponsor. I also, I've always found it, I've had thoughts about this and I've always tried to put them into words. Like, whenever a YouTuber is sponsored by something and then they take the time to say, I actually, uh, you know, don't have to talk about how good this is because I actually know it's good because I use it. I'm always like, doesn't this f accidentally fuck up all of your other ads if you say that this way? Like, yeah. this one I can tell you is actually good. You're like, uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait. Because, wait, if you've done ones that you did oh no. Ray like, Ray, is Raid Shadow Legends not great? Patrick, <laughs> tell me the truth. Ray Shadow in the background, it's like, oh shit. Has Human he done Raid Shadow Legends ad? I don't, I don't actually know if he has, I could believe it though. You just have to shave. And buying razors and blades kind of sucks. They're this. stupidly expensive. In the drugstore, they're stuck behind that locked plastic wall. The whole thing you is don't a need hassle. Razor blades. You just get an electric shaver. They why is he, why is he buying razor blades? Well. blades? Like, that's just seems making it more difficult than it needs to be. Yeah. Jeez. The Dollar Shave Club just sends them to you every month, and they're better and less expensive. And if you sign up you now with this offer, which I oh. recommend you do, for five bucks you get this whole starter kit with stuff that's worth Sweet. more than five dollars. You get the executive it? razor, which is oh, oh the executive okay. razor, An executive razor. Wow, it looks like plastic. Looks like a normal razor. Yeah, it looks like a yeah, just looks like yeah the best one a pack of cartridges shave butter that's body the best cleanser. one they can wipes do. and then after that replacement cartridges are just where's the butt shaver gimme just a few <laughs> bucks a month need it a, a butt shaver is what you got in a steady hand my friend oh. it's so it's a to tough this, job go to but... dollarshaveclub.com slash p <laughs> slash few <laughs> phw those are my initials and again it is dollarshaveclub.com slash phw Starter kit, just five bucks. I think you should do it, so go do it. So if you like these videos we're making and you want to help us make more of them as well as launch this podcast that's going to be coming very soon, Whoa. you should check out the Patreon and pledge whatever you want. Well, there you go, guys. Go check them out on Patreon if, uh, if you want to support more of these kinds of videos. Yeah. I, I, I know that you were all pretty quiet there because you're all racing to the links to support. That's your old video. Yeah, I was more like... So that was what do we want from a Star Wars movie, but the, the interesting part is that it's part one of two, which I think when he made this he didn't intend it to be part one of two, did he? Because it seemed like it ended, so I'd be curious. Is he not going to make a post The Rise of Skywalker follow up to this? Yeah, I guess so, because he might have to explain how he is now a part of the, the collective that is we hate new Star Wars movies. <laughs> He's like, oh no, I've fallen for it. So, um, yeah, before we, we go anywhere further, I guess it's time, Fringy. 
Oh, okay. Uh. I suppose you're welcome to provide all the context you want and take the lead, but chat, okay. you're, you're in for an adventure. So, um, so, uh, when after, I think while I was watching Buffy and Angel with Mauler, part of the, uh, part of the, the idea was like, all right, you show me one of the shows that you think is good. I'll show you one of the shows that I think is good. Um, and the show that, uh, that I elected to, uh, get Mola to watch was Bojack Horseman. Um, prior to watching Bojack Horseman again over the last couple of weeks, um, my perspective on the show was that it was really good. Like I had, I had quite a favorable view of that show. Um, I'd, I hadn't rewatched, um, any of the seasons past season three. And I think season three came out like in 2016. So it would have been a while since I had like properly rewatched them, but I had seen them all and I had a really favorable view. So, <laughs> so we started watching Bojack Horseman. Um, and we sort of kept going and going. And, um, by season three, uh, I was starting to get very frustrated <laughs> with the show. And so after all of that, we get to the end and my perspective on Bojack Horseman is not only is it not a good show, it's actually bad. Um, <laughs> oh God, here we go. It was quite an adventure. Uh, <laughs> do we want, do we want to like run through the, so part of the problem is like, I feel like talking about the comedy is something that we need to come to later. I think, I think the fundamental thing to address so when you watch Bojack Horseman from beginning to end, like if you watch all of the seasons back to back, one of the things that you will notice about that show is that it has a very rigid formula that it follows and that it goes through every, like repeatedly. So the the big, you know, broader formula for this show is if you break it down by each of the seasons, excluding season six, but only to a certain extent, <clears throat> episode one is like, this is what this season will be about. And then episodes two through usually about eight or nine are largely unimportant and nothing particularly important happens when it comes to the main Bojack story. And then by episode nine to 10, things will usually get a little bit more, you know, important. Episode 11 in every single season, like the penultimate episode of every season is like the dark episode, the drama episode. And without fail, it's usually the best episode of the season. But again, like, to say that those episodes would be good is like, uh, the only, the only one that I think is good is, uh, the view from halfway down the second last episode of the entire show, but every single season does that. And then season 12 usually brings it right back down. We're right back into comedy. We, we rarely like address all of the important stuff that happened in the episode before. And then we sort of have our lead in into the next season. And that is the formula every single season. And once you start to notice it, it kind of becomes impossible to ignore. And the only time that it changes is in season six because that one has more episodes. But you could you could argue that the formula is the same, just extended. And between those drama moments, which let's get real, guys, that was the stuff that people are interested in. People, are, I would like to believe that people weren't watching the show for the comedy because I I don't think I ever was. But my view of the oh, we'll get to the comedy later. But one of the things that you notice when you rewatch the show is that the ratio of drama to comedy is uh, it's like ninety percent comedy, ten percent drama. Um, and the drama was like what I thought I liked about the show, and I thought that there was more of it, and there isn't. There's really not. It's mostly just jokes, and most of the jokes <laughs> are not that great. <laughs> Um, damn, like, I feel, I feel like, and, and, and the drama is like even deficient. It becomes more deficient as it goes on. Like starting up with season one and two, the drama for Bojack is like working. It's fine. If not a lot of it, but then the more that it continues to go, it starts to break down because they keep adding, they keep adding on new things while ignoring the things that they had already set up until right at the very end when it all just gets heaped on in a very contrived way. <laughs> and then when it comes to every other character, we, uh, we, we don't have a lot at all. Princess Carolyn would probably be like the second most developed character. And even then there's a lot of stuff that we skip over. There's a lot of content that we just don't, 
we we it, it feels like there are a lot of scenes that are missing and then when it comes to the last three which is diane mr peanut butter and uh and and todd mr peanut butter and todd could almost be excluded from the show and very little would change i mean obviously a lot would change in terms of like the relationships with the other characters but the things that they've got going on is so minimal that it honestly feels that the further we get into the show the less they know what they want to do with him um todd basically exist to go on these crazy wacky adventures that um that are, are totally unrelated to the main plot um mr peanut butter is usually just like um look at me i'm i'm a stupid doggo go um and i'm gonna cause shenanigans and then diane who i think by the end of the season has been completely obliterated uh at the end of the show completely obliterated basically um it's it's the same situation as Britta, except she is meant to be taken very seriously and is basically places herself on a very high pedestal. The show forgets that she wrote a best-selling book many times. So yeah, really, all you've got is uh, Bojack, who is uh, without a doubt the best character in the show, mainly because he has things going on. But even then, um, his his parents are cartoonishly evil. Um, there's a line when, um, Bojack, he smokes a cigarette because he's a kid, um, and he smokes it. And then his mom walks in and tells him to keep smoking it. And he asks, is this because I stole the cigarette? And she said, no, it's because you're alive. Like, how can you <laughs> listen to a line like that and take that seriously? It's so cartoonishly evil. And then there's a scene where Bojack's dad gets caught having an affair. <laughs> And so he gives Bojack alcohol to knock him out. And Bojack is like seven or eight years old. And when he's driving home, he's like, yeah, you probably don't want to tell your mom about any of this, do you? <laughs> and this is meant to be like really dramatic moments. Um, <laughs> and so, oh, and um, and a lot of a lot of the ideas that, uh, that they have for Bojack, uh, that you realize that's in character for Beach. I'm sorry. It's 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 cartoonishly evil. And, and this is a show where it's meant to have the serious stakes. And in terms of like Beatrice as well, I think that's an opportunity that was thoroughly undermined. Um because like we we have our episode where we find out that the reason why Beatrice is cartoonishly evil is because her mom had a nervous breakdown, and then when she got a lobotomy, she told her point blank um don't love anybody otherwise you'll you know you'll end up like me and have part of your brain cut out <laughs> that's effectively what we got it's set there there is no subtext it's all text in this entire show it's all text there's never any double meaning to any of the any of the sentences people always say what they mean people always say what they mean in this show um it is it is it's it's astounding how many scenes there are where the characters just outright blurt out exactly what they mean and then the piano music kicks in as they talk about like you know you know like you you have a scene where it's comedy and then all of a sudden um bojack will be like i don't i don't know how to i don't know how to you know love i i don't know how to feel happy you know i i just i just wish that i could feel happy but i i can't and or then you have a scene with princess carolyn where it's like i don't know i i'm really good at my job but um, but I I want to have a kid, and I I don't know. It's it's very confusing. But but uh, you know that you have scenes like that, and then you have the same with basically all of the characters in the show. Um, <laughs> the, <clears throat> one of the things that you notice when you watch the show through again is that the ideas that they have are fine, if not you know potentially good. Um, specifically for BoJack, I'm talking about BoJack now specifically. Um, you have a lot of ideas that could work. The idea of, you know, a washed up actor who has a whole bunch of money, um, and, uh, you know, but yet is miserable and can't figure out why. I mean, that's a great idea, but we, but we, we, we skip over so much content. We get so little of like the really cool ideas. We only get like a few episodes with Herb when that could have been a whole a season we only get a few episodes with sarah lynn when that could have been a whole season we only get a few episodes with beatrice when that could be a whole season and then you, you know we we have things where we totally skip over content that we have so for instance um herb only gets one episode and then he dies 
And not only, and this character had cancer, but he gets over the cancer and dies because it crashes into a truck that's filled with um, peanuts and he's allergic to peanuts. And he was tweeting, oh no, I'm allergic to peanuts when he crashed into it, apparently. That was what was said at the funeral. And then, um, and then we don't have much with him at all after that. Sarah Lynn has this whole <clears throat> big episode about two minutes before she dies. We finally get some information on what is actually going on in her mind. And then she dies. And then the next episode jumps immediately into this completely contrived sequence where, oh no, uh, character actress Margot Martindale has uh, caused a blimp that has the Secretariat poster to have a blinding glare that causes two ships to crash into each other. Oh no, wait, no, the, the, the ships crash. They've got a bunch of spaghetti. The uh, Secretariat poster, which is a mirror, shoots a bunch of light onto the spaghetti oh no the spaghetti's cooking now it's gonna sink and crush the the ocean town if only there was somebody who had a bunch of spaghetti strainers and if only there was um somebody who had created this really elaborate uber type business that could deliver these spaghetti strainers to the ocean to save this city ho ho funny funny Me meanwhile this has come after the up to this point the most dramatic uh, moment throughout the entire show like the, people keep one, saying, one, to be one, fair, these things are supposed to be jokes. That's Friggy's point. That's the <laughs> point. Like you have, the, you have what arguably one of the most significant people in BoJack's life die in a very, in a very bad way, and the episode which follows only gives us about two to three minutes of BoJack. We don't see him immediately on the aftermath. We don't see the funeral. We don't really see how he's dealing with it at all. But then three seasons later. It comes back in a really significant way. And 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 also the way that it comes back um doesn't make sense because the, the whole story builds up to this realization that Bojack lied about the circumstances of Sarah Lynn's death, but there's no way that that couldn't have been the case because Bojack went on a month-long bender with her, pictures were taken of him. He showed up in several different locations, but the show acts like nobody could connect the dots. He's a super famous uh, Golden Globe winning movie star. It's insane. Yeah, he almost got the um, Oscar, except funny shenanigans. He almost got the, oh, yeah, that's right. He, he almost won the Oscar, except that um, Mr. Peanut Butter lost the cud that had the, uh, the nominees for Best Actor. And so they go on this massive adventure, and apparently he just makes up the list of nominees as though the Oscars don't actually have uh, a, list of, um, a list of their predetermined nominees, as if they don't have more than one cut. Is Fringy literally complaining about how slice of life shows are structured? I'm sorry, my dude. If you have an episode where the most significant character, um, my problem is Fringy's claim that it's objectively bad when all of his criticisms are subjective. How is it subjective <laughs> that it is a bizarre tone shift to have the most significant character in a person's life die only to immediately jump into this insane contrived joke scenario and spend no time on what that character like talk about wasting your drama and that that is like the that is the the most disappointing thing uh coming into the show again was just how much of the drama was wasted there were so many opportunities where they could have done more they could have expanded upon it more um but then but then we get nothing it's just it's just uh it, yeah, it's I mean, just completely swept under the rug. There is a cosmic amount of plot holes if uh, if people really want oh, us to go to those. But yeah. might um, want to bring up the um the two episodes. Uh oh, which which ones we're we talking about? Oh oh, uh, so there are two episodes. There are these two episodes that are astoundingly bad. Um, the and and it is it is definitely a result of the fact that the show's main method of relaying information to you is that characters say exactly what they mean all of the time and there's never any subtext it's a big formula for the jokes which we'll get to later but these two episodes are there's a gun control episode and an episode called Ooh, bojack the one. feminist yeah so in the gun control episode the main thesis is that america hates women more than it loves guns and hence they ban all the guns because it makes women feel safer having them that is like yeah. the point of that episode. Go go watch it, guys. People who love Bojack Horseman, really watch that fucking episode. It's is if women get guns, men will be afraid of them, and thus old white men in power will ban guns as a whole to prevent we'll women them from having yeah. them to feel safer. And the ending conclusion 
and you could say this is entirely played for jokes. It's not. It's not any kind of commentary whatsoever. Is America hates women more than it loves guns? It's like. Okay. Yeah, that 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 is literal dialogue, by the way. That's not like something that we we've, we've invented or. Oh yeah, because phrase. that is the line of dialogue in the show. The um, so that I've only seen one episode of BoJack, and that was the episode I saw. I have no feelings toward the show either way, uh, but I did get shown this episode, and it is probably one of the worst television episodes <laughs> of <laughs> anything that I have ever seen. It was. Like, I wanted to bail on it. I didn't want to finish it. Um, I didn't laugh at anything. It was super cringy. The message was so stupid and on the nose. Every, I mean, everything was just blatant and in your face. Well, yeah, because when you watch the episode, they have these, like, uh, I don't know what they're called. It's, it's I think it's called Vox Pops in media, you know, where you talk to regular people to get their opinion. You have a bunch of characters Vox, who are men who are, like, Vox who, who based, yeah, 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 Vox Pops. People. I think that's what they, yeah, yeah, but that's, I think that's what the segment's called, Vox Pops, like, for, mm -hmm. uh, for news media when they do it. And it's basically a bunch of guys just saying these insanely caricatured points. They have no intention of presenting a level-headed um episode on this topic where everybody you know where they're actually trying to represent both perspectives on the issue and uh address it. it 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 is just um it just feels like a lecture and whether or not you agree with you know the thesis of the episode whether or not more gun control is necessary or less whether or not you agree with it i think if you would watch it you would be it, it, it it's astounding and and then you know that's the same issue with the episode in the next season, Bojack the Feminist. Um, God, like that episode was really significant for the plot as well. But um, but the, the whole point of the episode is there's this actor who five years ago had done some bad thing, you know, sexual assault or something like that. He's making a comeback. Um, and Diane is really pissed off about it because it's the idea of like, why does he get to come back and continue to have a career? Um, so she gets ambushed in um in this car by a character called Anna Spanakopita, who was like Bojack's. Um, she was helping him try to get the Oscar, um, and now she's trying to help this particular actor have his career back. And um and then she asks Bojack, uh, no, uh, she asks Diane a question along the lines of, "What was what is he like? He's done the bad thing. What is he supposed to do now? Like what what does he do? Is he?" Uh, you know, akin to the question of, is he supposed to, like, die? Is he supposed to never be able to work again? What is he supposed to do? She doesn't answer that question, and the question is never answered, even though it's a really valid question to ask. Um, what what were the other problems? Because that episode had a lot of problems. Um, oh, specifically it's, the it's feminist a, one? Or? Yeah, Bojack the Feminist, that episode. Um, didn't you show... A few. Uh, there was a scene you actually wanted to re replay oh, through. Oh yeah. Nicole. Um, there was a scene at the end of the episode where um, so Bojack is on a show called Filbert, and the whole idea with Filbert is that it's meant to be like a um, it's meant to be this subversive show. Um, and so he shows Diane the Bojack shows Diane the script, and um, and she says that it's it's sexist um because it was like masquerading as a commentary on. Uh, these sexist tropes, but also committing them. And then I think there's a line where, um, where, where, because Bojack is trying to be like a super feminist, you know, to improve his image, he's doing it very cynically. Um, and then, um, I think Diane says, um, this isn't a hobby for me. Being a woman isn't a hobby for, uh, for me. And then she says something along the lines of, you know, uh, you or some guy being able to come along and pretend to be and play Joss Whedon and then, you know, go basically the point being Joss Whedon only comes in to play pretend feminist and then go back to being a piece of shit. That was like the point that they were trying to make, which of course is funny when having watched Buffy and Angel, those shows have some of the best female characters in like any media ever and Joss Whedon wrote it. It... Uh, and and the show does it a lot where they they criticize other shows for doing things and it's like man glass houses <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know like it, it it really uh um bojack is objectively great one of the best comedies i've seen all right can we talk let's talk about the comedy <laughs> bojack horseman wait, has wait. a very tell them tell yeah. them how many times i laughed in the totality of the six seasons uh, i don't think you laughed at all <laughs> Which is pretty uh, fucking funny, isn't it? I wanted yeah. I didn't even want to finish the one episode of mine. It was just so shockingly unfunny. For reference, I laughed four times in the newest episode of The Simpsons that I watched as an experiment. 
Um, well, yeah, because I mean, it, for example, you get more laughs in like fifty seconds of classic Simpsons than we got in in. Because I think I didn't I didn't laugh more than five times rewatching it. Um, <laughs> they make the and, same and, and jokes even, yeah. again and again and yeah. again and again. It's yeah, fucking that's, nuts. That's uh, that's kind of that's that's the thing that uh, becomes apparent. And, and you know, interestingly enough, right before I recommended the show to you, Mola, I think I even mentioned that I didn't think the comedy was the show's strong suit. But like, my God, <laughs> rewatching it again, um, I. So the jokes tend to fall into one of three or four categories. One of the most common jokes is a Freudian slip, where a character accidentally just says what they what they actually think. You know, it'll be like, are you nervous? No, what? I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous that this could all secretly go wrong and reveal my deep-seated uh, insecurities. Definitely not that. That is a very common joke in this show. Um, at least once an episode, I would almost wager you will see a joke that is like that. Um, yeah, it's it's basically just a character saying what they mean, but pretending like it's not. Freudian slip. That's joke number one. Can uh, I, wait, can I pause number you? Number two, sec, I'm doing the one, Biden one, thing here. One sec, one sec, one sec. Maniacal yeah. Florida. I'm, I'm going to read, this is directed for me, but I, I'd happily have you answer it, Friggy. Mola, what do you like about Joss Whedon? All of his characters are exactly the same. Why is cracking no, smug not. and quirky? <laughs> they're not the same. <laughs> I've not even finished by the show. No, they're not. How could oh yeah, Angel and Fred identical? <laughs> Nothing. Well, let's. About them at all. I mean, cause Angel and Spike, because Theo seen that. Yeah, like Angel those, Spike, yeah. those two, yeah. they're, they're they're practically the same, right? Yeah. G Giles and Cordelia, practically the same. Yeah. yeah Buff Buffy and Willow are identical. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I, it's the thing a lot of people say to me. It's like his characters are all the same. And I'm like, well, I don't understand that one. <laughs> they're, not, they're not the same. But, but yeah, that, so, uh, what was I? I was doing the Biden thing. So, Freudian slips, number one. Number two, um, another one of the very common jokes in this show is extremely long sentences. Like, the joke is that a character is saying something really long. For instance, one of the shows, and, and this is a joke that gets done several times. Um, they get the guy who wrote Catcher in the Rye to make a TV show. Um, and the joke for the TV show is that the name of the show is Hollywood Stars and Celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. That's the joke. It's a long sentence. Um, Bojack has a sister and uh, her name is Holly Hawk. And then she has eight names afterwards because she has eight dads. And so the joke is that her name is really hard to remember. In fact, I think the first episode where um where she jumps in, um, they repeat that joke several times, where it's just like, oh, my name is Holly Hawk, something, 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 something. Oh, and also there's um there's a, a conglomerate that's called like Time Warner, Pepsi, Toyota, Trader Joe, something, something. It's like 10 different companies merged together. And that's the joke. And then they do that joke over and, and you know, you can be like, oh, the joke is that it's it's a, a conglomerate. And it's like <laughs> Okay, I mean, there's not much. There's not much depth to a joke like that, is it? Look, big conglomerate, isn't this insane? And then you do it like seven or eight times again. You know what I mean? Like, um. So yeah, really long jokes. Another one of the common jokes is either rhymes or alliteration. Um. So like, and this is mainly a Princess Carolyn thing, where the joke is that it's a very, it's a very long sentence again, but it's either alliterated or it rhymes, or there's some other frenetic thing, and that's the joke. Um, and then I think the fourth last major type of joke in this is a pun. This show is riddled with puns. The amount of puns in this show is unbelievable. And usually all it is is um, is just an animal name substituted for, like, you know, a person. Um, what Manity Fair was one of them. Uh, oh, God. I'm just... Uh, I think it was Ma uh, Maggot Gyllenhaal is another one, you know, for, yeah, basically you're just substituting a name that sounds kind of similar, um, to, you know, an animal. And of course, like you look at that and you might think that that's clever. Like, oh, look, they're finding names that rhyme, but I, I don't think you realize how like easy it is to come up with these types of puns. Um, the obvious, I, I think, um, I think, uh, one of the the times where it became really apparent was um, Bojack was in this episode where he was arguing with someone from the uh, the LA Gazette, and um, I think I just offhandedly said, "Oh, I didn't call it the LA Gazelle." And when I did that, I was like, "Oh, is that how easy it is to come up with puns? Just as long as you have a vocabulary 
that's broad enough, you, you'll be able to just make puns. And remember, puns are not like, like puns are not exactly like the highest form of comedy to start off with. So when puns Unless are like the mine. backbone. Puns are great. <laughs> Unless they're right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 what was it? It was a joke from Archer where it was like puns are the lowest form of comedy. I'm not sure if I want to commit to that position. Seal McBeal, the Navy Seal. Yeah, that's another one. Um, and it's, it's not that great when it's just happening all the time. And again, you compare it to, you know, I've been, I've been rewatching a lot of old Simpsons episodes. Just think about like how clever the joke is that is um the, you didn't like the, oh yeah, the Halloween store that's in January. That was the joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, damn it. Uh Oh yeah, so um, the, you guys remember the the episode of The Simpsons where Bart is like he's just come out of church and he needs to cause some havoc because he spent a long time in a uh, Sunday school, and then he sees Willie uh <laughs> doing doing a thing for Scotch Toberfest. He goes up, ties a bunch of balloons to his kilt, and it lifts his kilt up. A woman faints when he sees his slog, and Willie's like, "There's no shame in being upset about what God gave you." And then Bart just sort of is like, oh, yeah, there we go. That's the stuff. And then a bunch of, like, FBI agents pop out of the trees and, like, the, the bird water fountain. <laughs> and then Smith, uh, no, Skinner walks up and is like, you just earned three months of detention. There's no such thing as Scotch Tober Fest. And Willie's like, there's not? You used me, Skinner! You used me! It's like, <laughs> how many jokes have we got there? It's joke after joke after joke, shotgun one after another. Each of them is funny, and each of them has several layers of comedy. The fact that the fact that Willie, the Scotsman, doesn't realize that there's such a thing as Scott Toberfest. The fact that S Skinner looks like sad at the fact that he's angry at him. And it, and then, you know, obviously you got other examples like the fact that Homer had to do a a um a mock uh, meltdown scenario and actually caused a literal meltdown. And then <clears throat> Mr. Burns runs to an escape pod that has two seats and locks Smithers out. And he says he likes to put his feet up. The escape pod shoots out and fails immediately and rolls down the hill. And then Homer <laughs> crawls out and his radioactive monster must destroy world. Ooh, lunchtime. And then just goes back to normal. And then to top it off, the guy's like, I don't even know how he caused the nuclear meltdown. There wasn't any nuclear material in the truck. Oh, <laughs> 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 that. Molly, yeah. you showed me that episode. Yeah. Um, I think I, a long time ago. I think you showed me that one, and that was funny. Classic Simpsons, yeah. man. It's, it's uh, that, that's good. what I mean. Is like in three minutes of Simpsons, we've got not only more comedy. Well, not more. Uh, we we not only have a higher quality tier of jokes, um, but several of them one after another. And when you watch that, and then you go to BoJack, where the jokes never ascend beyond well, have a you, really long run on sentence or have a we, pun have we talked about how it's like let's address the elephant in the room and then it and pans the, yeah. out and there's an elephant that goes you talking about me and they go no he goes well you said elephant like we're not talking oh, about yeah, you he's like wow okay wow J uh, yeah he, he's doing that whole thing yeah, that joke then you have um oh, you all behave you all behave like vultures, Lemming? and then it pans oh, over, and there's two yeah. vultures that go, do you think he was talking about us? You go, no, I think he was talking about everyone there, else. There was another one where it's like, agents are like lemmings, and there are a table of lemmings sitting next to them who get into they a They do heart. this joke over and over and over <laughs> and over and over, and it's never fucking clever. Good job, you have animals in you. you oh, shit, I've just remembered oh, the thing. Oh, we haven't talked about that. Oh, yeah, no. we haven't talked about so, um, so in the Bojack universe, humans and animals are all basically humans and live together. Um, uh, and um, there's an episode where... Okay, so yeah. So what you need to understand about Bojack is it's a universe where humans and animals are equivalent. They're all humans. But basically the animal, you know, it's just like a chicken, but with arms and legs. Yeah, they're all humanoid. Or a dog with arms and legs. Yeah, they're all humanoid. Um, and there's an episode where... Um, there's an ad for chicken for days which is basically kfc where they're talking about eating chickens and of course your immediate question is wait a second aren't chickens also human beings basically eating chickens like 
uh, and then um and and of course that's already bad enough but then th- there's a, a farm guy who's like an op- you know he's like a free range chicken farmer and he's a chicken himself he's like you know chicken for days you know they they keep them in coops that upsets me um he, you know here here at uh, our uh, something farms you, you know our chickens can run freely and of course his son is like um but they're we're chickens why what and he's like, it's okay. You see, when the chickens are born, they're injected with a drug that suppresses their brains. So it's okay to eat them. <laughs> that's like the point that that's like his argument. So it would be akin to it would be akin to in our universe, a place that sold human flesh. And when somebody was like, What isn't this wrong? He's like, No, it's okay. When they were babies, we injected them with a mind suppressant, so they're stupid. So we can eat them and it's all good. <laughs> Like that is, and of course, I think this, while we were up to this season, I was still on the show's side. So I just basically was telling more like, I know, I know it's stupid. You just got to pretend it doesn't exist. Unfortunately, the show doesn't pretend that it doesn't exist because in a later season, Diane eats some chicken from chicken for days, despite being involved in that episode of freeing the chickens. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, she she wh- finds the practice disgusting and horrible, yet they apparently don't give a fuck. Because as when she's in, it's in Vietnam, right? She's she's just getting some food while she's pondering on like the reason why she's there, trying to get away from Mr. Peanut Butter and deal with the divorce. And she just picks up some chicken for days, chicken, and between scenes, she eats all of it. And you're like, Jesus Christ, show! Yeah. Like, well, it's you- funny because people are like that's the joke, and it's like, guys, this universe is broken. It's a universe where apparently people are cool with eating the equivalent of human beings just because they had a brain suppressant when they were babies. It's insane. You Look, can't, uh, people like, saying that's the joke. What do you mean? <laughs> the joke is that everybody in this universe is insane and cool with eating human flesh because they had a brain suppressant when they were kids. It's the, it's and funny because they're it, cannibals. You're like, yeah. okay. And then there was a uh, a later episode um, where um, they're they're in a restaurant um, and there's a picture of a humanoid pig up on the wall with the cuts of meat drawn onto it. And it's meant to be like a little funny joke. But again, it's like, this is horrifying. This would be like if you went to a restaurant and there was a human being up on the wall and they had like thigh ribs drawn on them yeah. as they stood there. It's absurd. Um, and, and that's the problem with this universe is it really doesn't... Uh, you, oh, and, and I think that, that, that that's actually an interesting one because while we were watching the show and I was still... It's supposed to be a social commentary on the brutality of slaughtering animals, but it doesn't work at all. Yeah, it doesn't work because in our world they aren't human beings. Like, that. so it's 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 not a good analogy, if that if that's the point they're making. Um, but yeah, this I can't agree with the chicken criticism. I don't know <laughs> what to say, man. I'm sorry. Like, you're just wrong. It's absurd. Um, uh, what? Oh, the the underwater episode. So. So so basically, to paint the picture, because obviously I recommended this show to Mola, as we were watching it, we were getting up to about, it was about season three where things were starting to fall apart, because I was, I was sitting here expecting stuff to come, like I was expecting things, I wonder what Fringy thinks about the South Park universe, the big difference between South Park and BoJack Horseman is that South Park doesn't rely on its comedy to set up drama, when you start using absurdist, ridiculous comedy to set up your drama, the stakes break, if anything can happen, you can't be invested in the drama, it, it, it just completely undermines it. And that's a big problem with BoJack because there are instances where funny, funny, absurd, random things are critical to the plot. Um, but yeah, the, 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 uh, we were getting up to season three and that's when it was starting to fall apart because I was expecting stuff to happen. I was expecting the drama and it just wasn't coming. Um, and so then I, I think what I was saying to Mola was we, we'll push for, for season three, episode four, the underwater episode. That's going to be the good one. That'll be the one where, you know, it'll, it'll be great. And um and we got to it and we were watching it and that is another episode that completely undermines like it it's it's riddled with issues. Um Bojack never got told that there was a button on his machine that allows him to speak to people underwater. There are pens underwater that apparently work, but then it washes all the stuff away, which is super convenient because he needed to write something down on a piece of paper that was important to basically the fundamental point of the uh the episode. Um Bojack um, only realizes at the very end of uh, the episode that he can swim underwater and it saves him from falling to his death. But in several other points in the episode, gravity works as though it's normal. 
Um, what were some of the other issues with that with that fish episode, Morlo? Um, the the, the fact that they do again it's for the joke he walks into his room and he has a bunch of normal person stuff but it's all floating around and fucking up because it's underwater when that would of course be accounted for if it was an underwater world so why it's like oh look all the chips are pouring out of the bag in the water you're like yeah why would you have opened them up in the water why wouldn't there be a place to eat why this this world is all fucking stupid uh and of course a lot of the bigger payoffs of the episode are all are all based on a lot of these really stupid things like um Will he be able to get the baby back? It's like this whole time he could have swim. He could have just he could have been swimming. There's, there's so many moments where that would have been useful. Uh, blowing up the taffy factory. He probably killed everyone inside there because it's it's an explosive, extremely sticky and hard to move taffy. Like you're fucked if you're surrounded by taffy. You can't do shit. You're just gonna die. Um. So like like the the and, and of course they try and build some jokes out of it, but then they also have emotional payoffs being that the Bojack is taking care of something and he and he finds some meaning in that. It wasn't lost on me what what the point of the episode was. Um it's just uh, incredibly poorly constructed. A lot of it is just uh fast and loose. They're just doing whatever they want to, to get at what they obviously are going for. And I just don't I think that um uh if we're applying what we usually apply to to uh narratives, especially ones that are building drama uh, that this holds up whatsoever. Well, I mean, I, I see people talking about the whole mixing comedy and drama. So the the f and this is interesting to me because I uh, I I absolutely have the view that like comedy and drama can blend together um, and work really well. Uh, I mean, obviously, because like a lot of my favorite shows are comedies that have drama moments in them. Um, I think the fundamental thing that you have to avoid is having your comedy undermine the drama. Um, so, so like a good example, right? Again, going back to The Simpsons, the reality is that Do It For Her, uh, the episode where Homer meets his mom and then she drives away and he sits under the sunset, th these are like more powerful than any moment in BoJack Horseman at all. Like, and these are only in one episode. But the fundamental thing is that there are no jokes or anything that's uh, set up to undermine any of these powerful moments, right? There's no jokes that ruin these payoffs. Like, I mean, a good example, right? When when Homer's mom is leaving, uh, she smacks his, her head on the roof and says, doll. And it's like, that's kind of funny, but it works because she's Homer's mom. So it works on multiple... So the comedy doesn't undermine it. If anything, it enhances it. Like, and then of course, you know, the, the, the drama itself is great. The drama is potent. It doesn't, it's, it works. It doesn't undermine itself in any way. It, it makes sense. It's consistent. Um... And whereas, you know, in, in Bojack Horseman, there are a lot of times where, why are you comparing Bojack to The Simpsons? Bojack is widely regarded as being one of the greatest animated shows of all time, which means that there are some people who think that it's either on yeah. par with or better than The Simpsons. That's the reason why I keep drawing the comparison, because they're both, they're both animations and they're both predominantly comedies. And if The Simpsons is doing all of the comedy better, and it's also nailing the drama, and Bojack's not doing either of those things... Like, you know, what, what is there to say about that? It's it's a show that's trying to do... Oh, yeah, and someone's just brought up Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is appreciably funnier than BoJack and more intelligently written, which is funny because you can't say that anymore, right? Oh, you got to have a high IQ to understand Rick and Morty. It's like, yep, but Rick and Morty is funny and smart. And a and lot of people have been saying that everything effort. you've been saying is a cold take. It's like, what are you talking about? Bojack is beloved. Like, every time I've ever heard anything about Bojack is that it's amazing. That it's incredibly funny and it's incredibly dramatic and it goes to dark places and explores depression in a really, like, detailed way. Which, by the way, oof, to, to that statement. Every last piece of development is, is ricketily placed on, on, on all of these events that... Um, to, to give you an example... Uh, Bojack has to deal with the idea that he essentially uh, killed Mer uh, Sarah Lynn, Sarah. and a lot of people, you know, throw that claim around, and, and and he's stressing out about it. When, if you guys remember, the moment he's like, "Hey, let's do alcohol and drugs," she punches, or she doesn't punch. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. She lifts up her calendar that has the counter for how long she's been sober, and behind it is this huge stack of alcohol, and she pulls it out, and, you know, it's all ready to go. He goes to her house, and she smashes her, like, vase, and there's a bunch of cocaine in it. She'll punch her wall, and she's like, oh, is this, is this my heroin wall? Oh, where's my heroin wall? 
it's all played for jokes about how she's absolutely, you know, running into uh, drugs headfirst. And then the show's like, but she died. And you're like, oh, oh, oh shit, we're doing this? Okay, okay, fuck, okay, yeah, this, this is getting real serious. Okay, yeah, I guess repercussions, you know, consequences, you can't just go, lol, spaghetti is falling off the water village. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay, all right. I, fuck, I don't know where we're going. Yeah. And then three seasons later, Sarah Lynn died because of you, Bojack. It's like, oh shit, we're bringing, wow, I don't know, man. And um, for a lot of people, they remember Bojack as an incredible drama that has a lot of commentary on like the, the human mind sort of thing. Um, I think they forget that 90% of the show is shit jokes. <laughs> like, it's a seriously well, yeah, I mean, huge about. And, and like, because I mean, for instance, um, in season four, we spend a very long time on Mr. Peanut Butter running for governor, and all of it is ridiculous. Um, like, apparently he can, ch he can, he can uh, challenge him to a ski race down a mountain, and whoever wins will become the governor. Uh, but Todd, through contrivance, falls through the thing first, and everybody's like, oh, you, you are the governor. It's like, oh my god. God, like, what, what is this? And then they have an episode where um they're doing fracking on Mr. Peanut Butter's house. His house falls into the ground. They spend like three days locked down there. The the uh the governor of California digs down to get them out. Um, but they all go hip hip hooray, and then the 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 cave that he tunnels down uh falls down and, and crushes his hands. And then Jessica Beale set Zach Braff on fire, and then they consume his meat, and then they prepare to do the same to Mr. Peanut Butter. And they're like, we'll never talk about this again. But then Jessica Beale tries to run for governor of California, and they're like, how do we stop? How do we prove she's insane? It's like, um, guys, she killed Zach Braff and ate her and ate him. Just say that, and it's over. The show like forgets so much of what's happening. Yeah. Like so much of what actually happens in that show, um, like to oh Todd, <laughs> well you had some strong opinions oh, about Todd. There you go. Like, like these are jokes. What the fuck? When can we <laughs> when can we throw this out in defense of TLJ? Hey, the 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 jokes you don't like, they're jokes. It was the a joke that they uh the 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 they did the the um hyperspace kamikaze. That was a joke. Well, no, it's I funny. guess a better example would be Luke threw and threw his lightsaber over his shoulder. That was to make you laugh. That was a joke. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really help, does it? Um, yeah, Todd. He, uh, Talk about Todd. Todd could be deleted from the show. I don't see what the fuck he adds. He constantly he goes on adventures so much the show gets self aware about it like fucking isn't it like season one they're already talking out but then nothing really changes. Yeah. They add that he's asexual about what is that the end of season three or four? End of season three, yeah. Um, simultaneously, he's ended his relationship with Bojack of five years of leeching off of him, and then um, he like fails to remember that detail most of the time. He, he sees the relationship as he was you know taken advantage of or partially abused by Bojack in a, in a friendship that just wasn't worthwhile. When it like blows my mind constantly. But the asexual thing, the the show has no idea what it's doing with it. Like, uh, there's a lot of these really crazy plot lines just involving just they try and draw him into an, a psychopathic adventure where he's, he builds a a roller coaster theme park that would violate every single health and safety and ip convention you could possibly think of and then he goes to jail for it and then uh, the hollywood sign piece drops on it and he escapes and he'd be a wanted felon but he, it doesn't matter we'll just forget about that even though jail plays a huge part in the finale for the show for a certain other character you see it's it's a joke one time but it's incredible, important development and, 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 and dramatics in the other. But that's fine. It's fine. You're supposed to know when to laugh and when to cry, basically. Like, that's that's how it works. Um, but, like, the, the girlfriend that he kind of has but kind of doesn't, they, they drop a few, right? Is there three in total of his girlfriends? So, there, there's the first woman, Emily, who is not asexual, who there's a thing going on there. But that's how Todd figures out that he's not. And, and also, he's, like, very mad at Bojack for having sex with her, but he's not mad at Emily, that's her name, for actually, even though she's his... Like, yeah, it, it's it's totally lopsided. And again, like, the whole show is like, oh, Bojack, you're a bad friend to Todd. It's like, you let him... He let him live in his house for five years rent-free. Like, <laughs> the show forgets that completely. Thoughts on Archer? Yeah, Archer is great, and it has better comedy and drama than Bojack. Um, I haven't seen it in a while, yeah, like, but I remember liking Archer a hell of a lot more than Bojack. Yeah um but then uh you have um yeah so then and then in the next season like uh todd meets um somebody who was also asexual 
Uh, no, that's at the end of season four. He tried to make a dating app for asexuals over the course of season four. Then at the end of season... Uh, like, yeah, uh, Bojack was not a great friend to Todd. The problem is that the show ignores that Todd wasn't also a great friend to Bojack in a yeah, lot of ways The show well. trips over itself um, to punish Bojack. It never has a level-headed yeah. take on Bojack's existence. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, so Todd makes a an asexual dating app. And then he meets somebody who's also asexual. They start dating at the end of season four. And in the first episode of season five, they're already having issues because we've skipped massive amounts of time. Big issue in this show. They skip ahead by months and don't say anything about it and pretend like nothing has changed when they skip ahead by months. You know what else we skip? I, I'm pretty sure. We go yeah. from, oh man, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter are having an argument that's a big one this time. And we skip to, well, the divorce papers are signed. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. It's... Um, uh, why? Oh, yeah. So was going to talk about how d bad Diane is. Diane is, is like, peak uh, the badness of Britta from Community. She is that character. Except not funny. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. She can't even be... At least Britta was obliterated for comedy. Like, some of the stuff she does is funny, but Diane is, like, often framed as being correct. She chastises every other character for being wrong when she's one of the worst people in the show. Well, yeah, because there was an episode where, um... Uh, it was, yeah, Diane creates an elaborate torture chamber that Bojack has to go through because, um, so there, there's a whole plot line of how Bojack went to, uh, New Mexico to meet an old friend of his called Charlotte. He got, you know, rejected by Charlotte. And so he almost initiated something with, uh, with her like 17 or 18 year old daughter. It's all legal, but it's all, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's bad, right? It's, it's still like, uh. Um, and then a few seasons later, um, Diane finds out about a tape that has to do with her, um, but it's, it's unclear, right? It's very unclear, um, what actually happened there. She has no idea whether or not Bojack's done anything illegal or whether he's done anything wrong. Um, like the, the context is missing. Instead of actually talking to him, when Bojack is defensive, which he normally is, what she decides to do is rewrite a scene of the show that he's working on um, to basically uh, force him to relive uh, that whole scenario instead of just talking to him. It's like, oh, New Mexico, she set, you know, she's 17. Kiss her, Bojack. And it's like, what? You're meant to be friends. Like, why would you talk to him? Why would you set up this elaborate torture chamber and then, like, the show treats it like, oh, see, Bojack, you're a piece of shit. And it's like, Diane has no idea what actually happened, and she potentially, like, psychologically scarred Bojack for it. And the show treats it as if it's good. It's bizarre. Um, let's not forget uh, the, the difference on fracking between Peanut Butter and uh, Diane is that oh, he, yeah. he, he is forced politically to be pro-fracking, <laughs> he guesses. She's very anti-fracking, and so it gets into the news that the wife of the go potential governor is anti-fracking while he's pro-fracking. She puts out an article about how bad fracking is and it's causing trouble and he he condemns it for it. He's like, you, you fucking, you're screwing up my whole campaign. And then she says, I've actually written an article about how bad you are. Like, an article all about how shit Mr. Peanut Butter is. And she's about to publish it. And he fucking, it's one of the first, one of the three times in the entire show where he's angry. Which, by the way, would have been nice to have explored more of his character, but never mind. Yeah. Um, and he's like, you fuck, you, you can't do this. And then she hits publish, and then they hate fuck. And that's the end of the episode. And when I was watching <laughs> with Fringy... And they never address the fact, yeah. When I was watching with Fringy, I was like, okay, weird, but I guess I can understand a hate fuck. Like, uh, alright, but man, like, this is going to destroy his chances as governor. And I remember you, you being like, well, they don't, that article doesn't come up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what do you mean the article doesn't come up? It's like, the, the whole cause of the huge drama between them is this article that apparently just dresses him down as this horrible person. It doesn't come up. It's gone, the next episode. It's the, the show used it for one thing and then forgot it existed. I was just like, wow. Fuck me for being invested in what's actually happening, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those things of, this should be significant, but the show forgets that it is. <laughs> Another thing I, I guess we should bring up is... Um, the p the con so you, you have the drama of Hollyhock abandoning Bojack. You'd be like, wow, that's a pretty big dramatic payoff. You get a lot of feels from that, and it, and it fuels his his drug and an alcohol rampage that almost leads to his death. You're like, okay, that's big stuff. What is it based on? You're like, well, the relationship was damaged, um, not broken. It's broken by one event. It's damaged by another event. We'll go with the damaged one first. You have Bojack 
in an attempt to reconnect with uh, Charlotte, ends up taking her daughter to prom. Um, but prom isn't working out, so he takes her and a couple of friends to drink a lot of alcohol. And unfortunately, one of the four of them get, like, way too, too, too drunk and have to yeah. go to hospital with her boyfriend. Bojack and Charlotte's daughter ditch them. This never, the, the, the boyfriend, nobody talked about this. It never made it to the press, even though it's a huge story, and he went to a hospital. This, it very likely could have, but fine, I'll believe it. It all stayed under the carpet, all right? Now, this guy, he's, uh, he would have recovered from that situation, and uh, years, years later, Holly Hawk is just at a party, and she's struggling with the idea of drinking because of what she's seen in her father, which, which I think is pretty strong. It's like, yeah, that's good stuff. She's, she's having a little bit of PTSD about, like, how, oh, God, if she drinks something, she could become like him. It's like, okay, I'm following. And this guy turns up, and he's like, hey, I can help out. Say your name, uh, like count to a certain number, and you'll recover. And she's like, okay, good. And they eventually, they hit it off. They go up to her place. They talk about their experiences with alcohol. Turns out, this is the guy that Bojack abandoned after having given alcohol to, they are minors at that point, right? At the first, the first story that this guy tells Hollyhock is about how Bojack so, what are the odds what are that the, somebody the, who was wronged by Bojack yeah. bumped into Bojack's sister in New York at one party, and the first story that he tells her is about how Bojack is a bad person? It's absurd. It's insane. This is the drama. This is the drama of the show. It kicks off the last season. Well, I was <laughs> going to say, so that's that's what damages um, their relationship. Someone said, nope, you didn't pay attention. You're right. They they justified how those two happened to meet up completely. It wasn't just by blind fucking luck. <laughs> it, was, it happened completely with cause and effect. So anyway, that's what damages their relationship. But how is it that it gets broken? Well, uh, Bojack goes for a, an interview about what he's done in his past, and it goes really well. And he's so ego-driven on it that he wants to do another one. And despite Princess Carolyn being a very intelligent character, she just goes, uh, fuck it, yeah, I guess you can do it. She'll quickly abandon him after this interview goes to shit. I was watching it with Fringy, I was like, this interview will go to shit. I'm curious how, but yeah. it will go to shit. They ask him a bunch of very personal questions. Questions that he was like, how the hell do you even know this information? They got it from his ex, um, what, what, would, what would you call him? The, the guy who leads the, uh, like, oh, Alcoholics Anonymous the, yeah, sort of the place? Guy, the guy who was the alcoholic, Alcoholics uh, anom Anonymous who are... Right, well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I, 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 this, is, this is where I'm going with it, right? So they got it from him, and you're like, whoa, why would he give up sensitive information? It's like, well, because he's drunk. Why is he drunk when he's the leader of, like, an anti-drunk group? Well, because Bojack got him drunk. And you're like, Bojack got him drunk? How did Bojack get him drunk? Well, because Bojack had smuggled in a bottle of vodka as a sort of... You, you could maybe call it a safety blanket of sorts. So how did Bojack's bottle of vodka get to this guy? That sounds like a very difficult thing to write. It's like, well, um, Bojack accidentally dropped it in such a way that it bounced into a selection of bottles of water that were being delivered to this place, and that guy, before Bojack could run down the stairs and grab it, picked up I that very bottle hole, and drank the entire thing without realizing it was vodka. That's, so do you get what I'm saying, right? The big payoff, you follow exactly down to where it's all built, and it's on this broken-as-fuck narrative. <laughs> it's absolute yeah. shit. And that, that's kind of like... And then again, you know, um, <clears throat> talk about undermining jokes for comedy. I saw somebody mention the funeral episode, right? So, like, the funeral episode is... It's, so Bojack's mum dies, and we haven't seen her since season four. Like, season four, episode 11, we don't see her again until episode six when she's dead. Um, and the whole episode is a big eulogy that Bojack is giving. And, you know, it's another one of those, this could have been a good episode, but, um, but we missed, we missed, why didn't we get more scenes with the mum for starters? I like, then, wait, like, someone just said, he's an alcoholic, of course he realized it was vodka, as if that's the problem out of all of what I just mentioned. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, um, but, um, but yeah, Bojack's doing his eulogy, he does the whole thing. Um, and then he goes over to the coffin and opens it and realizes it's not his mum. And he looks up and nobody he recognizes is there. It's a bunch of chameleons. So he gave this whole eulogy in front of a crowd. Like he was in the wrong building. And it's meant to be a funny joke. But it's like, wow, good job. You've undermined everything that you've just done there. Um, like, w would the scene have not worked better if it was actually the real place and it was actually his mum in the coffin? Like, surely that would have been better. How could it have not been better? 
especially in reference to all of the stuff that he was talking <laughs> about in that uh, episode. Um, the impromptu cancellation may have led to so much rust, nonsense, and contrivance. Nah, season five is the worst season, and that was before the show got you know like its last season that they that they got the opportunity to work on. The Molly, show was broken before the end. Molly, you said like, that was the sure. problem. No, the problem is accidentally dropping this bottle in such a way that it lands in the selection of bottles of the ones that are being Applauded. delivered to yeah. this guy, and he grabs the right one, and then he drinks it. That's the main problem. Yeah. It's fucking absurd. And it, and as much as you might be like, hey, absurdist comedy, it's like, what what is, what is absurdist drama where all of these stakes are built on absolutely insane contrived events so that we're just supposed to be like, hey, what if Bojack's ancient Egyptian cousin Ubatu wakes up from his crypt and steals his girlfriend? Isn't that dramatic? I'd be like, uh, I, I, uh, I guess so. Yeah. I guess that is dramatic. And you're like, Moeller's supposed to be funny! And I'm like, oh. Fuck, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I didn't get it. I guess. Well, yeah, that that's and and that's that's the thing is um if if the com you know if the comedy's not working in this show, which it isn't, at least it wasn't when we were rewatching it. Um, there's not a lot left. Like, there's very little content, and the show wastes a lot of its time as well. There are so many episodes that could have stood to be cut. I like that picture. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um. There are so many episodes that could have stood to be cut out, um, episodes that waste a lot of time, and it's all disappointing because what you have in this show, with some amendments and um, and uh, with you know trying to some tweaks, you have potentially a fantastic show. Like again, the view from halfway down is a good episode on mm -hmm. its own. Um, it's it's a good episode on its own, and it's almost an episode that you could enjoy even without having watched the whole show. It's, it's wonderfully um, done in that it's a nice little dream sequence that I could believe he's having with himself until you realize a lot of the stuff they're saying subtextually matches events in his life. A lot of the visuals are telling you a lot about what's happening, and um, mm -hmm. it all becomes very clear right toward the end that uh, what, it, what it all represents, what it all means, and how it's all a big yeah. sort of goodbye to... Uh, to Bojack, and I think it would have been a way better season finale than what we got. The season finale was balls. Yeah, the season finale is pretty terrible. If it had just ended there, Bojack dies, and that's just the end. It's a trick, you know, It's a, that is the end. It's just a surprise finale. I think it probably would have been better. And imagine how great that episode would have been if the rest of the show was as good as that episode. Like, it would have been one of the best episodes of television, period. But, um, but it's not. It's a fix to a show. It's a... Yeah, it's a fix to a show that isn't nearly as good. Um, <laughs> and that is hot all. take number two. <laughs> yeah, that's the hot take on BoJack. I thought it was good and it's not. It's it's bad. It's really bad. Well, mm. I saw someone say, like, oh, your hot take is this, that it's overrated. I was like, uh, I guess you could say that. Uh, Jay actually put a... Um, well, Jay put a poll out asking, BoJack Horseman, the show is good or bad? Good was 90%, bad was 10%. Um, I would say that is incredibly overrated because it's absolutely a bad show. This is not what we want to be saying is even close to par. This is shit. Um, and I find it kind of embarrassing like to watch sometimes that people wrote it. Uh, that's my hot take. <laughs> it, 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 it does. It definitely, I feel like it's another one of those shows where there is no way that you could ever misinterpret anything to do with it. And the show benefits from that fact. The fact that you could never misunderstand what the show is about and what points it's trying to make, it, it seems to just help to, to, to have a show that does that where there is no subtext, it's all text, it's all obvious, and you can never miss the point. That seems to be the way to do it. <laughs> also, someone said, like, what is, what is a show you guys like? Breaking Bad, go watch it. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, to go wrong with it. Um, I mean, obviously, I like shows. Why would I be watching TV if I hated everything? Well, <laughs> like, no, I, I, I don't I think that's what they Jack. meant. They were just like, hey, yeah. what are shows that are good then? And it's like, there's a lot of okay. good shows out there. There's a lot of shows that are good in spite of their flaws. It's just there's a lot of shows that are really, really overall shit. And uh, yeah, I just I, I thought Bojack Horseman was shit. I'm sorry, okay? Are you happy did, uh, now? The, the Clone Wars one go over. <laughs> Hmm. The boy season one, somebody mentioned. <laughs> yeah, the boy, the boy season. One. Well, so I was gonna say, yeah. um, hey, Metal Rags, Theo, how you guys doing? Are you okay? 
I'm doing all right. Yeah. Doing yeah. okay. I I hadn't seen Bojack. I just saw that one episode that was terrible. So I didn't have really much to contribute to the discussion of the whole uh, season as a whole. I had I hadn't seen like a lot of. I hadn't seen a lot of bits and bobs scattered across, well, you know, all I would hope, I would hope what people can take away from this is that Fring and I went through every single episode. We talked through everything about it structurally and from a comedic and dramatic standpoint. You can tell with the amount of references we've we've just gone through that we definitely know at least somewhat what we're talking about. May have screwed up some places, but that's it's a hot take. It's it's a take. It's not you're not going to get much more than this at all. Like if someone's looking for a debate on the Clone Wars or um uh, uh, Bojack, it's it's going to be unlikely because ultimately, like, I'm going to forget a shit ton of this show really soon because, like, it's it's just not something that got to me on on yeah. the heartisms. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know because I know that a lot of you recommend Bojack Horseman and like, so you're going to be sad to he hear about this. But hopefully, you've not only got my response as well as Fringy's and a few other things here and there, but the reasoning. Um, so you could take away from it what you will. It's not supposed to make you all sad, is my point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so are we are we talking about the the? the well, third one? the plan was third to one get onto the next video. Now, I just um, I'm worried that everybody's possibly sleepy or not. I don't know. Well, what is uh, what's our next video? It's Patrick Willems. What do we want from a Star Wars movie part two? It's 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 the oh. what he missed oh. from this one. <laughs> oh, so he did do a part two. Oh, I thought he didn't do one. How interesting! Did is his part two pre or post the rise? This of Skywalker? is post Rise of Skywalker. Ooh, I'm curious. I want to know what he has to say. How long is yeah. it? Is he going oh, to be it's, able to explain himself? Um, it's uh, it's thirty minutes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ah, uh, fuck. I I am. I legitimately really do want to. This video is... I'm very curious about this video. Um, well, well, how about we could maybe do a... I mean, I know this is unconventional, but, like, oh. maybe do an extra EFAP this month, yeah. as in the oh. second of this one, but it would be counted as a second episode, being the... Uh, I don't know if I should say that we could move the third hot take to another episode along with the second part of his video... Because obviously, if we were to attack, we've got some super chats to catch up on, as well as all the ones that have come in today. And by the time we get through all of them, it's probably going to lead us to the normal completion uh, time for the stream. So we've got enough to come back to for a uh, theoretical other episode. And then, of course, we can carry on with our usual programming um, on on every Saturday. We we could just get this other other half of this done. I know everyone wants hot take yeah. number three. Teaser. <laughs> <laughs> Just, let, just let me let me go it. for a for a P first and then Okay. Well um <laughs> mm. I mean the thing is with hot take number three is that I kind of I want one more week before I deliver hot take number yeah. three. And I think the Ooh. fact that I've just said that should give away exactly what the hot take is. <laughs> 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 um so I suppose we can give you the taster of Hot Take 3, and then we'll deliver the full Hot Take 3 another time, and then we'll go to Super Chats, because uh, okay. I, yeah. I don't know how else Always to make this work. More. Once Metal's come back from his pee, and I'll just I'll drop it like an anvil, it's cool. <laughs> I guess he's pee, and I might as well pee too. Mm -hmm. uh, pee, how, how was your, because uh, I missed it, the conversation about uh, the... Clone Wars. It was mainly Theo. Every, people were either yeah, upset okay. or not. It was a combo in chat. I saw 50 50, okay. not that with upset, but yeah, it was mostly just me ranting. <laughs> it was, well, it was similar to, to for you with, with Bojack. And to be honest with you, keep an eye on chat. I'm not actually sure uh, who, which one was taken worse. I can't tell you. I think mm. it might have been Clone Wars. They seemed angrier about Clone it Wars. Was Clone Wars? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, I think what I noticed was that um the the more you rattle <laughs> off the list of issues with Bojack, the the harder it becomes to ignore those problems. I did notice the chat sort of turn from, I guess like close to fifty fifty to as things mellowed down. I was like, yeah, but shut up though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I am. Uh... All right. All right. I'm gonna. Like I yeah. said, we'll we'll talk about it a little. I don't expect us to do a lot of it because there's still more for us to discover and refine before we can we can do it. And I I have plans in relation to it anyway. But hot take number three is as as chat have mostly guessed. 
The Boys season two is terrible. Absolute yeah, it's shit. Really bad. Fucking it's, garbage. It's astronomically bad. <laughs> Anybody who says it's great or good, they m might want to <laughs> rewatch it or something. I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's so I, I guess um is a so for first season, <clears throat> first season we we definitely liked the first season. Probably say it. I'd say five out of ten ish. Is that around the range we'd give the first season? Uh, we I think we went with five, yeah. Yeah, I think it's five. Definitely some issues, uh, but there's some stuff that they do uh, pretty well. Um, interesting characters, interesting world. There's a lot of stuff that we really liked and a lot of stuff that we were super interested in seeing how it would play out and develop. But there's definitely some big issues with um, season one. So we went into season two really, you know, Excited. fingers crossed, hoping that if anything else, hopefully it'll at least carry on, you know, as good as season oh, one. To clarify, I think the wait, wait, wait. was to clarify for Rags because some people are taking it the wrong way. Remember what five means to EFAP. It's not yeah. the five of the Average. world. Yeah, five. five is totally in the middle. Five is in the in middle. It, it totally average, uh, objectively and structurally speaking. Uh, is mediocre just totally average um it's got it's got some things it does well it's got problems it to have, think of it the the middle it's a show that's very much carried by its concept like i like the boys season one i like mm -hmm. it a lot but uh but yeah yeah it has problems. so season two uh we're like legitimately at batwoman levels <laughs> uh ain't gonna lie it's uh, uh it's a fucking being, disaster uh not being hyperbolic here um we're at we, we're at batwoman levels we had for, trouble with episode one once episode two had finished we were done two already yeah <laughs> once, once we finished yeah. episode three we're at farcical levels we couldn't even like watch it without essentially laughing and making fun of it like we do with batwoman yeah it is unfortunately turned into that kind of show for us um yeah. at this point but that's because it that's the show apparently it wants to be now. So mm -hmm. uh, incredibly disappointed in it. Um, it. It's not enjoyable bad like Batwoman is. <laughs> like some people were saying it's not a hard take now. We'll chat like, no! I <laughs> <laughs> um, for you in chat because I keep seeing this goddamn sentiment. When you agree with a take, you won't see it as hot. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Hot take hot take is obviously in reference to the overall consensus. It's it's a hot yeah, take to like say the people... boys, Bojack, and the Clone Wars are awful. Okay. These are yeah. absolutely hot takes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. Mm -hmm. Um as for as for the justification for all of this, we need episode ten before yeah. everything can be episode concrete. Eight, you mean? Uh oh yeah. sorry, yeah, episode eight. Um Everything is in the air a little right. Well, not everything is in the air. Lots of things are in the air, and it really. I don't think they can fix a lot of it. Yeah. No, I, I, I think I they're think. gonna fuck up episode eight for sure. But um, <laughs> yeah. there's a couple of criticisms that can't come out until we have the information of uh, the finale. But th this is why it's a little bit of a, a stunted take until we're able to. And so I was thinking that um, literally when the episode releases, uh, we'll we'll try and watch it as the team that we are, which is uh, Metal Rags, myself, and Fringy. And then we can do a stream, and we can go through, like Mandalorian, the episodes, and talk about the biggest structural issues, and then talk about the characters, and then talk about how we're very sad because the boys was really fucking cool, and they fucked it up in season two completely. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much yes, nothing I... is working. I would say that uh, I would say that all of the characters, every single one, has uh, had something that's kind of obliterated them. Homelander is certainly not as cool as he used to be. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And he was like my favorite character in the show. Yeah, I had um, a really hard time actually just catching up to episode seven by today, and it was like five days. <laughs> the, I, was like, I, I I saw that somebody mentioned the whole woke stuff. It's like the show was bad before they pulled the the rug out on that thing. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, now well, they they ain't even trying. Yeah, to I don't how shockingly overt uh, in one side it, it is. Uh, I don't. We are in a war for our shit. culture. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> like, I, it's gone. It's gone a little hard to ignore what the uh, yeah. the main point they're trying to make with the political satire is. Like it's it's um it's actually awkward at this point. You're like trying I, to look past yeah. it. Like, can I see the show? You can't. It's basically a political show now. Mm -hmm. Like, last episode, I think it was seven. Seven was so cringy. Like, they yeah, said, yeah. Oh, oh, times. oh man. They, the fact they that were... it started with Fat Neil getting radicalized. <laughs> <laughs> 
I stopped this episode like multiple times. I was like, okay, let me just take a breather. <laughs> just refill my water. It's, just, it's gonna be fine. You always did it. It's like, I'm the cock. No, you're the cock. It's like, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's no, really they, bad. They really um, went far with those porn jokes, just in case you guys weren't laughing already. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, oh, um, I would describe dwarf, season well. two uh, a lot of different ways, but juvenile would be among the adjectives mm -hmm. that I would assign to it. Um, I think so. Yeah, it is yeah, so much well, more. Like it yeah. almost feels gratuitous at this point. Um, gr yeah, it does seem gratuitous. It's really trying to be violent and edgy. Um, I I don't, and this is not something I think I've ever said about anything else. But like the gore is actively putting me off it, not because of the gore mm -hmm. itself, but because it feels like they're really just trying to. You well, we, I get we could save it for our big discussion. Someone yeah. someone in chat just said, check the Amazon X-ray scene when Homelander is watching Taxi Driver. They call it white male rage. What? Ew. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, I'm curious about how the X-ray works on uh, Amazon, but um, yeah, I, there's there's so much to go over, and uh, yeah, we 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 make we've been making notes. Uh, it was we watched episode one with the intention of enjoying the show, and I remember there was a couple <laughs> things where we'd be like, "Huh, it's kind of weird," the blah blah blah, but whatever, we're enjoying the show. Cool. By the time you hit episode two, we're like, okay, all right, this is getting a bit silly now. Like, why why the fuck this 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 this. And then episode three, once the deep was knocked out by by falling off a whale, I was like, okay. <laughs> and then Homelander getting beaten by the telekinetic guy, uh, and Stormfront just killing a bunch of black people. <laughs> like, and apparently they could cover that up. Yeah. Fifty. Oh, uh, we've, we've already got it. Ah, uh, these guys are missing the points. Like, yes, we are. <laughs> yes, yeah. we are. Oh yeah, we're, we're definitely missing the point. It's a here's the thing: if if you point out the issues of a show or a movie that are plot and character related and we're missing the point <clears throat> why are you making this show well the i mean deep plot line is superfluous yep so is most of the plot they have line. fucking Maybe wasted their Maeve. time with the deep yeah. holy shit they've been treading well, water I remember how i said after season one i said i was super interested in what this you know what they were going to do with the deep and what they were setting up for and now i'm just like it yeah, he's just it is i cult. just feel like That's it's it. wasted screen time um also some people have mentioned more interesting cynic snacks is not a fan of it yeah i've, I've heard about that and they were like get talk to jay logboat about it. it's like uh, <laughs> we, we already did <laughs> <laughs> after after episode seven aired and i saw her tweets so i was like oh we gotta chat we gotta talk about this and uh yeah we were just ranting to each other about how shit uh season two has been and how disappointing it is. And of course, everyone's going to want to hear the, the rationale, and uh, we shall provide it. This is this is going to be slight blue balls, but just wait a week's time, and you'll get everything yeah, you want. Yeah, we need right? more answers. Yeah, all uh, right. all those notes go to waste. Yeah, don't do not no, worry. All of this stuff, we have a lot to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. If if you disagree with us, even if you do so vehemently, at least uh, keep it in mind. But there is a lot of stuff to go through. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. And it will be it will be explored. Well, I mean, we'll have a lot. To talk I mean, about. it'll because, be like you said, it's you think it's Batwoman levels. I'm not sure if I'm there yet, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty low. That's for sure. Yeah, and I think the uh, the show yeah. really floats on having been banking on the staleness of superhero content, being that like yeah. we're tired of seeing good person struggle. And then become a better person, and then they team up and they defeat a big CGI monster. It's like boring. It's like, but, what if the... you know what is also boring is when all of the superheroes are comically evil. Yeah, I, I, we can get into it. <laughs> but, yeah. well, well, the reason I was pointing that out was just I understand what the appeal is. It fucking appealed to me like crazy. Uh, I just don't, yeah. it's not working anymore. Like, it's not enough yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's no longer a super interesting premise that I want to see more of, despite its flaws. It is just, it's just a big ball of flaws. Like there's, yeah. there's nothing good about it anymore. <laughs> they did it again. Them being cartoonishly evil. That's the point. It's like fucking hell, chat. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. Okay. <laughs> no, no, the point is that it, this show's bad. Well, hmm. All right. Then well... we, oh, then we agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah there, there's you know how um 
Like, you, you know how you could say... I mean, like, could you... The point is that it's... It, I suppose we'll go into it into more detail, but when everything is like that, but the world's trying to operate seriously, it doesn't work, you know? Well, it's just an odds game, right? It is odd that five out of, like, seven of the, the people who are in the seven are psychopaths. That's odd. There's no getting around. Well, yeah, a lot of them don't seem to just uh, operate like humans a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Instead, yeah, they have to be representations of, hey, what if superheroes weren't good people? And you're like, I get it. I really get it. It would have been cool, though, if this was like built from a structural core level and uh, it was more subtle. Like, fuck, I would, I would easily <laughs> go for a uh, racist superhero, but delivered in a subtle way instead of, fuck you, black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. it's boring and it's dull and it's uninspired and it's it's lazy. Dude, the scene where she's killing the black guy and he says, I thought you were a good guy. <laughs> Something like that. He's like, I thought you were a superhero. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's really, really, really lame show. Um, I, 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 I can, I can believe. Like, I could believe in season one, with all of its flaws, that this was still, like, a real world that could operate and hold together and had rules and everything, but that's just gone. I, I don't believe in this world anymore. I don't believe in this world anymore. For the same reasons I don't believe in the Batwoman world, because it's just absurd all the time, and nothing makes sense. Everyone's fucking stupid, too. Yeah, everyone is an idiot in this show. Everyone is an idiot, or they're a terrible, horrible person. One of my uh, favorite things in this show is how so many scenes of people blackmailing each other, but they have no leverage. It's, just, it's a <laughs> really <laughs> weird pattern that we can get into. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell everybody about Popclaw, and then you'll be in trouble. And then she leaks. <laughs> Dude, on rewatch, I realized something because that was stupid enough when we were talking about it. But um, it doesn't make any. It makes even less sense because she proves with with her, I don't know, knowledge about uh, Popclaw that someone may have killed her. Someone. If you remember, Popclaw was like not even in her place or A Train's place. It's like, what exactly do you have? Like, oh. Sonic. The, the, she was hit with something. I shouldn't get into this now. We should get into it another time. It's why would a... she? And, and the fact that she was allowed to look at the autopsy report. Like, yeah, there's, why there's... would they let you see that? There's a lot of stupid shit. Like I said. But once we get episode eight, we'll be able to, um, you know, go through it all with you guys. Explain ourselves even more. Th I like that it, it ramped. It went from Theo's disparate thoughts upon having watched all the shows and a bit of time on would to Bojack where Fringy passionately stands on his pedestal explaining to the to the people that <laughs> they have been misled <laughs> and then like me yeah. jumping in and filling it in and stuff it's like with with the boys though you're gonna get a full season breakdown it's gonna happen <laughs> Someone in, in the YouTube chat asked me, what is your hot take? And I was like, that's, that's, that's also my hot take. Yeah. Your, oh, hot take so I, should, I guess we should have made it clear. So the Clone Wars is Theo's hot take, because none of us have seen it as well. Um, then the boy's hot take is all of us except Theo, I guess. Theo's seen two episodes, is it? I'm, I'm like, I think four episodes in. Uh, I know it's a step down, but... I'm just interested to hear what you guys have to say further. Mm. And then Bojack is me and Fringy. Um, and Among Us is Rags. <laughs> Someone's asking about that. I just, yeah, I just don't like it. My, it I, I do. I haven't played a lot of it. It just isn't my thing. It doesn't appeal to me really. Um, but I see why people really like it. I don't have anything against it. And I, th I think that when we play it for a bit of EFAP gaming, you'll probably you'll have fun. It's just not going to be. Yeah, I'll have fun. I yeah. I just think that Trouble in Terrorist Town has spoiled me because I probably have hundreds of hours in that, and I think this is just a step down in pretty much every way. And I like. Wait, it what are you talking about? I'm I'm confused now. What? Among what Us. Uh, and oh, Trouble yeah, okay. Terrorist Town. Rag said it's not very good. What well, Among Us? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's I a hot take. <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, chat, yeah, I, I am picky with games. Um, I'm more picky with games than I am with shows because games require me to play Interact. them. They require my input. Um, if I'm bored for a show, it still progresses exactly the same as if I was interested in it, like time-wise and pr progress-wise. A game, um, like, that's kind of it, funny, it is actually. way harder to play a game that you don't like than watch a show you don't like. Mm -hmm. 
I would say that the ratio of good games, though, is a lot higher than a good... Like, I feel like there are more good games than there are good in any other medium. I think I'd probably agree. Yeah, probably. I just think that I, I feel like the bar for games has the fact that it has to be playable almost in and of itself sets the <laughs> bar really high. It yeah, has it, to work. I, I think so, yeah. And I also even, think that I feel like people are very forgiving time. of shows. It just seems that way. Uh, of shows, definitely. I don't, I don't even think movies get the same amount of... Uh, you know, people watch us anyway. watch Batwoman and they're like, man, Batwoman, this obscure and insane CW show that has writing so bad you don't even know how it was made and it's like guys a lot of the stuff that's wrong with Batwoman is present in a lot of stuff yeah um, mm -hmm. Batwoman just is that bad consistently and high frequency I guess is what I would say it's just I like... guess it's um there's a lot of mediocre because you know like you, you have oh wow I, it's funny I always go to Bones I don't even know if Bones is bad <laughs> or like mediocre I haven't seen Bones I just because of Angel, I always use Bones <laughs> as an example. But, like, Bones is is standard, like, you know, NCIS, Bones, that's, like, what TV mostly is. Just sort of okay middling stuff. Um, and then, but funnily enough, a lot of the things that are regarded very positively are the ones that don't hold up so well. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um... Maybe Bones is good. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not giving it enough credit. Are we talking about we're talking about a show not DeForest Kelly? Uh no, bo bones like the you know, the procedural. Crash oh, he's, talk about he's Crash Four for an hour. He's doing a joke. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> ah, it's alright. It's okay. Um, I, I uh I'm really impressed with Crash Four. Um it's I beat it last night. There um, we go. A happy take. <laughs> yeah, no well, yeah, I mean I think it's great. I'm I'm really impressed they uh They've done better than uh, I think anybody could have expected them to. Um, it's got tons of content, uh, really precise, fun, challenging platforming, um, really great art style. I think this game looks fantastic. Um, God, like I, I feel like I want to keep playing it though because uh, before I like really try and break it down, I'm just doing all the gem hunting now. But talk about replayability, like. This game has massive amounts of replayability, more so than like any other Crash game, and more so than the vast majority of games in general. The fact that there's like all of these different configurations for how you can get gems, you know, whether or not you beat the level only dying three times, um, whether or not you find hidden gems, whether or not you are uh, you um, complete certain challenges, like it's really good stuff. And you know what? Like we got, we got that. We got. Hopefully, Blind Man is going to be good. Hopefully, oh, Amnesia, hopefully. Amnesia yeah. Rebirth. We got. We got Sonic Heroes been playing. You know that's good, right? I actually don't know. Yeah, I've been <laughs> playing games and liking it. So, yeah, you know, it's not. It's not game. all. Everything sucks on the EFAP podcast, guys. It's gonna, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's, yeah, it's like funny, my, like. Oh, yeah, there's still joy in the world. Like, we're, we're not just... <laughs> we're, we're like, we're, when we're not on EFAP, it's not like we're all sitting miserably well, alone in our we, we houses often... with the lights turned off and us just <laughs> frowning at our screens as we yeah, play shitty that. games and watch shitty <laughs> shows. <laughs> <laughs> we often end up uh, just watching shit we love as well. That we're just like, yeah. hey. Because um, I, I can't remember if we've mentioned it to, to the EFAP people, but we all... As a six man, if if Jay was still here, uh, watched all of Hill House. Yeah, that was fun. Yep, we were all gushing, really fun. gushing nice. over the first six episodes. It was, oh, yeah. it was wonderful. Stellar. It made me erect. See, some of the best <laughs> TV I've ever seen. It's so good. Mm -hmm. it's so, it is so good. Really, it's, it really is. Fantastic. It's nice to be reminded and given that assurance that really really good tv it's it exists it's it can out still there guys <laughs> well i mean i i guess that's like what i would always you know the whole thing of like oh you had everything it's like i don't know man it's a hate stuff you have to know what you like you know yeah. what i mean like you can't have a reference for hate if you are if you don't like something you know what so and yeah that's that's probably all i would say about that yeah and, and i do want to say like we went into bojack and the boys with the best of hope Oh, like, I definitely did. I, I recommended it to you because I thought the show was great. <laughs> yeah, like, we didn't... Like, of course I wanted it to be this, good. This, this idea that it's like, oh, you're just going into hate stuff. It's like, no, nah, we didn't... That's why there's no notes for BoJack, because I was looking to be like, hey, Fringy, show me a show that's awesome, sweet. Mm-hmm. And I was like, um... 
uh, funnily enough, a friend I was gonna visit tomorrow, and he <laughs> he wanted me to watch Project Horseman. Gonna watch it tomorrow again. I was like, <laughs> dude, just show him show him this part of the podcast. See what he says. Just tell him you're allergic. You're allergic. <laughs> Motor to horses? Yes. I mean, yeah, um... I remember that, I was like, oh, that's gonna be funny. <laughs> I know that, uh, the next thing on the watch list, hopefully, that we'll watch is The Wire, because, uh, I haven't seen it, Mola hasn't seen it, and I'm, I imagine that show. Yeah, really it's considered, good. like, box set one of the all-time yeah. greats for TV, so... Yeah. Well, it's like one of you pregenitors for the Golden Age, right? That's Sopranos, which I also haven't watched. Um, hey, Buffy, Buffy's probably, in that selection, as far as I know. Um, I, I guess Buffy would be in that selection. It's, I feel like Buffy probably doesn't get included, though, because, like... People don't those, take it seriously. You know, <laughs> well, it's, it's the idea that The Wire and The Sopranos are like the, the shows that, you know, like 10 episodes or 12 episodes a season. Yeah. Um, cut to black, mid, you know, mid-sentence. And it's funny, right, because these have become tropes, but they weren't tropes when these shows were around. I, I know that The Wire doesn't do the cut to black thing, but, um... But it, it's the, you know, it's it's really easy to trace uh, where stuff like Breaking Bad comes from, if you get what I mean. Like, The Wire and, and The Sopranos and stuff. Um, I do own the box set of The Wire. I don't know why I didn't finish it. I think, um, yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I so, guess... Um... So, so Ragged and Mahler still haven't explained why this game is bad. What, what about? Sonic Heroes? Sonic Heroes? <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking waste. About Sonic Heroes. Are you kidding me? This I've game is goofy Heroes. as hell. I don't care if it's good or bad. <laughs> like whatever. I don't know anything about Sonic Heroes? Listen, what? don't take my commentary of this game while I'm trying to read out things and talk to co-hosts, guests about stuff <laughs> as like my breakdown of whether or not it's well-made gameplay-wise. I've just... got to imagine Sonic mm. Heroes is bad because <laughs> most 3D Sonic games are. Is that a hot take? Maybe oh, it boy. is. Maybe that's the true <laughs> hot take. So. Depends who you ask. Well, it, it, yeah, it does depend who you ask. I think a lot of people get upset when you say that. I'm sorry, man, but like you compare Sonic 2 to basically... Uh, like, Sonic Unleashed has some good sections. That's all I would say about Sonic that's Heroes. That's the one where uh, you're the werehog, right? Yeah, but the werehog sections are the crap parts. The good parts Who'd are when you're running it? really fast. Yeah, I remember uh... when I first played Sonic Unleashed, I was like, Oh, I'm having fun! And then, <laughs> and then you start playing as the werehog. And it, it yeah, I remember, I remember that. A friend of mine, there. super into Sonic games, was was just like, Sonic Generation is fucking amazing, right up until the werehog shit starts happening. It was like, oh. I remember the demo. He was uh, he was over the moon with just that one level. Got it. Yeah, it's a really fun level. Um, but then the Werehog stuff comes along, and it just I, I I don't know. I feel like Sonic and three because Sonic Generations I really like. I yeah, saw I like someone that. say Sonic Adventure Two is is not terrible. I feel like Sonic Adventure Two is the real edgy one. I haven't played Sonic Adventure Two, but I I just get the impression that it's not good. Like I'm sorry, that's just the impression I get. That's Sonic, one that uh... is quite sacred with the Sonic people, so you yeah, have to be careful I've, with I've that. Yeah, I've heard that. Well, I haven't played it, so again, I I just get the impression that it's not as good as everybody says. Uh, maybe it is though. It's probably like Return of the Jedi to Star Wars. It's like you don't you don't go around saying that one's bad, even though it's got loads of flaws in it. <laughs> At least that's how I understand it to be. I haven't played it. Well, I guess it's the whole thing of our Sonic Adventure 2 is like dream car. Shadow the Hedgehog is the edgy one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Shadow the <laughs> fucking Hedgehog. He is that... become the poster child for edgy Are you characters. Oh, edgy adolescent mean. characters. Yeah. That game reinvented Edge. The fact that he has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, You're just, Sonic you're just <laughs> jealous because he's cool. I remember as a kid, I think I enjoyed that game. Um, but it's not good. Um, so yeah, uh, we gotta catch up on what we missed in the Super Chat catch-up ones, Rags. It shouldn't take too long, and then we'll be on to this episode's ones, and, uh... Yeah, if, sure. Uh, for however long we can... Oh, and uh, in case I, I figured it was covered, but uh, I said Jay had like barely any sleep. I think I think you went to sleep. <laughs> that's that's what happened. Uh, we will... Yeah, he kicked himself. Uh, but hopefully Jay will be up for the uh, the EFAP gaming when we do some Among Us uh, slash TKO slash... Oh yeah, Jackbox Party Pack 7's happening, guys, so...
Ooh. Who knows? All kinds of effects. Spooktober, all the events. Everything. Yeah. Get excited. Rank stream. That's Monday, right? Yes. Yeah, we're doing a Drankenheimers and possible EFAP gaming on Monday. It, I guess it depends on who we can wrangle. Yeah. Um, should be some fun. So we got we got plenty to come, lads. Also, we did record an EFAP movies yesterday uh, with YMS. I guess I'll leave I'll leave the movie that we did to be a mystery for now. Uh, yeah. It'll be funny. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah. I, I barely even remember that movie we watched it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> when I was going to sleep last night, I was just like, what the hell even was that movie? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. As long as, like, as long as you remember laughing at it, that's the important thing. <laughs> you know there's people out there, and Who that's their it? favorite movie. Yeah. <laughs> there's some imagine? kid out there who watched it when they were super young. They were like, oh my god, it was such a cool movie. Yeah. <laughs> The um, name of the directors. Yeah, I know. Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're giving it away. Wow, Rags. Oh, spoilers. I don't think I don't think anyone will fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> this one guy in chat was like, "Oh, you mean like?" <gasps> um, but yeah, we've also got Mulan on the mm -hmm. way. Uh, both movies. It's it's actually really close now. We're just dealing with copyright, so that'll be out soon. Oh. And uh, Doom Annihilation with YMS is coming, and there's some other projects that we don't know what we're doing with yet, but lots of stuff coming to you. I like it doesn't good. matter which movies you mention, I'm just like, oh yeah, we watched that. <laughs> we watched lots of poopy things. How many months ago was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, there's going to be a bunch of stuff released that doesn't have our Halloween avatars, and as soon as Spooktober ends, it'll be like, oh, now for the halloween -y stuff. <laughs> like, um... <laughs> Like, wait a minute. You guys have fucked it up. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I'll just start reading these out. Um, you guys cool to hang out, everybody? I'm yeah, I'm yeah. Cool I mean, I, I would have actually watched the, 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 the other thingy still, but it's all good. Oh, like I said, we'll be able to make another EFAP yeah. out of it, I'm sure, at this point, especially because... Uh, how far are we now? Five hours? Uh, yes. There about. That's what yeah. YouTube says. Which, contrary to EFAP fans, is not a short stream already, okay? <laughs> Five hours of this. It's fine. Lots of. Probably bad though. Do need more. Um, need more. I'm gonna get a drink. Oh, look, we can start with a fucking uh, Sonic Heroes Super Chat. Uh, good to be watching you play a hedgehog wearing shoes, an enchanada with spiked fists, and a flying fox with two tails. Uh, that can achieve velocity by twirling them together, just like in real life. You know, remember, I, uh... Is Sonic that what Tails uh, is? A fox? I guess. Yeah, he's a so. fox with two tails. Isn't that obvious? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> it isn't. I don't know. That, I don't, it, it could be, like, I don't know if he's some kind of a, uh, some other canine creature or some weird badger or a tanuki or... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Oh, tanuki. Yeah, that'd be... Tanuki's a cool. He could be a red panda, yeah. Like oh, I read that oh, wrong. It's not. What is that word? Echin ek echidna? I don't think I've ever seen that echidna? before. Echidna. Echidna. That's what, you, really? That's what uh, Tails is, okay. right? No, not no, Tails. Um, no, Knuckles, Knuckles is an echidna, is but he's echidna, not Australian, yeah. so it's inaccurate. <laughs> echidnas are Australian. Yeah, echidnas are Australian, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I've, I don't think I've. I, I feel like I've never registered the word echidna before. Maybe not, yeah. Weird. It, uh, it probably doesn't pop up often in conversation. Not I, really, no. I mean, yeah, it's it's not... I mean, echidnas are really nifty. Animal. They're actually incredibly cute animals, despite being covered in sharp... Uh, <laughs> sharp little pointy sticks. You're a pointy stick. Oh, dude. Knuckles just said... Oh, oh Sonic. Feels like Halloween with all of these ghosts. I just saw it on screen. <laughs> yeah. That's really... That, you see, that's the... That's the kind of classic Sonic gold that I just expect. The dialogue is from, always yeah. so wonderful. That head, he <laughs> oh, just Sonic ran. games, yeah. Every, it's funny. every line's Sonic a Boom is kind of funny. Like, Sonic Boom is self-referential, so it's actually kind of funny. I've seen, like, meme clips of that show. Yeah, I, I like Sonic Boom, the, the cartoon. Like, I like it. I think it's funny. Funny than Bojack. They had a joke where, um, well, I mean, it's, it's got more laughs out of me. They had a, they had a joke where, um, where Sonic brings a game. It's like called Tomato Potamus Two, uh, and then they're talking about, you know, it never really worked in three. It never really worked in three D, 
game companies always ruin their beloved franchises and then sonic oh. says yeah they never should have changed the color of tomato potamus's legs because <laughs> like people in the sonic fandom don't tomato like that Potimus. sonic's legs yeah <laughs> yeah well, no, that's what i mean it's funny see that reminds me of um how weird of a decision it was that they actually had a line of dialogue in the last of us 2 that was joel saying they made a sequel it wasn't as good it's like why would why <laughs> why are you playing with my soul yeah yeah well, I didn't, uh, didn't, uh, X-Men Apocalypse did that. The third one's always the worst. It's like, yup! <laughs> well, hey, man, Return you of the King. You are the third one! They're like, what? Oh, yeah, no, I know. That's... It's just funny how, again, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. I mean, fucking everyone wants to throw stones at Joss Whedon. By the way, there's plenty of reason to. It's just funny to me, because, like, the, the, you know, it's coming from these properties that have such poopy writing in them. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, sure, dunk, dunk away. I don't really have Again, a problem with it overall. Willow like... is one of the best female characters in any show. Damn. Uh, she is. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to hear me disagree with you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe someone in chat will. There you go. Well, if they disagree, it should hopefully be a, another character from uh from Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> I praise people. Are thinking, like, it's just funny. I saw some people comments on it. It's like, what is it with you showing people Buffy? They show you a show they like, and you ruin it. <laughs> it wasn't me. Friggy, well, friggy thought for himself. It wasn't like. Well, yeah, it's funny, right? Like, I mean, come on, give me some credit, Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> I was, I was levying a lot of the criticism. <laughs> yeah. I was along for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I think you, yeah, were, I mean, you were getting worried with that when I wasn't laughing at anything. You were just like, hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I also wasn't laughing, so, <laughs> so I was getting worried myself. Um, I do, I, I, I mean, all, all I need to do is just show you another one of the shows that I like, which you haven't seen, and then just have you come on and say, yeah, it was great, and then people can just leave that argument alone. One of them has oh. to be good, right? I'm assuming they're all joking. Oh, it would be oh, fucking yeah. absurd to assume that, like, I hate every yeah. show that my friends show me. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to make you watch Silicon Valley. I think uh, I think you'll like that one. Yeah, I mean it, that sounds a lot more reliable because you've seen it very recently, and uh, I think some of the well, people like Silicon it. Well, Silicon Valley is mostly trying to be funny, and it's ri as opposed to being a, a drama, and it's really funny. Uh, uh, that was made by the creator of King of the Hill. Hmm. Well, I'm, I don't know if you like King of the Hill. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't, I didn't watch I a lot, but from what I saw, it was it was funny. Yeah, I never I, really I got into it either, yeah. Because um, I was a kid when it was, you know, coming out, and I remember, like, I didn't understand it, I don't think. I was like, why they keep talking about propane? <laughs> like, Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, I think I was just busy with other shows at that point. Simpsons Futurama was kind of... I was busy time. watching Simpsons on repeat. <laughs> Just like... Yeah, yeah. A lot of More. Simpsons. More. More. Come on, Tawny. Use your goddamn legs. Yeah. They're thick enough as they are. Damn. Wow, she... Tawny's very thick. Don't make Fringy game. angry. It goes right for your thighs. <laughs> No, they're, they're good thighs, like I'm just saying. Use your <laughs> leg, you got him. <laughs> oh fuck, am I... Uh, why can't I grab the thing? There, no, okay. Well, I didn't die anyway, it's fine. I'm fine. Uh, please don't dash off the 37 ledges this time, Mubes. No promises. No promises. But yeah, I will... My hot take, my super hot take, I prefer Mario to Sonic. There, I said it. I know. I remember I got into a debate with a friend of mine at school. He was like, at least Sonic, they try new things. To which my immediate thing is, Mario does try new things, and Mario does it better, so, yeah. I would say Mario's got the perfect blend of fucking giving everyone what they expect and then adding some new shit to really change it up. I think so. Mario's yeah. successful in that regard. Like, Sonic yeah. is like, fuck it. <laughs> this now. And you're like, oh my god. We're hogs. <laughs> Gun. Gun, gun, gun. <laughs> gun. Yeah, gun. Hey, Shadow what if he is Sonic cool. Sonic Black and he enjoyed gun violence. <laughs> and he was a, again. I don't know the law of Shadow, but I'm pretty sure it's really funny. Uh, I what Shadow? Know. Wasn't he? He was crowded in a lab, wasn't he? That's like his thing. <laughs> wow, I'm pretty funny. sure. That's his incredible edgy background. Of course, he was created in a lab. The science so experiment edgy. gone wrong. 
it broke out of the yeah. laboratory where I was created. And he, of course he they loves a, a human girl called Maria, right? That's his thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, uh, oh, that's right, is it? Yeah. Yes. I was about to say it, but you all fucking interrupted me. Wow, Methel interrupting <laughs> us. Oh, and doesn't he doesn't he sacrifice himself to save the world because he's secretly probably. a good man after all? <laughs> he's a good man, of course. The game has like 50,000 endings as well. Yeah, well, so, oh yeah, Sonic, Shadow the Hedgehog. I mix it up with Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. <laughs> I and can't funny, hate the world if there's not a dude, world to hate. That is a game I'd like to play somehow with like <laughs> you guys or something. Like Sonic 06 is just a treasure trove. I remember when I was Amazing. a kid, I was like, why does it take so long to load? <laughs> <laughs> that must be doubly shit if you were, like, if your parents only let you play, like, an hour a day or something, and the loading times were just <laughs> that long. Like, I like how mom, there are a lot of people Dad, like, I don't understand man. games, but we gotta make a deal here. I do like how a lot of people say, if only it had more development time, it's like, nah, it's fundamentally fucked. <laughs> like, the fact that it doesn't work is just additional. Like, that game would have been a disaster. Sonic kissing a human being, like, <laughs> who thought that was a good idea? Well, it's because all of the edgy adolescents who self-insert themselves into Shadow as their OC, they're like, I wish I could kiss a girl sometime, maybe, I guess. I wish I, I would I'm... be a Sonic. I just find it funny that that game was meant to be like, oh, see Sonic for the new age. It's like, yeah, pretty much. It set the trend for the next 10 years of Sonic. Yeah, the cutscenes in it were crazy. Like, like it was going for something yeah. huge. They had some big budget for some of those cutscenes, you could tell. They really wanted to make their, uh, you know, make their stamp. They were like, we're here and we're here to stay. And it was like... And they had that song that I actually really liked. Imagine when the second they submit a game to completion, they get a, a little window into the future of what the repu the undying <laughs> reputation of the game will be, and the Sonic 06 devs will probably be like, oh god. It would be like the Ark of the Covenant scene in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Face <laughs> melting and exploding. Oh, so sad. But hey. Uh, Moobsley, I have class. I can't afford to ditch. Hey, hey it's alright. We'll be here. You can, uh, you can catch us on the re-upload. Um, <clears throat> look at all those Eggman's robots. Oh yeah, we were, we, we, when were we talking about that? Was that from a Super Chat or not? The whole, like, Eggman versus Bowser, who would win? Like, um, surely, like, Bowser wins, right? Well, yeah, I think like, we said categorically, like, in a 1v1, it's Bowser. But, yeah. in, like, oh, armies uh, versus armies, tech. yeah. Um, do, well, do do Eggman's robots, are they more effective than the Koopa Troopers, I guess? Well, if we count Bowser across all of it, he has some crazy technology, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got he some does. gadgets, man. Well, yeah, like in Super Mario Odyssey, he has the crazy hat that has, like, punching things on it that whizzes <laughs> around and punches you. Yeah, what's Eggman yeah. gonna do against it's magic? Flying, it's flying warships. It's funny, because, like, Bowser always loses, but Bowser somehow retains a certain degree of, like, uh... He's like the First Order. Of, uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, well, what I was gonna say was like I feel like Bowser still remains somewhat intimidating, whereas Eggman is just comical, um, which is fine. I kind of like Eggman, um, yeah. but Bowser somehow seems still like intimidating in his own way, even though you know that he'll lose. I mean, Super Mario, Super Mario Galaxy, man. I I have 3D All Stars. I haven't touched it yet. I need to. Super Mario Galaxy was the shit. The soundtrack, the tunes in that game. Tunes. <laughs> oh man, I mean, Super Mario, yeah, all of them really, but it's just so catchy yeah. from all the games. Ah uh, yeah, Super Mario Sunshine, like the, the, uh, the Flower Galaxy has really cool music. I mean, if I just listed all of them, <laughs> yeah. Battle Rock Galaxy. I mean, I've always felt Delfino is a wonderful little hub world and the oh, music. Delfino is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very chill. You could just walk oh. around Delfino and just yeah. be happy. It's like, eh. One of the things I liked in that game was how uh, there's sort of like a progression of um, the sunshine. Like it gets brighter the more you do. Significant yeah, yeah. Touch. Uh, the sun, yeah, everything just increases. Everything's getting better in the world. The more shines you free slash imprison. <laughs> I feel like I was really impressed by all the uh, the, the cutscenes that game had, like as a kid. Mm -hmm. Except for when Bowser talked, I wasn't such a yeah, fan. Yeah, that was a bit awkward. HOW DARE YOU RUIN MY FAMILY VACATION! 
Good son, Battler cares about his fucking family. Yeah, I, well, it's funny, right? Because uh, a lot of the newer games have kind of mm. emphasized the Bowser being a dad, and it's really neat. You know, like, oh, Bowser's like a, is a dad. He's a cool dad. He wanted a mother for his child. You know? And yeah. It's about family. Well, I mean, that's what's so powerful about well, it. Well, ah, Bowser's a fucking I mean, player. Mm -hmm. That's well. That's Bowser's angle, right? And like in uh, in Super Mario Odyssey, he wants to marry Peach, and then he tries to propose to her. It's really funny. <laughs> it's, funny. It's, I guess picture like, oh, scenes where Peach is like trying to explain to him what's happening. It's like you, you've kidnapped me. And he's like, this is love. It's like, uh, well, no, how it's you, all how play. <laughs> they're, they're, she got quote unquote kidnapped. Ah. I like the idea that Bowser is actually trying to save her from Mario because Mario yeah. is like the the, <laughs> the theory that she, she wants stalker. to be with Bowser, but she doesn't want Bowser to like Mario to know that because otherwise it'll fuck <laughs> everything Mario up. Mario will kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker! Like, yeah, oh, you... pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made this army of turtles to protect our love. I feel like Dark Mario has always been a really funny idea. Oh, yeah. Like, what if Mario like Superman? Secretly... You're fucking with the family, yeah. Bowser. <laughs> I, know, I like how, uh, I know Angry Joe gets really upset when when uh, Superman is made evil, but, like, Superman evil is just more interesting than Superman good to me. That's why Homelander is such a cool idea. Is there a communist Superman version? Wait, I yeah. think there is, Man yeah. I think there is. Isn't it Under the Red Sun is called? Or so? I remember yeah, someone mentioned that. Like yeah, yeah. Oh shit. No, my team is die. Oh, we're, we're, we're all good. Conversely, Dingo Dial is a hero. What a great idea. I'm not I'm not being sarcastic. It makes me happy <laughs> having <laughs> Australian representation finally. Yeah, it's cultural game. appropriation so we can't have it. Sorry about your uh, sorry I, well, about that. Well, it's funny. Uh I'm pretty sure his axe I feel like he actually is played by an Australian this time. Like last mm. time around cuz obviously whenever anybody plays an Australian it's really obvious to me. Like if an American's doing it, but uh, this guy sounds pretty authentic. He hasn't said cunts, but uh, but otherwise, you know, he, we'll he's a pretty accurate. Give him time. It's in the DLC. Uh, well, I I actually kind of hope they make DLC for this game. I'd buy it. I want more levels. I want them to make more Crash Bandicoot games. If they keep doing what they're doing here, they're on a good track. Oh shit! This was about make a Dingo Dial spin-off game. Oh yeah, uh, super chats, right? Um, I killed myself again. Is Muller a serial suicider? I kill myself oftentimes in, in Sonic Heroes. There's no railings, so I keep blasting myself off the edge, you know? That's Dr. Eggman's ultimate weapon, is he removed all of the railings. Because <laughs> <laughs> this whole place was like a fun little experiment for everyone to just do roller coasters and stuff, but he was like, what if I remove the safety precautions? I will use his speed as his weakness. Oh my god. Fuck you, Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Muller, I mean... imagine... Go ahead, what? Imagine what? Oh, I was just I saying, guess. could you imagine if he actually said that? It'd be great. Fuck you, Sonic! <laughs> fuck as you, as you Sonic. tip over Bowser's bath at the end of Sunshine, as he's falling, he just goes, Fuck you! It would be like, oh my god. <laughs> I wonder if they could get away with it, with uh, like what the lowest rating would be they could get away with. Maybe make it sound like something else. Well, Crash Bandicoot got away with a bunch. There's a skin in this game called Mother Clucker. Um, <laughs> is that, is that really getting away game. with it when it's not it? Yeah, what's wrong with that? It's not, what, what well, you, what's, well, getting, what's it getting away I with? Mean, I don't understand. Oh, I just mean, you know, sneaking in your, uh, your little... Oh, oh, a good one! In Ratchet & Clank 3, there's a cutscene where, um, they're looking for Captain Quark, and they, uh, they go to this, this planet, um, where they're looking for a wild man, and they're interviewing this guy, and he's like, He was butt naked, screaming, and holding a banana! Maybe it weren't a banana. It could be <laughs> one of nature's mysteries. Well, dude, um, I, I, I was always surprised to find out one of the games was called Up Your Arsenal. I was like, geez. Yeah, Up Your Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> they have a lot of those in Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is a cheeky game. Well, you know what? Mario 64 got away with it when you said So Long Gay Bowser. That was, that was so big. So Long Gay Bowser? So Long Gay Bowser. That. They removed that sound clip in that uh, remaster thing you already Really? Made. They removed yeah. that? It's too controversial. Wow, they're getting rid of gay representation? That's I fucked know, up. Right? That's uh, what was the up, what man. was the other one? I just love the idea that oh, Mario right. fucking hates gay people. 
<laughs> he, he is a very devout Italian Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's altruistic in every sense of the word, except fucking gay people, man. Get the hell out of here, degenerates. This is like, Bowser's like, wow, dude. <laughs> That's fucked up, Mario. I'm not even gay, but jeez. <laughs> we find out that Mario is like, uh, what's a face from the boys? <laughs> just so secretly funny. hate. <laughs> yeah, Stormfront. He, he just sees gay people and shoots the lasers. <laughs> like, fireballs at them. <laughs> <laughs> He's got red eyes and they're being chased into corners. He's like, you think you're kind of scared? <laughs> I like it when the, I see the lights to go out. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one day, it's like a talk with Luigi. It's like, Luigi, you've been looking funny at Waluigi, are you? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, just we're just a friend, Zamario. We're just a friend. We're just a friend. And then you see like a scene where Waluigi's coming back from a hard day's work plumbing. And Mario standing outside of his house with a crowbar. <laughs> and then cuts to black. Luigi yeah. wakes up. And it's it's Waluigi's head in his bed. Waluigi's head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Just give it time. We'll explore this side of Mario. Nintendo, I'm sure of it, will we'll want to explore this side of Mario. Uh -huh. Um... Hey Moller, I'm a new subscriber, really big fan of your content on the sequel trilogy and the Unbridled Rage series. Also, a little fun fact, that snippet of Tywin Lannister laughing makes me piss myself every time. Yeah, I need to find more places to put that in, where he just goes, huh. Cause, uh, he's a, he's a good lad, Tywin. You know, the show died with him. That's, that's how it goes. I mean, literally, well, not literally, figuratively. <laughs> Cause, I always did the thing. it was a fucking cliff drop with season 5. I think most fans agree with that. Like, season 4 is the last one that you can enjoy. <laughs> the rest of them are like, <laughs> stressing you out. How it just kept falling. Yeah, there's still things to enjoy in 5, 6, and 7, but 8 is where they really tested you. Well, isn't that the Battle of the Bastards is the thing that everybody really likes, and that was season 9? They, they do, well, a lot of people enjoy it as a spectacle, but it is a fucking nonsense fight. Well, I mean, party to fucking corpse terrain formations, boys. Yeah, and oh, this I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 I, but it, it kept topping itself because uh, if you remember, season five like pissed everyone off, but then Hard Home happened, and everyone was like, okay, all right, Game of Thrones isn't over, cool. Mm -hmm. And um, but but the wall episode of season seven, that's where everyone was like, okay, what's going on? Why are you doing this to us? Why did why did we earn this? We never got that answer. I do answer. feel like, uh, that's your thing, right? When normie people are talking about how bad something is, it's like, oh yeah, you done fucked it up. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I was, I've said it before, and it's like memes, my dentist just bringing it up. I didn't even bring it up. They were just like, oh, did you watch Game of Thrones? It's like, new season shit. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and then when you've lost the normies, you know, they feel like you've lost the war. Yeah. It's always funny when I talk to my friendos and when they told me, oh, I, I like the, 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 the Rise of Skywalker, and I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, I, yeah. I, 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 I like, board, but... like legit, he, legit, he said, like, oh, I like how you did all of the pebbles. I was like, how, how do you, why? Like, what? how was he alive? Do you survive? It's like, are you shitting me? You can see they have no arguments. <laughs> You're doing feelings wrong. Stop it. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's... Nowhere near as good as something like modern and great like the boys and the metal I do, dies inside. I uh, tend to have to avoid having these conversations because I'll hear somebody say it was good and I disagree hardcore. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty terrible, but you know, <laughs> just try and move on. Oh, I don't have any problems talking about it, but I keep it short. Because, like, I, just, I talk about this stuff offline enough. <laughs> yeah. it, for me, it's always just a read the room thing. If they want to go into it, yeah. I'll go into it. But if they're like, oh, oh, I, yeah, really, I really enjoy Season 8 of Game of Thrones, I'll be like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reading the room is important. You see, guys, I don't take people's feelings all the time. I let them keep them. Put them in a yeah. little box. I like the idea to just recontextualize that comic of Biden saying you ain't black and sucking the black sucking out of that it. woman's skin, sucking the fun out of, out of somebody. 
They're not allowed to experience fun. <laughs> you ain't black. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a mistake. It's, oh, it's wonderful. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hey, Mullet, could you give a shout out to uh, Fan Fiction Project? Uh, oh. Me and several writers are doing Cold Remnant of a Rose slash Iron Rose and Iron Rose Continuation. Okay. Fan fiction hmm. project. Check it out, I Fan guess. Uh, it's gonna be about Remnant of a Rose slash Iron Rose and Iron Rose continuation. Uh, I would suggest writing. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about fan fiction a lot of the time. I'd just be like, maybe you just write your own stuff. Hey, man. Depends on what they're talking I about. I mean, it's cool whatever you're doing. <laughs> like, I don't even know if it's good or bad. I'm just, that's just generally my perspective on, uh, on, uh, fan fiction. I mean, if you're challenging yourself to write, like, stories that could be the next continuation of that, like, world and keep and like, where you want to... That might be a fun challenge, yeah. Yeah, like, I want to make sure that these characters are in character and there's no lore breaks and I don't introduce any uh, pro problematic, like, technology or, yeah. you know, attributes or anything like that, then, you know, I... Yeah, in fact, I don't even I don't even know what I'm saying. I think I've actually had the idea of like I want to do like a Metroid story where it's like po where you just don't do Mother M and you just have like I don't know Samus just going on adventures but being a little more unhinged. That might be interesting for a little. She bit. goes to a planet where there's like a bunch of casinos. Oh, I just um... mean like um, just <laughs> being excessively brutal to like the space pirates. Like ripping their heads off and like blowing She's them away. She's racist to black like people. Desert. Black pirates specifically. Black pirates. <laughs> she just hates black pirates specifically. She lets the white ones get I away like with it. I like to see the life go out of the space pirates. <laughs> Fuck, we've only got, what is it, like Yellow. 20, 26 Purple days pastor. until we have to start talking about Mando season two. Damn. Yeah. You just oh, reminded me yeah, because. Somehow, it was a space bounty hunter just got me on it. Just like, oh fuck, we're yeah. gonna have to, we're gonna have to be the hot takers again and be like, so the show isn't as good as everyone's saying it is, guys. <laughs> Man, if only Prey Two came out. This is, if only we got Prey Two, that would have been so great. If only Star Wars Thirteen Thirteen got finished. Yeah, man. But hey, maybe Mando season two will be good. Maybe. There's fucking weird ass rumors that uh, he doesn't want to be a part of it anymore, or he's getting booted out of it. It's gonna be so weird to have the Mandalorian without the Mandalorian. Why wouldn't he want to be a part of it though? Okay. Well, the rumor is right that he, he's annoyed that he doesn't get to show his face more. But I don't. I want to be but careful I mean, with that because that's a really fucking stupid thing yeah. for him to say. So we don't know if he actually is feeling that way. I yeah, yeah, exactly. I, don't know about that. I mean, it might be that the production now is kind of <clears throat> shitty. Could be a lot of things. Yeah, he could, could be, be pulling a Ruby Rose. Hmm. <laughs> Just imagine signing up for Mandalorian and then saying, oh, hey, I want my face showed more. It's like, you've seen... You... <laughs> 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 Again, I don't know that that's how he feels about it, but if he did, that would be so stupid. I, I mean, I, I wanted to not see his face at all in the show, basically. I'm okay with seeing it, but not the way they did it and not in season one. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Right, well, I, th I think you should be doing the Master Chief thing where you just, you know, it could be anyone. I think it would be really That's cool funny. if we went the entire show without seeing it, yeah. Yeah, cool. without seeing it. I agree. Space, I, would I yeah. wish we never saw it. That's what I, I don't want to see Master Chief's face. It's going to be hard to write it, though, because you kind, he kind of needs to never be captured in order for that to happen. Yeah. Well, Batwoman got captured and they let her keep all his shit. <laughs> Dude, what are you, why are you referencing Batwoman? He got captured and they let him keep his fucking helmet on. Yeah, that's true, yeah. I miss Batwoman. <laughs> She's Wait, coming back. He's still back. wearing his fucking flamethrower gauntlets. Why'd you guys let him do that? <laughs> Man, <laughs> turns out he's got so much technology that we didn't think about in his armor. It's like, why'd you let him keep his armor? Like, I don't know. It just seemed like the thing to do. At least the yeah. music's good. Oh, yeah, I like the music. You know, and we got, we got Mike, oh god, I'm dead. Uh, we got a bunch of pretty cool actors coming in for season two, so, you know. Yeah. Should be fun. Uh, Boba Fett, though, concerns me. <laughs> Dude, Mando season two concerns me. I like how you just yeah. died there, you just dashed all the way back, clapped to the wall. <laughs> yeah, like, right, this... Left. This game feels weird to control, I will say that fucking much. 
What, a Sonic game with bad controls? <laughs> also, a camera can be a nightmare sometimes. What is Sonic game with a bad camera? <laughs> no way. And you know the camera and controls in Mario games? Oh, sometimes it's a dream. Uh, certainly in the 2D ones, which is probably the same for Sonic yeah. as well. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, so I like the 2D Sonic games a hell of a lot more than I like the 3D ones. I actually really have very favorable views of, like, Sonic 2, Sonic and Knuckles. It's good games. Mm. Instead of the original cartridges for Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, I, di I didn't have a Genesis. Uh... It's a Mega Drive over here. Oh, yeah, it is a Mega Drive <laughs> over here, but I always use, like, American terminology. Yeah. Like, I gain $60. They're not $60. They're $100. <laughs> but $60 makes more sense. I need to buy a, a Mega Drive again because I still have all the games. But some sometime I move, my console got lost. I have no idea when it yeah. got lost. So it's really annoying to me because I played that shit so much. I still have a bunch of uh, Mega Drive games. I can't use them. I need to buy one at some point. Yeah, hold on to your old consoles. Like, I'm so glad I held on to my GameCube because I remember there was a point where I wanted to trade it in. I'm so glad I didn't. GameCubes are cool. Oh, yeah, it was cool. It was just that at the time I wanted, like, a PS3, I think. Um, and they're like, no, we don't take GameCubes. But GameCubes will be worth a lot soon because there ain't a lot of them. Really? There's, they only sold, like, 20 million copies. It's Nintendo's lowest selling console uh, other than the Wii U, so hold on to your Wii U as well. Well, Wii U might the be Wii worth what? It because... Yeah, what the, Wii, the Wii the Wii U hasn't um you know, its reputation well, isn't as 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 I guess. Well, there's that and also like most of its games have been ported to the Switch, so it yeah. doesn't you know you know, I, I'm pretty sure there are like it's basically the same situation as like an <laughs> Xbox One. The only game that you can't get is Halo Five. And you know, Oh my god. <laughs> Torturing that poor microphone arm. <laughs> just moved on Dude, it sounded like a fucking up. alien from Alien. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or an alien from that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Oh, now you've given it away. It's all over. They'll be able to figure that out, Fringy. There's like one alien movie. Um, Batwoman's first appearance was in a CW crossover. True, it was the yeah, Elseworlds one, right? And, and the interesting thing to me is that, um, again, we watched it because it was terrible. Not the well, I mean, we, it was terrible and we watched it, it's kind of a coincidental thing. Um, the, the team up, the big table, the new warehouse, all these characters, and it's like, damn, Ruby Rose and Supergirl are out. Yeah, Supergirl's. Well, you got, and that's alright, we got this uh, the, the rest but, of this. It's the paragon of courage crazy. is gone. Like <laughs> being courageous <laughs> elsewhere, it's fine. And, oh, and the paragon of hope will soon be gone too. I just I like the idea that they fucking look in the book and they're like, you know what? It wasn't you two. It was these other two <laughs> this whole time. Ah, oh, crisis is so bad. <laughs> Make more of them, please. This is the thing, man. If I found out they cancelled all CW shows because they just crashed a bid, I'd be like, oh. I mean, I guess it all makes sense. I but, feel like oh. uh, Bat Batwoman ain't getting season three, is what I would say. I'm worried about that. I'm worried it won't even get a fucking second half, dude. Like, so it's only. I'm assuming right. it only got the first half. Or uh, do you think no, that they're gonna pack know. their eggs in that basket at this point? They're like, let's focus on Batwoman. Ain't nobody packing uh, the roses. I don't know. I think uh, I think the Flash is the one that's successful, from what I understand. So they're probably I don't know. Probably and yeah, we, we were talking about it. I think Supergirl. Like, I guess it makes sense because that's probably got the most special effects, doesn't it? Um, Flash has a lot of super special oh, effects. Oh, I guess I meant out of the shitty ones. Like Batwoman can be floated where Supergirl maybe can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Um, which is funny, because Supergirl's special effects are... Fucking really garbage. Bad. <laughs> Do you remember the well, Leroy... Superman Do you think they're gonna try and show. transfer a bunch of the, like, main cast from Supergirl over, because they think people will want to watch Batwoman more if it has, you know? Maybe? I don't know. I could see him doing it. You reckon? Yeah, man, just be like, oh, this is... Uh, we saw a couple of them in the crossover event. There's a lot of... Isn't... isn't... I don't, was he Martian Manhunter? I can't remember. The one who could turn into... Yeah, that's Martian Manhunter. Yeah, he's a Supergirl character, right? So they're gonna want to move him yeah. over, I assume. Well, will they? Maybe he wants to move on to something else. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. I never know with this shit. I'm always like, is this... 
Is hey, this what they... Maybe he's like, but bad girl is all I've got. Yeah. Which feels bad, but if true... How is Batwoman one of the most successful CW shows? I actually have no idea how it's doing monetarily. Like, is Batwoman doing well compared to the others or not? I uh, I think it started off doing well just by virtue of the fact that it was, um, you know, the newest one. But I don't... Let me let me look it up. I want, I want to see... It went down downhill constant, constantly with every episode. Yeah, that's, that's every show, though. Every show kind of plummets as it... Well, <laughs> not plummets, but, uh, but continues going down. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, so it started off, it debuted with 1.8 million viewers, and by the end of the show, it was at about 700,000. <laughs> I don't know so if that's normal, but it sounds funny. It more than halved, uh, and the lowest rated episode had 630,000 viewers. I mean, I guess they'll, they'll be testing it out on how it does with this new season. I suppose so. Good luck, Batwoman. We'll be there. To support you. <laughs> Every step of the way. I want to like it would be cool to get the actual number on how many people consume Batwoman through us. Like, <laughs> it's got to be at least a th like a good thousand, right? Because I assume a lot of people are watching it and us. And I don't know. What do you reckon? I don't. I don't. I don't think a lot of people are watching it and us. I think they're watching us. <laughs> Is it, I'm sure. Yeah, we probably have more of that. Yeah, it's probably it's probably a lot higher than I imagine actually. I imagine everyone in chat is actually about to say, like, yep, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, someone who's, like, people are excited for the our coverage of Batwoman, <laughs> not, like, Batwoman. <laughs> like, we, because, but we're the ones doing all the coverage, so I guess for us it's a little bit different. Like, we're excited to do the coverage. They're excited to watch the coverage, because they yeah. see Batwoman with our lens, or through us. So, you know, it's sort of different in that aspect. I mean, that's the thing, right? More people have watched, uh, like, your videos than <laughs> right. Batwoman. I think, like, because I watch, obviously, Jay Longbone and Az's coverage, I think Az misses out on doing a live reaction recording and then editing it at the best bits and shit. Maybe we can, um, for the Season 2 premiere, we can get those two into a, an EFAP mini recording. That'd be fun. Celebratory, like, welcome back, everyone. Also, what are you laughing at, Mel? Oh, just the way you died. Just like oh, left, right, left, right, right between the rails. Yeah, I think there's there's something I'm supposed to do to make this better for me, but I don't quite understand it. So I just sort of hope. There we go. I did it. I'm so good at Sonic. Sonic. Sornag. Mola, play Rose first and Shadow last in order. I'm not gonna play- are you kidding me? I'm gonna play the Sonic team through Sonic Heroes. I'm not playing every team. I'm not- I don't want to kill myself, okay? Like, I'm playing this as a- as a- as a nice little throwback, cause I pl am I dead? I have two rings, you fuck! They killed me when I had two rings, Fringy. That's against the Sonic rules, is it not? Yeah, you can't kill some of Sonic when he has rings. Unless you get crushed by something, I think? I don't know. Either way, I'm outraged. Rose team is good, though. Excuse you. Sonic is the coolest fuck. I died. It's the coolest fuck. <laughs> um, since you were playing Sonic, have you watched the bizarre modern reality of Sonic the Hedgehog? Good video worth reacting to. The bizarre modern reality of Sonic the Hedgehog. No, no idea what that is. You, you guys know what that is? No, no, no clue. <clears throat> Again, I don't really give that much of a shit about Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, yeah, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Sonic is not in my Mario's my wheelhouse. Sonic. I'm all about that gay Bowser. Oh yes. Sonic the Hedgehog. Mario is well, funnily enough, next up in right. in the Dolphin roster is going to be Luigi's Mansion because not only is it one of the games I constantly Luigi. play, but it's Halloween tisms. It's Lugism. Lugism's Mansion. So one of my favorite old school memes, Lugism. <laughs> that was just me spelling Luigi's Mansion drunk, right? <laughs> so funny. Lugism. <laughs> 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 what was it? tell um the story of was was a you Bibli Tubo? Was that no, you? No, that was bio. That, that was, was bio. bio. Yeah. 
think Bio had a doctor's visit or something and he came back and <laughs> wrote Bibli Tumo. He was supposed to write Bible Thump, Bible which is an emote, but he instead wrote Bibli Tumo. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good, good times. Misspelling yeah. shit is is a good joke. All right, I stand by it. Uh, watch Hunter X Hunter. It's a great anime that invents inverts a lot of the common shonen tropes. If you are into m more mature content, watch Vinland Saga. I really like Hunter. By the way, I, I yeah, watched it twice already. I'm guessing Vinland would be about uh about the the <clears throat> people you know the who went to uh, America, right? Wasn't Vinland that was the name of uh the Norse settlement in um in America? I don't rightly know. Is that what it is? <clears throat> I think so. I I never watched Vinland, so I guess shit would be other answers. Wow, you're supposed to be our anime person for this stream. I always heard hear about it. I've never checked it out. No one ever recommended it to me, to be honest. <laughs> I've heard good things. Oh, I, I thought it was like some live action show. <laughs> no. It's an ornament. <laughs> things I mostly ask Vin for recommendations because mm -hmm. we share the same tisms, likings. Hmm. He never mentioned that one before. Maybe I'll, I'll give it. Uh, maybe I'll give it a watch. I think Vin's seen Vinland Saga. I don't know. I mean, it was <laughs> named I after him. I, I think I've heard him talk about that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, abusive robots. Hey Mola, could you give it? A... Oh, it's a. Wait, I read that one. I apologize. Um... Oh fucking old Cortex! Idiot. <laughs> Muller, in your best Christopher Lee, say, I shed the blood of four thousand Saxon men. I fucking know that song. It's, it's epic as hell watching like this 95 year old man do metal. Uh, everyone should go check it out. It's Christopher Lee rocking his heart out despite being like, he's just in a chair, I think, for most of it. But I'm it's actually uh, rocking his heart out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's done stuff with. Uh, Rhapsody of Fire as well. This is a cool dude, cool stuff. It's an interesting song. Then go listen to the heavy metal album he made at the age of 91. Yeah, see? Good holy. That's why we were talking about anime. I watched uh, Mob Psycho 100, season 1 and 2 recently. I watched Gurren Lagann for the first time. And I'm yes. finally watching Berserk all the way through. All the way through? The new one, not the new one, the the old one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. From what I've heard, is isn't it only season one is the good shit? Berserk is, uh, yeah. Because I've seen season one, it was the good shit. Yeah. Is, well, is there more than one season of Berserk? I don't, don't even I don't know. Think it, I don't well, think it went fucking past. either way, the season ends in such a manner that's like, man, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of this. And then oh, okay. uh, Smiler was like, no, you, has... that's it. <laughs> Berserk has a horrible history with adaptations. Yeah. Like this and like that, and then the, what was it, 2016 <clears throat> version, which was, uh, ugh. um, Do yeah, so you're, most, yeah, I've you're seen... mostly just better off reading it. I, I've seen how this, the, the, the new Berserk looks, and I didn't know what the fuck they were thinking. <laughs> so fucking bad. I don't think they were thinking. Clearly, you don't understand style. Fuck up! What style? I watch Gurren Lagann again. That has style. Yeah. Um, sure. All I ever hear is people say Gurren Lagann, so I'm choosing to believe that they have the right pronunciation, and, and you're a pretentious person. Well, no one actually said it to me, so I'm just guessing. Which one's correct, Theo? Yeah, you're Gurren Lagann. I'm fucking. <laughs> 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 Your time to shine, boy. Uh, Speak for all of anime, Gurren son. <laughs> yeah, Gurren Lagann. Let's go with that. Oh. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. I, I've heard that so many times as uh, Gurren Lagann, but Gurren. that means all those people were probably <laughs> I have wrong. I no idea what you're talking about. Well, that, that'd be, I guess... The talking about weeb like shit, bro. Way of saying it. Like the most oh, fucking weeb shit you can watch, like the stakes just go no. up top. Like, what the fuck is this happening? I don't care, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much <laughs> it. It's just, it's just, just mm. sit back and enjoy it. It's, it's just great. Mm. Ah. Sonic is such a weasel. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. <laughs> you weasel. <laughs> so come a hedgehog, man. Man, this dude's shield's real strong. Okay, I'm gonna tornado you, buddy. 
Get Shrekt. Get Shrekt. Um, been listening to EFAP at work for the past four weeks and only up to 30, but loving every bit of it. Have some rhino milk on me, boys. Oh, very oh, kind. Nice. Juicy rhino milk. Is, is, is milk juicy? Um, some of it. It, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like drinking it. You're like, what's what's going on there, buddy? <laughs> uh, what's that? Is it, uh, mm, juicy milk. Mm. Mm. Oh, milk should be juicy. Uh, it says at this point, I think I'd be a better writer. Hi, ah. Uh, I guess that was meant for Rex. Um, I don't know what we oh. were talking about at that point, but yes. <laughs> uh, would you guys cover the many a true nerd videos arguing Fallout 4 is better than we thought? I've I don't not... know enough about Fallout 4. No, so... I don't care enough about Fallout 4, and it's been ages since I even heard those words. So, <laughs> yeah, <I've... laughs> I, uh, I don't yeah. Know if it's... Oh, oh. I'm not the one to go for that one. I haven't played any. I Fallout found games. it strange. What's that? Oh, no, never mind. You go. Oh, it's just. I feel like Fallout's probably overrated. It's kind <laughs> of like. At, at least, from what I understand, three onwards, but not the first two. I've heard a lot of good things about the first yeah, two. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed three. I loved New Vegas. Four yeah, was... New Vegas four eventually got that. to be really good after you modded the shit out of it. Oh, Fallout 76 was a fucking abortion. <laughs> 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 not to... Fuck it. Is, is that game better now, 76? We do, we, I've we, heard it's better. Are we dealing but... with that again, I guess? Is that Destiny 2 all over again? That's oh, better Oh, I thought now. you were going to reference... Been better when it came out. I thought you were going to reference uh, No Man's Sky. That's good. Oh, well, that's your... Yeah, but but that, it seems like they've gone above and beyond anything. Oh, that sure, yeah. No Man's Sky seems like that's less not, cynical. Yeah, it's not a corporate thing, that one. It's a, well, it's a I think it was beloved just developer's really thing. Nervous. Came way bigger than uh than they ever thought it would be. Yeah, I'm I'm willing. Internet historian videos changed my mind completely on all of that. So it's good shit. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, give No Man's Sky another try, everybody who considered maybe doing that. I've heard it's pretty neat now, I've and they're still going. Really they could have taken people. your money and ran, and they did. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is that uh, that was the theory until they like, poke their head out, because they just knew that social media is just... it's not a good idea. Yeah. But just get your heads down. They knew they could never make another video game ever again if they didn't fix this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. of course, the, the the thing that Internet Historian talked about is, like, the potential is obviously dissolving their company and starting a new one, and then just trying to maybe work under an alias, I don't know. <laughs> but, this is uh, funny, I, I, I have a friendo who liked the initial release of uh, No Man's Sky. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't hear anything about the hybrid thing, I just bought the game and I thought it was fine. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a... Oda Biscuit was one of the first people to call that that game was overhyped. Mm. Um, he well, was on point about that. a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't... Did the, I, I never got into it, I just kept hearing about it, and I was just like, alright, and it was like the game that will change the gaming landscape forever, and I was like, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Very cynical about that sort of thing. I was... I was very much interested in it, but nowhere near enough to like buy on release or without yeah. knowing more, like much more. Mm -hmm. I mean, by now it's, it's rare that I buy a game at release, anyways. Yeah. Like it's just select games, so like uh, like from software games, they're, they're mm -hmm. mostly solid at release. Pretty so much the only game that I've are you buying Demon? Are you buying a PlayStation Five and Demon Souls then, or uh... not at launch? Yeah, <laughs> no rush I, on that one. I actually tweeted out. I said, I think I tweeted, I'm probably gonna be a tourism just by the new PlayStation for God of War because that's all I care about. <laughs> yeah, it's still a year away, so yeah, there's just plenty of time. Yeah, there's still this little, this little hope. It might, might. Maybe it comes to PC. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they're, they're bringing more stuff to PC. And exactly. So have... Dude, I would be Demon... thrilled if that would happen. Demon Souls is probably going to come to PC. I hope... Well, I don't know about that one, actually, because about... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, uh, no interest in getting a console in, in general. It's just select title of games. I mean, if I would have a PlayStation, I would obviously get, like, the Demon Souls uh, remake yeah. and probably Bloodborne if that only releases on PlayStation, I guess. 
I mean, if I have to console, I can obviously gonna use it. But yeah, not not anytime soon. Definitely not at release. I mean, good luck getting one anyways, because people are yeah insane. scalpers. <laughs> It's the same with like the, the NVIDIA, Nvidia stuff. Like, people are going nuts, yeah. and now they're yeah, all fighting, um... fighting their asses. Like, oh, they, the, the, all the, all those retailers have to uh, are using cheap things because they have those guidelines that are really whatever. It's like, oh, we use four of the cheap ones instead of three or two, and now systems are failing because of that because they can't handle the. The voltage or whatever. Uh, it's like, yeah. Just, just don't. Just, it's like with video games. Just wait it out. Yeah. Like, don't oh yeah. Me. Like, not, event <laughs> I'm probably gonna end up building a new computer here next year, and it'll have a 3090, and that sort of thing. But no rush to it at all. Yeah. No. Yeah, rush. Have we not learned anything from Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death? <laughs> can, you, can you not just say, have we not learned anything, and then just keep going back? Decade by decade. <laughs> yeah. Especially now there's already leak, uh, leaked, uh, <clears throat> what are they called? Those, those, uh, work guidelines, what, uh, like the release tree. Ah, fuck, I'm word. Uh, where they Come show. On, roadmap? Uh, roadmap, thank you, that's the one. Uh, that is like gonna, this is gonna be like a 3080 with 20 gigs of VRAM instead of only 10 now. It's already leaked that it's gonna come out at some point. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a good idea to wait for the TIs in general. Yeah, that's very likely it's gonna come but out. But plenty of people AMD won't. Gonna, gonna yeah, show this stuff, which is probably gonna be somewhere between 3070, 3080, I think. What will be? Uh, the AMD graphics cards. I'm uh, just gonna see what they do. Oh, yeah, probably a good idea. They're gonna do the... the uh, I think in October, like soonish, like in two, three weeks, maybe. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, just gonna wait it out, see what happens. Probably gonna be cheaper when I'm gonna buy it eventually. So yeah. Man, this boss is hard. <laughs> he's, uh... oh. he's doing his best. <laughs> he's, he's really trying. <laughs> he got stuck. So long, gay Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, someone might get mad at me calling me, but mini boss, okay? Sub petty minion boss. There you go. It's all sorted now. Yeah. What, what I'm getting is, if it's a console, a, a graphics card, a video game, just wait. Just wait. If it's an if anything, it is, just wait. If it is noun. <laughs> yeah. Especially with like expensive stuff, like graphics cards, you don't want to waste seven hundred dollars. Yeah. On a thing that's broken, or you're gonna get cheaper in like a month or yeah, better. Yeah, you waited a long time. You you've waited years for this series, so you, can buy you know, cool your tits. Don't you know? You can wait yeah. a little bit longer to make sure that you know all the testing's done, and you don't get all the issues that might come with the you know first batch that comes out and all that stuff. And everybody who cool, says like, right? yeah, but they're so so cheap. Though. It's like they're not cheaper. The 20 series was just super expensive. <laughs> yeah, the 20 series was just like not good at all, and no one bought them. Yeah, it was so shit. It was I think not good at all. They they weren't a good value, and nobody bought yeah. them. So yeah, yeah, that's that's as always. Um. So a lot of people with those 1070s and 1060s out there are gonna get a big fucking upgrade if they go with these 30 series cards. Yeah. Has anyone by chance seen the Bitwit video where he goes to a, a to a to a store where they were camping outdoors for a week just to get a hands on one of those graphics cards and had like super little stock anyways. It's like insane. <laughs> I have not. They were they were camping in front. <clears throat> so people that wanted like one of those graphics cards they were camping almost a week before they were released in the stores and they almost made like a little village made like rules like who was there if you don't come back in an hour you're gonna get uh put off the list that you were in that you were next in line it's like ugh. it's like insane mm. it was interesting to watch though but still man imagine camping in front of a electronic store like a micro center <laughs> just to get a graphics card for a week well 
it's gonna let you play all your favorite games in HD, which are commonly games that, like, don't even remotely require something like that, like a lot of people talk about. I guarantee you most of the people who have those, those 3090s, they don't even have a 4K or 8K screen. Like, I still have 1080s. You don't have to have a 4K screen to see a difference. <clears throat> like, on my 1440p monitor, if you play at 4K, there is a there is a notable, noticeable difference that it looks nicer. All right. is, is that worth the, the ratio, though? As in, you're paying for something that's able to output at X, and you're, you're choosing X negative? Because of other hardware, and I think what Mel's touching on there well, in spirit is more sort of do with the fact that most people aren't even aware of this. Yeah, you would have to have like to get. Obviously, getting a a, a true 4K monitor will give you better stuff. Um, so a, a a a 1440p monitor that is playing games digitally that are 4K, like there there will still be a difference. Um, I mean, I, I guess it's up to you and your eyes and. What frame rates you want? I mean, it's all it's all a give and take. So, but yeah, but downscaled for uh, as Michael Forner says, generally downscaled 4K looks better than upscaled 1080p. Like um, like with uh, the Phantom Pain when I played Metal Gear Solid 5, I played it in 4K because it was locked to 60 FPS anyway. <laughs> uh, reload, reload, reload. Wait, now it's. Is it now it's actually dead? Is that what you're about to say? <laughs> I did a reload that showed again. Wait, are you on a on a pause screen? Uh, just yeah. Now? Yeah. I will. Out. I will move up and down on it. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, you should be fine. <clears throat> I'm waiting for it to move up and down to know. All is good. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should be. Right. Yeah. Move up and down. Refresh that bitch. Um. Finally played Amnesia of the Dark Descent, just here to inform you that you will be paying for my therapy. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Hopefully we get that kind of experience with the new one. Uh, rate the Kings of Westeros 1 through 10, starting with Aegon the <laughs> First. No. <laughs> More like Gagon the First. Ah, oh, they're right back. Let's just do it off the cuff. Um, though I will talk about how, uh, I can't remember whose stream was, was was streaming. I was talking about how um, Tywin was like the best leader for, for the for Westeros, and I got loads of pushback. They were like, he was a psycho. He would have gotten everyone killed. Blah blah. blah. And I was just like, oh man, you don't understand. Wartime. Tywin. As long as his family are taken care of, his investment is making a kingdom that functions properly. Like he doesn't actually want everyone dead, and have his family standing above them. The whole reason yeah, he did the you Red Wedding. The king of king of shit. You know? Yeah, uh, he wanted the Red Wedding to be done to avoid more body counts and destruction. I mean, also to win, but still. <laughs> it's like, it's, uh, it's a good move. Uh, and um, I think he's constantly seen specifically as absolute villain, and it's like, okay, but... Uh, different circumstances. Wasn't he like, this isn't in the show, but when he was Hand of the King for Ares, um... He was like, he was like beloved throughout the uh, kingdom. And people thought he was fucking great. Use the ghost as steps. I don't even. Can I do that? Oh great. Oh good. Well, that's it. <laughs> this level. <laughs> there's a lot of things that are murdering me at this level. Like you got to reset. It's horrible. We got to push through though. Part of the deal. Howdy rags. Hello. I want to say thank you for everything. I was going to drive my Corvette going over 200 and go off a cliff two years ago. Oh shit. Uh, then I found Jeez. you. You helped me become a better person. I can't thank you enough. Oh, oh wow. Hot um, I'm glad you're okay and I'm glad things are going well. Uh, thanks for thanks for letting me know. Hope things uh, continue to be good. Uh, well, yeah, thank you very much. Glad I could, glad I could help, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, Shadow can be one of the best characters when he's well written. Unfortunately, he's kind of just evolved into Edge. Nah, nah, no, no. <laughs> one of the best hey. characters. Get out of here. Don't deny Shadow the hey. the future that he was owed, like Movie Bob. All right. Yeah, Trump stole Shadow's Halloween. You fuck. Shadow should be on Mars by now. Mars. Think about that. I like how Friggy would even entertain the possibility. <laughs> No way. <laughs> no way. Edgy hedgehog. Come on. Wow. 
Shadow Shadow the Hedgehog. You guys just viewed blatant bigotry. How does it feel? <laughs> well, bigotry against hedgehogs. Absolutely. Hey, listen, Sana. Yeah, I think Shadow the Hedgehog can agree that bigotry is not cool. <laughs> Could you imagine a PSA starring Shadow the Hedgehog? Hey, it's not cool to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> You know what isn't cool? Grab an AK-47 and shoot racism. That's the way to do it. Did I hear racism? Yes, you did. That erection Remember, is warranted. Kids, Sonic the Hedgehog says no to trans rights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> Sonic, you can't say that. He wasn't always just an edgy character. Um, he... Isn't his inception... Name is Shadow the Hedgehog. His inception is Edge. Yeah. It's like Savage Oppressed. Well, you know how, like, uh, with... <laughs> well, it's oppressed. like how with... <laughs> it's like how with, uh, when they were doing their mood mood board for Kratos for God of War 1, the, the one in the middle was brutal. That was their word. For Shadow, it was Edge. <laughs> like, absolutely, it was Edge. <laughs> it it's... was just a picture of the edge of a table. Yeah, like, when writing him, you have to write him while on the edge of the table. <laughs> yeah. You need it to work that way, okay? Respect Shadow Fringy, you fuck. No. Wow. Um, As if Edge is always bad. Okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, that's our issue. That's exactly what I said. The true hot takes come out at the end, folks. Yeah. Uh, Shadow, you mean Edgy the Hedgy? <laughs> edgy the Hedgy. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> edgy the edgy. This, bit, this, this is in a super chat. They follow up with saying, stolen joke. Also, hi, Rag, you had some doggo. Oh, hello, thank you. Check that out. was good, edgy the hedgy. And Check. besides, jokes were meant to be stolen. Oh, of course. <laughs> you, you don't tell them so that that was the only uh, time they're ever heard. Yeah. Spread that shit, they're funny. The they should have called it edgy the hedgy instead. I would have bought that shit. <laughs> yeah, that would have been way better. <laughs> All the diehard, the, I'm edgy to edgy. the diehard shadow fans would have been like, "No, <laughs> you're yeah. ruining it. <laughs> you're ruining Shadow the Hedgehog. Is yeah. that possible? You're making him cringe. Stop. He was so cool. He had a gun. Even Sonic Boom makes fun of the fact that he's just edgy, and that's it. Like, I'm sure there's more the to Sonic him than just that. But the idea that he's one of the greatest characters ever written is like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just say we don't quite believe it, that's all. Uh, check out Ronald the Barbarian, tis a foreign mature animated film. I still think Ronald is a funny name, just saying. I know there was Ronald some cartoon is. Dave the Barbarian, but I can't remember if it was good or not. I never saw it. Hmm. Dave the Barbarian. Hey guys, I was wondering what you uh, look for in a guest for EFAP. Hmm. What do we look for in a guest, ranks? Oh, willingness to come on and actually, like, talk about stuff. What a high um, bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like it when they're... Like, when, they, when they pay attention, when they've got stuff to say, when they're ready to participate in the conversation. Uh, they don't, you know, people who are ready to talk about stuff and things and... The, like, the, I, I guess just willing to have a conversation about topics that we could discuss back and forth. They can't be dismissive and, you know, but basically, like, yeah, we don't have a high bar. We really don't. I mean, they show up and they want to talk about things. And we way prefer guests who talk too much than guests who don't talk, like, at all. Mm hmm. Really, uh, you know. Really high bar, yeah. Of course, it would help if they have an interest that is going to be relevant to some way. Media coverage, like their channel kind of represents it. And then, this is kind of an elusive one, but has chemistry with us. If possible, that'd yeah. be great. Right. If not, then, you know, unfortunate, but what can you do? I, someone asked me why Shadow doesn't work. <laughs> like, I'm not... <laughs> so... I, is he unemployed? I, I figure, it's I figure what he doesn't work. Saying, right. I, fi I figure it goes without, 
I, I figure it goes without saying, right, Shadow the Hedgehog could obviously potentially work because there are no bad ideas. Or at least that's kind of like the position I like to uh, subscribe to. But let's get real. What are the odds that an edgy hedgehog in a video game like Sonic the Hedgehog, which is meant to be like goofy adventures, how is that ever not going to come across as totally stupid? I, and I think someone was bigotry. A tragic backstory being black and using guns makes Shadow a bad character and only edgy being <laughs> black. Makes... <laughs> um, I mean, a tragic backstory. It's all framed through the ledge of he is an anthropomorphic hedgehog. Like, <laughs> it's really hard to take it seriously. And what was this tragic uh, backstory? He was I, made on like a space station and pause? he was in love with Maria. Yeah. I just want to pause you right there. You can continue right along. I just want to. So I used the tornado move, or whatever you want to call it, on a lot of the enemies. And I couldn't. I knew that this, this, this part. <laughs> carries on as soon as I've killed them all and I was like where did one of them go he got he got stuck on the chandelier <laughs> look at that little boy go <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up help me <laughs> uh, oh. oh poor guy anyway carry on um well I, I like wasn't I, I now because again i i have not played sonic adventure 2 i've just heard many many things wasn't his whole backstory that he was like created in a lab and was alive for 50 years and there was someone called maria who was like his girlfriend who he loved and then he sacrifices himself at the end of the game and talks about maria as he falls down to earth and then he actually no just kidding he is alive like wasn't that basically the story of of, of shadow I'm sure that there's so much context that I'm missing. Um, <laughs> that was mildly sarcastic. I don't think that the context is going to help that much. It's an incredible story and you're trampling all over it with your hatred. I can't believe you're making fun of the only hedgehog that could run faster than the speed of dark. Speed of dark? <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> speed of dark. So you saw it, uh, it was light. assumed he was dead, but no, but he was so cool and edgy that they had to bring him back. I mean, that's basic. That's he, probably dude, what it was. He's unironically like a fan favorite, and yeah, the, no, it, I know he, he was built to be that. Yeah, he is fan service. You know, if there ever was such a thing. Just, I am fourteen, and this is deep. He's a he's a he's a dark, I, yeah, shadowy yeah, figure. I think that's true. I love how someone listening to this might have been like enjoying all the other discussions. They're like, why this? Why are you hating so hard on <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog? <laughs> well, because know, you never know what's gonna happen in EFA, That's why. Moving speed of black, <laughs> like a hedgehog around. Um. So, Lady J is going to be on EFAB? Well, yes. It happened today because obviously these are still back in, in 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 Back to the Future. These these ones. Uh, you should get Robert Meyer Burnett as a guest. I'm afraid I am. I I know that uh, the 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 Phantom Menace lads have interacted with with this person and and they're they rep they they're, they're they're involved with comics in, in a significant way. I'm just I'm I'm unaware of of all the intricacies and significance of that. I'm so but but you know possible in the future. Play Amy instead of Sonic. Same levels, but baby mode. You think this game will fully defeat me? Baby mode? That doesn't no. sound cool. Yeah. I want to play as Hedgehog Edgy the Hedgy. No baby mode. <laughs> I should have played as Shadow, Shadow, actually. Son of the Hedgehog says no to babies. Sonic the Hedgehog fucks babies. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> is, is Edgy the Hedgy the hard mode of this game? Because everyone's saying that Rose and Team, Team Rose or whatever are, are the easy mode. So I'm assuming that's the case. Why is it for all the girl players? Because girls are shit at video games? Exactly oh. that. <clears throat> Jump? Oh. Sonic the Hedgehog says girls are shitty at video games. Oh, the camera there. What is happening? What the it's, fuck? it's all very chaotic. Okay. Okay. Is, uh, really cool. Um, okay, so I just looked up some cuts for Sonic Adventure 2. There's a scene where, like, Shadow is in a tomb and Maria's there. And he's like, Maria! And she says, 
This is their literal dialogue. Shadow, I beg of you, please do it for me. For all of the people on that planet. Sayonara, Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> Maria, I still remember what I promised you. For the people. <laughs> find... uh, of this planet. Uh, what did he say? Oh no. I, he screams, I promise you revenge. Revenge is in capital letters. <laughs> you just don't understand the content, easy. mate. That's all it is. And isn't the plot in that game that, like, people think that Sonic's causing mayhem, but it's Shadow? They don't look alike. One of them's <laughs> is blue. It, wait, isn't yeah. that the plot of Super Mario Sunshine? Yes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's dumb as fuck in that game, too. It's dumb, too, yeah. But at least at the beginning, it's just a silhouette. As opposed to this game, it. where they're very different oh. characters. Oh, all those, all those people on that island are racist. They think all Italians are the same, even yeah. though one of them is black. It's really fucked up, dude. And uh, Nintendo haven't apologized for it. Kind of disappointing, you know? Mm. You'd think they, of all, would, would have the balls to stand up and do what's right. Come on, guys, we get here. Yeah. I'm further than ever with this amount of lives. I can I can do this. I can yeah. beat the spooky levels. I'm sure of it. What is this place? It's like they when they were recording, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> this is gonna be just, goofy shit, guys. Real, and that's how you're supposed to say the line. They just had all the emotions just listed randomly. Whoa. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if Abby's model was replaced with Jared? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna say it wouldn't be funny. Oh fuck. Not died yet. Must be good. Uh, me, an intellect util. Why do they need to kill Ellie? Fireflies destroy the child, corrupt them all. <laughs> well,. It worked out, you know. I'm sure we'll get a The Last of Us three, and it'll it'll make it all I really mean, come you together. I think not, right? Like they're not gonna make another one. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was a success monetarily, right? It was, was yeah, but does that? I don't know. Uncharted four was a success. That's probably will, the last one for a while. Will that company be around long enough, considering like all the internal stuff that's happening? Nah, they'll they'll and... definitely be around, like for sure. Naughty Dog is hugely successful, and they still have a really good reputation. I guess my thing is more of like, would they really make another Last of Us game? I don't think they will. I oh, could fuck. be wrong. Well, I gotta fight a I mean, Chungus. obviously I don't want them to. I want them to make something new. Something that's a little bit more gamey. But I don't want them to touch Jack and Daxter at this point. Well, we don't want anyone touching anything, really. That's just how everything works at this point. Everything's gonna get worse. Leave it all alone now. Go make oh, your own stuff. Oh, Crash 4, evidently. Yeah. That was a nice surprise, though, right? Um, well, yeah, it was, um, but it's really good. And, and it's hard. I'm playing the last second. Uh, yeah, it's probably too early <laughs> talking about these sorts of spoilers for those of you who are super into the Crash Bandicoot lore. Of which there are many. There is time travel in this game, and it does the thing I don't like, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a goofy little game, so whatever. Crash Bandicoot. Uh-oh, am I about to get stun locked? Oh, no. I'm okay, guys, I'm okay. Uh, the Last of Us sales dived off a cliff. Most game sales tend to go really far down on the second week, though, so I don't know. And the game is very successful. Like, I'm sorry, you, you can't you can't convince me otherwise. That game was hugely monetarily successful. <clears throat> As, but, I mean, you know, critically, that's gonna be, you know, if half the fans hate it, it doesn't matter if it's yeah, not the, like a Yeah, we know metric. they're aware of that, so... They have to be. You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. <sighs> Wasting those lives. Don't laugh, Sonic. We're doing bad, okay, buddy? This is not the laughing Um, Invite the Snark Tank crew on. Who the Snark Tank crew? That sounds familiar. That'd be Chris Raygun, right? Uh, anyone else you remember, or was it just him? Uh, 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I don't know. <laughs> Chad is bringing up that the um, the sale drop off and amount of returns uh, returns made records. Oh, and okay. sales always list the sales sold to stores, not the ones sold to <laughs> that made it to customers. But so sales sold to stores are the profits that the game ultimately made, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm I do wonder because I heard it had a huge drop off with this second week. It was like eighty something percent. It was like crazy. I mean. You didn't it also set records in terms of uh, sales? Yeah, I'm pretty so. sure it was like the fastest selling PlayStation 4 game. <clears throat> oh, fuck hell. This game's scaring me now. Like, it come so close to killing myself all the time. Just right, not doing that. I. Oh, what is. What am I supposed to do with this? Question mark, help. Speed! I don't want to use the ghost's steps to move along. Sanic. Sanic. Yeah, care of it. Things. It seems to want so, me to use. Okay. Someone asked me how I feel about silver. Another terrible idea. <laughs> it's no use. It's no yeah. use. It's no use. It's no... <laughs> Good times. <laughs> But there's a boss that can stun lock you to death. How do you do that? How do you make a video game where that's possible? <laughs> the Iblis trigger, that was the whole thing, right? Sonic was the Iblis trigger. Um. People saying like, oh, use Hobie attacks. Like, you saw that shit. It worked three times and then it didn't work the fourth time. <laughs> what do you want me to do? It's like, oh, play it better. Alright. <laughs> you need to believe in the cards. The heart of your cards. It's like, it's like Dark Souls. You just gotta get good. Dark Souls. Appar mm. My opinion is uninformed. Yes, I know it is. I don't care about Sonic the Hedgehog lore. Like, you got me. <laughs> wow. Talking about Sonic the Hedgehog lore without knowing fuck all about it. Classic Fringman. What a dingleberry. Fuck, give me a ring. Give me a rack. Ow. Stop flattening me with your giant flip flappers. Um... <gasps> Thoughts on the boogie fiasco? On a related note, Rags, I just found out Arkansas is a duty-to-retreat state. I'm so sorry for you. Wait, what? Well, oh, is it to do with the fact that somebody rocked up to Boogie House? Is, is Rags not there? Ragu! Okay, well, yes, it's probably about the boogie thing with the gun. That hilarious picture. Uh, oh. But yeah, right. um... A lot of people have been discussing whether or not he's in any trouble for it. I guess we'll find out. I, I don't hugely care. Uh, it was really weird yeah, of the, of the person to show up there and do that. Um, yeah. And from what I understand, Boogie overreacted. Uh, I don't know. So. Well, the problem was that he shouldn't have shown it on the internet. Like, that was a bad <clears throat> idea. This should have just been something to do with the police, right? Yeah, I think so. Got it. Got it. But, um... It. Yeah, I don't know about the... the Duty to retreat. Oh, thing. apparently Boogie threatened to kill the guy on uh, Kim Star's channel. Ah, that's probably what got mm -hmm. him then. Yeah, it's. Wouldn't that get him in some trouble? I, I I'm like, sure I, it did. Like it's been like a week or two since, I, since I've seen about this. I think they were like on. on I guess it's Drama Lord. I don't think Kim says anything else, right? Right. Uh, it's like, yeah, if you ever show up, I would probably kill you or some... some oh, is something. that... I mean, that's probably, like, a normal thing that somebody would say, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then the okay. other person, I don't even know who the fuck that is. I, I, I literally have no idea, but he looks insane, if you ask me, so I'm not right. surprised. He's not, like, his Twitter pres presence is, like, insane as well, so I, I don't know what's it, what even his logic is. Like, just going there is like... Uh, uh, uh. In, yeah, I mean, it's a stupid thing to do. Yeah. Oh, property, like, okay, what, what do you think is gonna happen? You could, you could be dead now, like, legit. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Fuck no! Why does my life suck? Yeah, and he showed up. He was filming. It. I think he was filming it actually, or live tweeting it or something. I actually don't. I don't know. But yeah, it's uh. 
Yeah. That's yeah, there's, right. there's, there's just not a lot to say about it. It's just like, I guess the, the legal tisms that'll happen will happen. Yeah. I can't know that it was an overreaction for sure without, I guess, being in that situation and knowing what happened. Um, but yeah. Don't go to people's houses. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's fucking in case weird. that went without saying. Yeah. Oh. Um, Knuckles, stop chuckling and learn how to drive so you can escape the Egg Terminator. You're almost a grown-up. Oh. Yeah, you need to be... If you're... <laughs> if you're a grown-up, you gotta be driving. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Mel? What are you talking about? <laughs> that was such a weird moment for me. It's like, you're a grown-up and you don't know how to drive? It's like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why, why'd you keep saying it that way? It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Sonic, you're the fast one. You can do it. There you go. Fuck, I lost all my rangs. Why would you do that? Knuckles, break through a wall. Give me some rangs. This game looks so fucking clunky, honey. <laughs> it's a nightmare, yeah. kinda. Oh no, I always lose rangs on this bit. I'm so gonna die. Sonic. Wait, a, a Sonic game with clunky controls? Perish the thought. I like how it's just come me sh shitting on Sonic. <laughs> Petually. Well, like, I'm being watched by a- Fuck you, stupid auto ring thing. One of the other Fuck stupid you, fucking characters thing. picked up a stupid fucking ring, which means I can't use it to home on and move to the next area. <laughs> fucking <laughs> fat-ass knuckles over here just picking up the rings. No, Who's like you want to make a game where you control three people simultaneously? <laughs> I thought that was a good idea. Like when you started saying it, I just saw Tails in the back and was like, Oh, a ring! <laughs> like, I hate it. I hate it so much because it was causing me so much trouble throughout. But you have to tap B when you see a ring and it, it trails you along all of them. But one of your yeah. other characters can accidentally pick them up. Oh, cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Why must you do this? Um... Oh yeah, oh wait, Rags, are you here? Yes, um, I am uh, I'm here. Someone said, uh, thoughts on the boogie fiasco, and on a related note, I just found out that Arkansas is a duty to retreat state, and I'm so sorry for you. Uh, I'm fine with the idea of duty to retreat. It's not often what it's portrayed as. Um, so it, it's not like you have to run away. It's just one of those, if... You know, if you can if you can get away reasonably, you have to. Um, but it's pretty much what it is. Um, when it comes to the boogie thing, I don't know enough of the facts right now. Um, mm. I I think it was just two two losers, quite frankly. Uh, I don't care who wins in whatever upcoming legal thing that happens with it. Maybe boogie boogie probably he definitely boogie fucking overreacted. There's no reason for you to fucking go inside. Just go inside. Just go inside and just stay inside. All you have to do is go inside and stay inside. The guy didn't have a gun, YouTuber right? Came was... to your house and is bugging you. And if you need to call the police, call the police if they don't leave. But the idea that you're going in and getting a gun and firing a warning shot, like boom, mm. he's gonna he's gonna fucking sue your ass for use of a deadly weapon, and he's gonna fucking win. Because firing Wait, a warning that, shot so is use of a deadly did, did weapon. Did Boogie fire a warning shot? That's yeah. what I heard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, the guy. But the weird thing is, the guy didn't have a gun, right? Or am I misremembering this? No, he was just on the property. So, like, why wouldn't Boogie just call the police and say there's a dude? Boogie's a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay. Boogie's a mentally unstable fuckwit. Wait, okay, so, so, because from what I remember, from what I remember about this story, what happened was somebody showed up at Boogie's house. And there was the video of them like ringing the doorbell, and that was what happened. I'm guessing that something's happened after this now. Like what you're talking about is what's followed. Probably this was part of the whole incident, as far as I'm aware. Oh, no. okay. So he, so he's like legit in a lot of trouble then, if he's fired. Possibly. Uh, I, that's I what think, I hear. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if I was in Boogie's shoes, I would have just gone inside and stayed inside and carried on with my life. And if the guy didn't leave, I would have called the cops. I was like, yeah, there's this dude at my door. He's, like, fucking harassing me. Like, you can't just hang out at people's doors and not leave and bug people. Like, that's, that, that's, I, I know the word doesn't, 
Yeah, I, I know the word doesn't have much meaning anymore, but that's actually harassment. You can't do that yeah. to people. It's fucking course, rude. Yeah. You can't fuck with people on their property in front of their doors and stuff. You can't, you can't do that shit. Whether or not you can or can't, you absolutely shouldn't. Yeah, you, sh you certainly out. shouldn't. You should never yeah. go to a YouTuber's house. I mean, you yeah, shouldn't harass terrible. anyone, but especially not like a YouTuber or anything like that. Man. Wait, why not especially a YouTuber? Oh, because of the... Po you know, it's po their popularity and their ability to amplify all the stuff that happens and... Just oh, do you mean like you... they'll f like it's not a good idea to go for them because they can be a new kind of uh, part of it, and they can make it a big deal, and they can amplify the whole event, and, and when it happens, and that could get caught up in news circles, and it's totally bad for you. Yeah, um, I think that makes sense. It's um... but maybe they're sick of it from other people, so they're going to be really uh, they're going to they're going to overshoot it with uh, you, like Boogie clearly did. Yeah. Boogie's an idiot. Uh... <clears throat> On an interesting note that a lot of Western mobile games have a lot of pay-to-win mechanics, so quite a bit of successful Eastern games are mostly for the waifu and husbando. Thoughts on the two difference? What a weird way to write all of that. <laughs> a lot of Western mobile games have a lot of pay-to-win mechanics. And quite a bit of successful Eastern games are mostly for the waifu and husbando. So the dichotomy is Western <laughs> mobile games have pay to win mechanics, while successful Eastern games are for the waifu and husbando. Nobody tell them about gacha games. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I have like no idea what that is. I'm just, I'm, uh. I don't know what any of those words mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, oh, am I dead? Fuck. ER question, someone <laughs> This is an ER question. Hi, Rags. Hello. Now that the Proud Boys are a WS group, is chanting USA a dog whistle? If so, USA, USA, USA. Also, please watch Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life on YouTube. Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life. <laughs> That's the, the animated vision of the green text, right? It's terrifying in its own way. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm sure you can chant USA without it being a Nazi dog whistle, at I least for a few more days. Case, yeah. <laughs> a few more days. <laughs> there once was a doggo named Rags who fell for a man in a mask. He asked for his seed and then he took it leave. Never mind, rhyming is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's that. Mm-hmm. Just just ended just like that. Uh, hey Mola, just wanted to say thank you for all the hard work. Keep it up, mate. Heart. Why? Thank you. And uh, I'm glad you folks are enjoying it. Even with all of our hot takes, these people still listen to us. Can you believe it? <laughs> we're just idiots. Oh shit, we're live. No. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Doki Doki Literature Club for EFAP Gaming Dumbos. It looks like that's gonna be the new thing. <laughs> what? Why? I don't know. Because Hardcore Henry eventually happened, I guess. But I already know what happens in that one, so I don't know. That game we was... Spoil <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Wow, are you trying to ruin it? Theo, what the fuck? Yes. Apparently it's very spoilable and he doesn't want us to look at anything to do with it. All right. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That game was very much ruined for a lot of people because it got so it, it was a fad. Mm hmm. <clears throat> uh, Scoop, Scooby Doo live action for EFAP movies? When? <laughs> I, I don't see why we wouldn't do that eventually. This is, <laughs> that's that's quite a movie, you know. That movie, man. <laughs> yeah. I just remember Mr. Bean is in the. He, yeah, Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, he's he, in a robot suit. But he was trapped in a well because of a. That movie is so weird. It is. I that was like a odd one. Yeah. Oh no, it's spooky. I think that they're talking about when I switched the avatar for the first time. Revealed vamp Mola to the world. Terrifying stuff. Uh, yeah, I still like Shadow. Got a tattoo of him. That might have been a bit much. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> permanently on you. <laughs> 
Uh, play Team Dark. This game is frustrating as hell, but nostalgic. Okay, the nostalgia for me is pretty much entirely worn off. <laughs> I'm just trying to beat it at this point. <laughs> Which is going to take a while, because uh, I find it to be quite cancerous. And you know what? That's a combo of the shitty mechanics and how shit I am at the game. Um, did you hear Boogie fired a gun at Quintin? Quint the guy's name was Quinton? Oh, do you mean he looked like Quentin? Quentin? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine it, it was like Quentin Reviews who right. went to visit him? I, this is insane, like, this story, how it's evolved. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, I like one anime as funtism, a break from subversism. <laughs> hey, animes can be subversive. Yeah. They subvert your expectations. Right, Theo? One Punch Man? Oh yeah, that was a yeah. good example. I fucking yeah. love One Punch Man. Season two. ER said to, <laughs> that it's not worthwhile. Um, that's oh, not yeah, reassuring okay. at all. It's, no. <laughs> uh, it's a shame. I love it's that shit. It, it really, to me, feels like I shouldn't watch it just to not sully season one. Yeah, I <laughs> think so, too. Probably don't. How's chat reacting to that? We'll have to have a look, see, see what everyone's Probably. saying. I, that shouldn't that shouldn't be a hot take, and if it is, I'm ashamed of you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, though? About, uh, about One Punch Man season two. Oh. Uh... My father was watching Big Bang Theory the other day. I overheard a character say that Indiana is not impactful to the plot of Raiders. Please tell this is incorrect. Big Bang Theory Indiana insults me. Indiana is not... How... How does one say that at Well, all? hang on a second. Not being impactful to the plot could mean a lot of things anyway. Like... It's a, I'm assuming they mean his wants and desires and actions don't define how the plot moves, in which case I'd be like, you have to be wrong. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to define it. Um, but even if a character wasn't the one that was pushing the plot necessarily, it doesn't- that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, that's like my, my new video. Oh of. my <laughs> god! I did see- oh, by the way, just for clarification, because I saw some people saying character development isn't when characters change, it's when characters are multifaceted. It's both. It can yeah. mean both or one or the other. These definitions are not helpful. Is kind of the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, it's, that's a tough one. Like, what does it mean for a character to develop? It's like, um... I suppose, because if a character believes in X, and they go on a whole adventure that reaffirms X is right, you could argue yeah. that they have developed, and yet not changed? Mm -hmm. so I'd it's... call it develop- like, I'd call it development under the assumption that their beliefs about X and all that, like, have been challenged repeatedly and they've found new answers and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. A complicated one. But, I, I imagine the, the big thing behind that video for me was just the people shitting on static characters is a bad. Well, it's frustrating because there are many static characters who are better than dynamic characters. Um, or more over Babu good Frick. stories with static <laughs> characters. Abu Frick, for instance, yeah. Um, and it's the idea that I'd rather have a static character than a character whose development makes no sense. Like, I'd mm -hmm. rather that. Fucking character. Jack That's Sparrow. The like, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jack Sparrow's whole appeal is that he is Jack Sparrow. I mean, so a lot of, uh, a lot of your types of, like, your prior row, he's static. He's very static. Sherlock Holmes. Um, pretty much any- Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, pretty much any, like, detective story where it's like, one detective going on, like, adventures in every new book is usually mm -hmm. a static character. Homer Simpson, basically every sitcom character ever. Um, yeah, as much as they will learn lessons, those lessons are pretty much not relevant yeah. <laughs> soon I mean, after. I'm pretty sure Family Guy did a joke about that. So, did you learn something today? Nope! <laughs> and that's just the end of the episode. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, uh, watch the new video. I like it, but I made it, so I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the new video. It's like, I like my video, you're like, wait a minute. It's good to have pride in your work, right? Yeah. I guess so. Oh, I absolutely Somewhat. think so. Well, that's one of the things we do in EFAP. We're like, hey, know your know your worth, know what you've done. Don't don't shy away from being like, hey, I worked hard on this fuck. It's good it's writing good. can't be taught. I disagree. Um, I know that Stephen or, or Stephen King's position is that um, a mediocre writer can become good, but that a bad writer can never become good. Oh, can never become mediocre. I think 
God damn it, I can't remember. It was in his it was in his uh memoirs. He was talking about how he believes that there's like four tiers of writers. There's bad, which is most. Then there's um then there's decent, which is a larger portion, but you know, but less. Then mm. there's good, which is the smaller one, and then there's like excellent, which is you know, super rare. That's his position. But I don't get it. What do you mean good writing can't be taught? What would it be at that point? Just luck? Well, yeah, I mean, exactly Instinct. right. I, I, I mean, I do, I do think that like people have innate, uh, you know, preclect. It's probably not the right way. You know, people are innately better at some things than other people, but I don't think it can't be taught. I mean. Yeah. Surely, like, and plus, I would rather advocate for a world in which you can learn to become good at anything. Um, yeah, I mean, why talent would you... is inherent, craft is taught, yeah. I mean... Yeah, why would we want to give up and be like, well, you can't teach it anyway? <laughs> it's like, well, wow. I've seen, yeah, because I've seen, I think I saw an artist who said, yeah, no, I think being good at art is like, you're born that way. And I'm like, nah, I think, I think, I think you learn. I feel like learning is way more important than whether or not you're naturally good at something. It's like... Yeah. It's like the natural and then the multiplier is, is what you're taught, almost. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. surely we steam. would like... To, I would like to believe, though, that even if you're not naturally good at writing, that you could potentially become, like, the greatest writer ever. I just prefer the world where we believe that anybody can be whatever they want, really, as long as they work hard enough. The American dream. Well, the dream for everybody, really. Yeah. yeah. But still a good dream. Uh... And that's it for the uh, the super chat catch up ones. Um, oh wow! Which means we've got a block now that are entirely this episode, and uh, well, I'm a, I, I don't know how long our crew has in them. Um, I, don't I only have... got an hour and a half before I have to hop off. I, in terms of like energy, I don't have much. I had a very, <laughs> I had a lot going on today and yesterday, just ugh, stuff. So, just been a weird couple days for me. Um, just for just sleeping and getting energy and doing stuff and being in and out and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we covered a good video today. I really like that. I'm I'm legit excited to see this part too. I I I'm very curious what a a post Rise of Skywalker Patrick Willems has to say after he said all that. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be a ride, and I think. Maybe we will try and get a bonus EFAP in here somewhere, because the fact is, we're actually behind on our overall quota anyway. If we got, I think, oh. I think we're only, we're like one behind our overall or something, so we'll probably maybe try and shove an extra one. We also got to do a meme fap recording, so. Yeah, that would be, yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely down for those. Um, and, uh, yeah, so maybe we'll do that and then pick these up on that, that bonus episode, or we'll, uh, we'll do... Um, of course, the, the catch-up streams that we normally do. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll just we'll tie it off there. It just seems to make sense uh, to do it like that. So, I guess right. uh, we'll do some we'll do some plug-in, shall we? Um, mm -hmm. who, who wants to? I mean, you know, I can't choose between you guys. I can't put one first and one last. I'm rags. That's sure. rags. <laughs> um, you know what? We'll go from from Theo to Metal to Fringy. That seems to make the most sense, doesn't it? Just by colors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really don't mind which order it goes in, but fuck it. Hey, Theo, what are you making? What's the newest video you've released? Uh, geez. I no. Uh, stay away from my channel at least until I make something. Um, hopefully, um. Kind of working on a video, it's dead in the water. We'll try and trying to get back to it. Fuck it, I don't know. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what is this video, and why are you sharing your wrong opinions? It is a critique of Devil May Cry Five. Uh, oh, because I think it's the best game I've played in the past decade, and my favorite game oh, yeah. I have ever played. Wow. So I want to talk to oh, you, want to talk the about correct it. perspective. The correct yeah. perspective. <laughs> I've heard it's. I've uh, heard it's really good. It's fucking awesome, man. Even it's with like, artificial barriers, it, it, is, uh, it is gaming game. It is a gamey game, and I love those types of games. That's why I'm having so much fun with Crash Four. I just want more gamey games. That's it. Yeah. I've had a script that I've been working on. And that's been vaguely ready that I've been working at for ages now. I just need to actually yeah. record it and, you know, do the video making part of it. And yeah. Awesome. Hopefully that'll happen at some point. Um, Metal, you're next. That's me. Hooray. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I will go back to, to John Wick uh, soon, probably on Monday, because I have Monday and Tuesday off, so... Uh, wow, I'll the jump... video is releasing on Monday, that's so cool. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, no, because I've put that on hold because of all the moving stuff. But now I'm I'm settled in. I I I, I, I see the whole uh, the boys watching, and taking notes as a little gateway to go back into the to the notes stuff. Mm. That's where it all begins. Notes, 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 notes. Yeah. Uh, probably gonna watch that movie a bunch of times. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go back there. Uh, 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 in between that, I'll I'll stream. Uh, I'll go back to streaming on Monday, which will also be the Dranklich stream we're gonna do on Monday. So if you want to catch that live, mm. that's on Twitch. If you don't use Twitch, it's gonna be on the archive channel on YouTube. Gonna catch that vod there probably the next day. And then I'll just go streaming, working, doing video. Gotta got a, got a full schedule, do stuff. That's about got it. Got exciting things ahead. This is gonna be the busiest month of the year for us, probably, in terms of just doing things. Yeah. We plan too many things at once. That is true. We're gonna do them all. Um, but yeah, Fringy, what have you been up to? So I made a video after like two years. <laughs> Um, so, go watch it, and if you like it, that's good. Um, hopefully, hopefully more eventually, I'd like to keep making them. Um, and then a couple other things, but, you know, we'll get to them later. Well, that's they, it. They, yeah, there you go. Uh, exciting stuff. As for Rags and myself, uh, you're up to, you're doing the Mandalorianisms, right, Rags? Yeah, that is the one. Outside of the other things I've mentioned, like um, Doom Annihilation, no, is it? It is Doom Annihilation, isn't it? So that, the double Doom Armageddon, the 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 back to back Mulans for EFAP movies. Um, we got Doom a couple of extra recordings are getting done, as well as uh, a few EFAP gamings along the way. And I'm gonna stream all of Dark Descent, and then hopefully all of Rebirth. Fun, fun Halloween floops, and then on Halloween itself, we got EFAP planned. And possibly EFAP gaming. It's gonna be a riot. All of the spooks. And the second we hit November 1st, everyone will be sad. Because no more yeah. ghosts and vampires and werewolves and no, Frankenstein. No, it'll only be th Thanksgiving time, and that's only for, like, some of you. In yeah. fact, only one person here. <laughs> um, myself, great. working on some stuff. I'll talk more about it, I guess, uh, maybe next time or something. Once, once more things have happened and more things are... Get getting there with stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What else is there? That's about it. EFAP will come back. Hope you guys had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for the um, the fan art that we we went through. That shit's awesome. We will, like yeah, I said, I've been collecting wonderful. collecting lots of memes. Meme fap will be coming as well as uh, very kind donations and just hanging out with us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the triple hot take. Even though you incessantly tell us none of them were hot takes, we know that they are hot takes, okay? Yes, they are. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, and the cover of the video. And thank you, Jay, for, for popping in. Um, but that's about yeah, it. Anything else anyone wants to say before we, we floomp away? Jay uh, can't said enough for them to Wombo. digest. Wombo. I want to say Wombo. <gasps> yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, Wombo. Wombo. Yeah. But yeah, again, uh, go go to Among Thirteen's Twitch channel. You can see a bit of us playing Among Us. It's kind of amusing, and yeah. hopefully more so in future because everyone's been asking. It shall come. Um, yeah, that's about it. So good night, everybody. It was fun. We'll see you around. Bye. Bye.